Dramatis Personae of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae, narrated by Mary J. Dante, read by Peter Tucker. Virgil, read by Anna Simon. Beatrice, read by Mary J. The Virgin Mary, read by Tricia G. Lucia, read by Lydia. Charon, read by Inflected. Homer, read by Alan Mapstone. Minos, read by Brian Rupert. Francesca, read by Amanda Friday. Chaco, read by Zach Kelchin. Prodigal Soul, read by Tricia G. Avaricious Soul, read by Holly Alexander. Wrathful Soul, read by Christine G. Plutus, read by Andrew Coleman. Filippo Argenti, read by Inflected. Phlegius, read by Libra Ninja. Sinna One, read by Abai. Sinner Two, read by Roslyn Carlyle. Sinner Three, read by Zach Kelchin. Alecto, read by Patrick Eaton. Megaera, read by Abai. Sarah Terry, reading for The Heavenly Messenger. Tisiphone, read by Christine G. Cavalcante de Cavalcanti, read by Andrew Coleman. Farinata, read by Christine G. Chiron, read by Inflected. Minotaur, read by Alan Mapstone. Nessus, read by Christine G. Sarah Terry, reading for Pierre de la Vigna. Giacomo da Sant'Andrea, read by Andrew Coleman. Lano, read by Zach Kelchin. A Florentine Bush by Roslyn Carlyle. Caponeus, read by Christine G. Brunetto Latini, read by Martin Giesen. Guido Guerra, read by Inflected. Jacopo Rusticucci, read by Alan Mapstone. Tegiao Aldobrandi, read by Zach Kelchin. Usurer, read by Tricia G. Demon, read by Tricia G. Alessio Intimine of Luca, read by Andrew Coleman. Venedico Caccianimico, read by Inflected. Pope Nicholas, read by Alan Mapstone. Malacoda, read by Sarah Terry. Malebrange One. Read by Christine G. Male Branche 2. Read by Zach Kelchin. Male Branche 3. Read by Vincent Alexander. Male Branche 4. Read by Lydia. Male Branche 5. Read by Roslyn Carlyle. Swindler. Read by Inflected. Fra Catalan. Read by Zach Kelchin. Fra Lodringo. Read by Christine G. Vanni Fucci. Read by Andrew Coleman. Caucus. Read by Gaylor Swift. Puccio Shankato. Read by Zach Kelchin. Snake Man. Read by Christine G. Agnello. Read by Holly Alexander. Wozo. Read by Vincent Alexander. Ulysses. Read by David Winkler. Guido da Montefeltro. Read by Andrew Coleman. Boniface the Eighth. Read by Zach Kelchin. Black Cherub. Read by Christine G. Mohammed, read by Beniamino Massimo. Pierre da Medicina, read by Dolly Pignoroles. Petron de Born, read by John Alexander. Mosca, read by Christine G. Capocchio, read by Zach Kelchin. Griffolino, read by Rob Board. Master Adam, read by Alan Mapstone. Sinon, read by Andrew Coleman. Nimrod, read by Andrew Coleman. Boca de Abati, read by Alex Lane. Traitor One, read by Tricia G. Traitor Two, read by Roslyn Carlyle. Commissione de Pazzi, read by Christine G. Count Ugolino, read by Beth Thomas. Frate Alberigo, read by Zach Kelchin. Cato, read by Alan Mapstone. Casella, read by Christine G. Penitent Soul, read by Lydia. Manfred, read by Alan Mapstone. Excommunicated Repentant Soul, read by Nan Mig. Late Repentant Soul, read by Tricia G. 
Soul two, read by Abai. Soul three, read by Beth Thomas. Belacqua, read by Zach Kelchen. Jacopo del Casero, read by Lydia. Buon Conte da Montefeltro, read by Andrew Coleman. Pia, read by Christine G. Sordello, read by Sarah Terry. Corrado Malaspina, read by Beniamino Massimo. Judge Nino, read by Zach Kelchen. Guard, read by Andrew Coleman. Angel, read by Christine G. Widow, read by Abai. Trajan, read by Patrick Eaton. Odorisi, read by Andrew Coleman. Umberto, read by Lenny. Proud Soul One, read by Tricia G. Proud Soul Number Two, read by Jesse Yoon. Proud Soul Three, read by Christine G. Angel of Humility. Read by Lydia. Sapia, read by Sarah Terry. Envious Soul One, read by Tricia G. Envious Soul Two, read by Christine G. Envious Soul Three, read by Andrew Coleman. Envious Soul Four, read by Zach Kelchen. Guido del Duca, read by Zach Kelchen. Rinieri da Calboli, read by Lenny. Aclauros, read by Dom Bombadil. Thunderous Voice, read by Christine G. Angel of Generosity, read by Tricia G. Pisistratus, read by Dom Bombadil. Wife of Pisistratus, read by Abai. Angry Mob, read by K. Cotter. Angry Mob, voice two, read by Roslyn Carlyle. Angry Mob, read by Holly Alexander. Vincent Alexander. John Alexander. Angry Mob, Voice 3, read by Christine G. Marco, read by Andrew Coleman. Angel of Peace, read by K. Carter. Lavinia, read by Christine G. The Abbot of Sansena, read by Dom Bombadil. Slothful Soul, read by Christine G. Slothful Soul 2, read by Vincent Alexander. Slothful Soul 3. Read by Roslyn Carlyle. Slothful Soul 4. Read by Rob Board. A Pope. Read by Andrew Coleman. Holy Lady. Read by Tricia G. Siren. Read by Abai. Angel of Seal. Read by Christine G. Avaricious Prodigal Soul. Read by Linny. Hugh Capet. Read by Christine G. Avaricious Prodigal Soul. Read by Ruth Golding. Other Souls, read by Tricia G. Other Souls, Voice 2, read by Lydia. Statius, read by Linny. Tree, read by Amy Graymore. Therese Donati, read by Andrew Coleman. Singing Souls, read by Shakira Searle. Angel of Temperance, read by Sarah Terry. Bonago Inta, read by Christine G. Tree 2, read by Amy Graymore. Daniel Arnout, read by Vespero. Guido Guinizelli, read by Andrew Coleman. Lustful Soul 1, read by Abai. Lustful Soul 2, read by Roslyn Carlyle. Lustful Soul 3, read by Christine G. Leah, read by Sarah Terry. Singing Angel, read by Shakira Searle. Voice, read by Tricia G. Matilda. Read by Shakira Searle. Soul in Eden 1. Read by Christine G. Soul in Eden 2. Read by Roslyn Carlyle. Singing Elder. Read by Kay Cotter. Many Souls. Read by Tricia G. Many Souls. Voice 2. By Roslyn Carlyle. Many Souls. Read by Linny. Many Souls. Voice 5. Read by Lydia. Many Souls. Voice 3. Read by Christine G. Nymph 1, read by Christine G. Nymph 2, read by Sarah Terry. Nymph 3, read by Zach Kelchen. Nymph number 4, read by Jesse Yoon. Nymph 5, read by Kay Cotter. Nymph 6, read by Lydia. Nymph 7, read by Abai. Griffin, read by Andrew Coleman. Picarda, read by Sarah Terry. Justinian, read by Andrew Coleman. Soul in the Sphere of Mercury, read by Amy Graymore. Charles Martel, read by Zach Kelchen. 
Kunitsa, played by Holly Alexander. Folko, read by Christine G. Thomas Aquinas, read by Andrew Coleman. Bonaventure, read by Zach Kelchin. King Solomon, read by Alan Mapstone. Kacha Guida, read by Vin Riley. Eagle, read by Tricia G. Peter Damien, read by David Lawrence. Saint Benedict, read by Christine G. Saint Peter, read by Andrew Coleman. Saint John, read by Christine G. Saint James, read by Beth Thomas. Adam, read by Alan Mapstone. Saint Bernard, read by Zach Kelchin. End of Dramatis Personae. Section 1 of the Divine Comedy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 1 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. Inferno, Canto 1. Introduction to the Divine Comedy, The Wood and the Mountain. When halfway through the journey of our life, I found that I was in a gloomy wood, because the path which led aright was lost and ah how hard it is to say just what this wild and rough and stubborn woodland was the very thought of which renews my fear so bitter it is that death is little worse but of the good to treat which there i found i'll speak of what i else discovered there i cannot well say how i entered it so full of slumber was i at the moment when i forsook the pathway of the truth but after i had reached a mountain's foot where that veil ended which had pierced my heart with fear i looked on high and saw its shoulders mantled already with that planet's rays which leadeth one aright o'er every path then quieted a little was the fear which in the lake depths of my heart had lasted throughout the night i passed so piteously and even as he who from the deep emerged with sorely troubled breath upon the shore turns round and gazes at the dangerous water even so my mind which still was fleeing on turned back to look again upon the pass which ne'er permitted any one to live when i had somewhat eased my weary body o'er the lone slope i so resumed my way that ere the lower was my steady foot then lo not far from where the ascent began a leopard which exceeding light and swift was covered over with a spotted hide and from my presence did not move away nay rather she so hindered my advance that more than once i turned me to go back some time had now from early morn elapsed and with those very stars the sun was rising that in his escort were when love divine in the beginning moved those beauteous things i therefore had as cause for hoping well of that wild beast with gaily mottled skin the hour of daytime and the year's sweet season but not so that i should not fear the sight which next appeared before me of a lion against me this one seemed to be advancing with head erect and with such raging hunger that even the air seemed terrified thereby and of a she-wolf which with every lust seemed in her leanness laden and had caused many ere now to lead unhappy lives the latter so oppressed me with the fear that issued from her aspect that i lost the hope i had of winning to the top and such as he is who is glad to gain and who when times arrive that make him lose weeps and is saddened in his every thought such did that peaceless animal make me which gainst me coming pushed me step by step back to the place where silent is the sun while toward the lowland i was falling fast the sight of one was offered to mine eyes who seemed through long continued silence weak when him in that vast wilderness i saw have pity on me i cried out to him whate'er thou be or shade or very man not man he answered i was once a man and both my parents were of Lombardy, and mansions with respect to fatherland. Neath Julius was I born, though somewhat late, and under good Augustus' rule I lived in Rome, in days of false and lying gods. I was a poet, 
and of that just man Anchises son I sang, who came from Troy, after proud Ilion had been consumed. But thou, to such sore trouble why return? Why climbed thou not the mountain of delight, which is of every joy the source and cause? Art thou that Virgil, then, that fountain-head which poureth forth so broad a stream of speech? I answered him, with shame upon my brow. O light and glory of the other poets, let the long study and the ardent love which made me con thy book avail me now. Thou art my teacher and authority, thou only art the one from whom I took the lovely manner which hath done me honour. Behold the beast on whose account I turned, from her protect me, O thou famous sage, for she makes both my veins and pulses tremble. A different cause from this must thou pursue he answered when he saw me shedding tears if from this wilderness thou wouldst escape for this wild beast on whose account thou criest alloweth none to pass along her way but hinders him so greatly that she kills and is by nature so malign and guilty that never doth she sate her greedy lust but after food is hungrier than before many are the animals with which she mates and still more will there be until the hound shall come and bring her to a painful death he shall not feed on either land or wealth but wisdom love and power shall be his food and tween two feltros shall his birth take place of that low italy he'll be the saviour for which the maid camilla died of wounds with turnus nisus and Euryalus and he shall drive her out of every town till he have put her back again in hell from which the earliest envy sent her forth i therefore think and judge it best for thee to follow me and i shall be thy guide and lead thee hence through an eternal place where thou shalt hear the shrieks of hopelessness of those tormented spirits of old times each one of whom bewails the second death then those shalt thou behold who though in fire contented are because they hope to come whenever it be unto the blessed folk to whom thereafter if thou wouldst ascend there'll be for that a worthier soul than i with her at my departure i shall leave thee because the emperor who rules up there since i was not obedient to his law wills none shall come into his town through me he rules as emperor everywhere, and there as king. There is his town and lofty throne. O oh, happy he whom he thereto elects! And I to him, O oh, poet, I beseech thee, even by the god it was not thine to know. So may I from this ill and worse escape, conduct me thither where thou saidst just now that i may see st peter's gate and those whom thou describest as so whelmed with woe he then moved on and i behind him kept end of inferno canto one section two of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno Canto two, Introduction to the Inferno, The Mission of Virgil. Daylight was going, and the dusky air was now releasing from their weary toil all living things on earth, and I alone was making ready to sustain the war both of the road and of the sympathy, which my unerring memory will relate. O muses, O high genius, help me now, O memory, that wrotest what I saw, herewith shall thy nobility appear i then began consider poet thou that guidest me if strong my virtue be or ere thou trust me to the arduous course thou sayest that the sire of silvio entered when still corruptible the immortal world and that while in his body he was there hence that to him the opponent of all ill was courteous considering the great result that was to come from him both who and what seems not unfitting to a thoughtful man for he of fostering rome and of her sway in the empyrean heaven was chosen as sire 
and both of these if one would tell the truth were foreordained unto the holy place where greatest peter's follower hath his seat while on this quest for which thou givest him praise he heard the things which of his victory the causes were and of the papal robe the chosen vessel went there afterward to bring thence confirmation in the faith through which one enters on salvation's path but why should i go there or who concedes it i am not aeneas nor yet paul am i me worthy of this nor i nor others deem if therefore i consent to come i fear lest foolish be my coming thou art wise and canst much better judge than i can talk and such is he who unwills what he willed and changes so his purpose through new thoughts that what he had begun he wholly leaves such on that gloomy slope did i become for as i thought it over i gave up the enterprise so hastily commenced if i have rightly understood thy words replied the shade of that great-hearted man thy soul is hurt by shameful cowardice which many times so sorely hinders one that from an honoured enterprise it turns him as seeing falsely doth a shying beast in order that thou rid thee of this fear i'll tell thee why i came and what i heard the first time i was grieved on thy account among the intermediate souls i was when me a lady called so beautiful and happy that i begged her to command her eyes were shining brighter than a star when sweetly and softly she began to say as with an angel's voice she spoke to me o courteous mantuan spirit thou whose fame is still enduring in the world above and will endure as long as lasts the world a friend of mine but not a friend of fortune is on his journey o'er the lonely slope obstructed so that he hath turned through fear and from what i have heard of him in heaven i fear lest he may now have strayed so far that i have risen too late to give him help bestir thee then and with thy finished speech and with whatever his escape may need assist him so that i may be consoled i who now have thee go am beatrice thence come i whither i would fain return twas love that moved me love that makes me speak when in the presence of my lord again often shall i commend thee unto him thereat she ceased to speak and i began o lady of virtue thou through whom alone the human race excels all things contained within the heaven that hath the smallest circles thy bidding pleases me so much that late i'd be hadst thou already been obeyed thou needst but to disclose to me thy will but tell me why thou dost not mind descending into this centre from that ample place whither thou art so eager to return since thou wouldst know thereof so inwardly i'll tell thee briefly she replied to me why i am not afraid to enter here of those things only should one be afraid that have the power of doing injury not of the rest for they should not be feared i of his mercy am so made by god that me your wretchedness doth not affect nor any flame of yonder fire molest there is a gentle lady up in heaven who grieves so at this check whereto i send thee that broken is stern judgment there above she called lucia in her prayer and said now hath thy faithful servant need of thee and i too recommend him to thy care lucia hostile to all cruelty set forth thereat and came unto the place where i with ancient rachel had my seat why beatrice she said true praise of god dost thou not succour him who loved thee so that for thy sake he left the common herd dost thou not hear the anguish of his cry seest not the death that fights him on the flood or which the sea availeth not to boast ne'er were there any in the world so swift to seek their profit and avoid their loss as i after such words as these were uttered descended hither from my blessed seat confiding in that noble speech of thine which honours thee and whosoe'er has heard it then after she had spoken to me thus weeping she turned her shining eyes away which made me hasten all the more to come and even as she wished i came to thee and led thee from the presence of the beast which robbed thee of the fair mound's short approach what is it then why why dost thou hold back why dost thou lodge such baseness in thy heart and wherefore free and daring art thou not 
since three so blessed ladies care for thee within the court of heaven, and my words, too, give thee the promise of so much that's good. As little flowers by the chill of night bowed down and closed, when brightened by the sun stand all erect and open on their stems, so likewise with my wearied strength did I and such good daring coursed into my heart that i began as one who had been freed o piteous she who hastened to my help and courteous thou that didst at once obey the words of truth that she addressed to thee thou hast with such desire disposed my heart toward going on by reason of thy words that to my first intention i've returned go on now since we two have but one will thou leader and thou lord and teacher thou i thus addressed him then when he had moved i entered on the wild and arduous course end of inferno canto two section three of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto three the gate and vestibule of hell cowards and neutrals acheron through me one goes into the town of woe through me one goes into eternal pain through me among the people that are lost justice inspired my high exalted maker i was created by the might divine the highest wisdom and the primal love before me there was naught created save eternal things and i eternal last all hope abandon ye that enter here these words of gloomy colour i beheld inscribed upon the summit of a gate whence i their meaning teacher troubles me and he to me like one aware replied all fearfulness must here be left behind all forms of cowardice must here be dead we've reached the place where as i said to thee thou'lt see the sad folk who have lost the good which is the object of the intellect then after he had placed his hand in mine with cheerful face whence i was comforted he led me in among the hidden things there sighs and wails and piercing cries of woe reverberated through the starless air hence i at first shed tears of sympathy strange languages and frightful forms of speech words caused by pain accents of anger voices both loud and faint and smiting hands withal a mighty tumult made which sweeps around for ever in that timelessly dark air as sand is wont when e'er a whirlwind blows and i whose head was girt about with horror said teacher what is this i hear what folk is this that seems so overwhelmed with woe and he to me this wretched kind of life the miserable spirits lead of those who lived with neither infamy nor praise commingled are they with that worthless choir of angels who did not rebel nor yet were true to god but sided with themselves the heavens in order not to be less fair expelled them nor doth nether hell receive them because the bad would get some glory thence and i what is it teacher grieves them so it causes them so loudly to lament i'll tell thee very briefly he replied these have no hope of death and so low down is this unseeing life of theirs that envious they are of every other destiny the world allows no fame of them to live mercy and justice hold them in contempt let us not talk of them but look and pass and i who gazed intently saw a flag which whirling moved so swiftly that to me contemptuous it appeared of all repose and after it there came so long a line of people that i never would have thought that death so great a number had undone when some i'd recognized i saw and knew the shade of him who through his cowardice the great refusal made i understood immediately and was assured that this the band of cowards was who both to god displeasing are and to his enemies these wretched souls who never were alive were naked and were sorely spurred to action by means of wasps and hornets that were there the latter streaked their faces with their blood 
which after it had mingled with their tears was at their feet sucked up by loathsome worms when i had given myself to peering further people i saw upon a great stream's bank i therefore said now teacher grant to me that i may know who these are and what law makes them appear so eager to cross over as in this dim light i perceive they are and he to me these things will be made clear to thee as soon as on the dismal strand of acheron we shall have stayed our steps thereat with shame suffused and downcast eyes and fearing lest my talking might annoy him up to the river i abstained from speech behold then coming toward us in a boat an aged man all white with ancient hair who shouted woe to you ye souls depraved give up all hope of ever seeing heaven i come to take you to the other shore into eternal darkness heat and cold and thou that yonder art a living soul withdraw thee from those fellows that are dead but when he saw that i did not withdraw he said by other roads and other ferries shalt thou attain a shore to pass across not here a lighter boat must carry thee to him my leader charon be not vexed thus is it yonder willed where there is power to do whatever is willed so ask no more thereat were quieted the woolly cheeks of that old boatman of the murky swamp who round about his eyes had wheels of flame those spirits though who nude and weary were their colour changed and gnashed their teeth together as soon as they had heard the cruel words they kept blaspheming god and their own parents the human species and the place and time and seed of their conception and their birth then each and all of them drew on together weeping aloud to that accursed shore which waits for every man that fears not god charon the demon with his ember eyes makes beckoning signs to them collects them all and with his oar beats whoso takes his ease even as in autumn leaves detach themselves now one and now another till their branch sees all its stripped off clothing on the ground so one by one the evil seed of adam cast themselves down that river bank at signals as doth a bird to its recalling lure thus o'er the dusky waves they wend their way and ere they land upon the other side another crowd collects again on this my son the courteous teacher said to me all those that perish in the wrath of god from every country come together here and eager are to pass across the stream because justice divine so spurs them on that what was fear is turned into desire a good soul never goes across from hence if charon therefore findeth fault with thee well canst thou now know what his words imply the darkling plain when this was ended quaked so greatly that the memory of my terror bathes me even now with sweat the tear-stained ground gave forth a wind whence flashed vermilion light which in me overcame all consciousness and down i fell like one whom sleep o'ertakes end of inferno canto three section four of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto four the first circle the borderland unbaptized worthies illustrious pagans a heavy thunderclap broke the deep sleep within my head so that i roused myself as would a person who was waked by force and standing up erect my rested eyes i moved around and with a steady gaze i looked about to know where i might be truth is i found myself upon the verge of pain's abysmal valley which collects the thunder roll of everlasting woes so dark it was so deep and full of mist that howsoe'er i gazed into its depths nothing at all did i discern therein into this blind world let us now descend the poet who was death-like pale began i will be first and thou shalt second be and i who of his colour was aware said how am i to come if thou take fright who it wont to be my comfort when afraid the anguish of the people here below he said to me brings out upon my face the sympathy which thou dost take for fear since our long journey drives us let us go thus he set forth 
and thus he had me enter the first of circles girding the abyss therein as far as one could judge by listening there was no lamentation saving sighs which caused a trembling in the eternal air and this came from the grief devoid of torture felt by the throngs which many were and great of infants and of women and of men to me then my good teacher dost not ask what spirits these are whom thou seest here now i would have thee know ere thou go further that these sin not and though they merits have tis not enough for they did not have baptism the gateway of the creed believed by thee and if before christianity they lived they did not with due worship honour god and one of such as these am i myself for such defects and for no other guilt we are lost and only heard to this extent that in desire we live deprived of hope great sorrow filled my heart on hearing this because i knew of people of great worth who in that borderland suspended were tell me my teacher tell me thou my lord i then began though wishing to be sure about the faith which conquers every error came any ever by his own deserts or by another's hence who then was blessed and he who understood my covert speech replied to this condition i was come but newly when i saw a mighty one come here crowned with the sign of victory from hence he drew the earliest parent's shade and that of his son abel that of noah and moses the lawgiver and obedient abram the patriarch and david king israel with both his father and his sons and rachel too for whom he did so much and many others and he made them blessed and i would have thee know that earlier than these there were no human spirits saved because he talked we ceased not moving on but all the while were passing through the wood the wood i mean of thickly crowded shades not far this side of where i fell asleep had we yet gone when i beheld a fire which overcame a hemisphere of gloom somewhat away from it we were as yet but not so far but i could dimly see that honourable people held that place o thou that honourest both art and science who are these people that such honour have that it divides them from the other's life and he to me the honourable fame which speaks of them in thy life world above in heaven wins grace which thus advances them and hereupon a voice was heard by me do honour to the loftiest of poets his shade which had departed now returns and when the voice had ceased and was at rest four mighty shades i saw approaching us their looks were neither sorrowful nor glad my kindly teacher then began to say look at the one who comes with sword in hand before the three as if their lord he were homer he is the sovereign poet horus the satirist the one that cometh next the third is ovid lucan is the last since each of them in common shares with me the title which the voice of one proclaimed they do me honour and therein do well thus gathered i beheld the fair assembly of those the masters of the loftiest song which soareth like an eagle o'er the rest then having talked among themselves a while they turned around to me with signs of greeting and when he noticed this my teacher smiled and even greater honour still they did me for one of their own company they made me so that amid such wisdom i was sixth thus on we went as far as to the light talking of things whereof is silence here becoming even as speech was where we spoke we reached a noble castle's foot seven times encircled by high walls and all around defended by a lovely little stream this last we crossed as if dry land it were through seven gates with these sages i went in and to a meadow of fresh grass we came there people were with slow and serious eyes and in their looks of great authority they spoke but seldom and with gentle voice we therefore to one side of it drew back into an open place so luminous and high that each and all could be perceived 
there on the green enamel opposite were shown to me the spirits of the great for seeing whom i glory in myself i saw electra with companions many of whom i knew both hector and aeneas and caesar armed with shining falcon eyes i saw camilla with penthesilia upon the other side and king latinus who with lavinia his own daughter sat i saw that brutus who drove tarquin out lucretia julia marcia and cornelia and all alone i saw the saladin then having raised my brows a little higher the teacher i beheld of those that know seated amid a philosophic group they all look up to him all honour him there socrates and plato i beheld who nearer than the rest are at his side democritus who thinks the world chance born diogenes anaxagoras and thales empedocles heraclitus and zeno of qualities i saw the good collector dioscorides i mean orpheus i saw tully and livy and moral seneca euclid the geometer and ptolemy hippocrates avicenna galen averroes who made the famous comment i cannot speak of all of them in full because my long theme drives me on so fast that oft my words fall short of what i did the sixfold band now dwindles down to two my wise guide leads me by a different path out of the calm into the trembling air and to a place i come where naught gives light end of inferno canto four section five of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto five the second circle sexual intemperance the lascivious and adulterers thus from the first of circles i went down into the second which surrounds less space and all the greater pain which goads to wailing there minos stands in horrid guise and snarls inside the entrance he examines sins judges and as he girds himself commits i mean that when an ill-born soul appears before him it confesses itself wholly and thereupon that connoisseur of sins perceives what place in hell belongs to it and girds him with his tail as many times as are the grades he wishes it sent down before him there are always many standing they go to judgment each one in his turn they speak and hear and then are downward hurled o thou that comest to the end of woe said minos giving up on seeing me the execution of so great a charge see how thou enter and in whom thou put thy trust let not the gateways with deceive thee to him my leader why dost thou too cry hinder thou not his fate ordained advance thus is it yonder willed where there is power to do whatever is willed so ask no more and now the woeful sounds of actual pain begin to break upon mine ears i now am come to where much wailing smiteth me i reached a region silent of all light which bellows as the sea doth in a storm if lashed and beaten by opposing winds the infernal hurricane which never stops carries the spirits onward with its sweep and as it whirls and smites them gives them pain whene'er they come before the shattered rock there lamentations moans and shrieks are heard there cursing they blaspheme the power divine i understood that to this kind of pain are doomed those carnal sinners who subject their reason to their sensual appetite and as their wings bear starlings on their way when days are cold in full and widespread flocks so doth that blast the evil spirits bear this way and that and up and down it leads them nor only doth no hope of rest but none of lesser suffering ever comfort them and even as cranes move on and sing their lays forming the while a long line in the air thus saw i coming uttering cries of pain shades borne along the aforesaid storm i therefore said who teacher of the people the gloomy air so cruelly chastises the first of those of whom thou wouldst have news 
the latter thereupon said unto me was empress over lands of many tongues to sexual vice so holy was she given that lust she rendered lawful in her laws thus to remove the blame she had incurred semiramis she is of whom one reads that she gave suck to ninus and became his wife she held the land the soldan rules the next is she who killed herself through love and to Sicaeus' ashes broke her faith the lustful cleopatra follows her see helen for whose sake so long a time of guilt rolled by and great achilles see who fought with love when at the end of life paris and tristan see and then he showed me and pointed out by name a thousand shades and more whom love had from our life cut off when i had heard my leader speak the names of ladies and then knights of olden times pity o'ercame me and i almost swooned poet i then began i'd gladly talk with those two yonder who together go and seem to be so light upon the wind thou'lt see thy chance when nearer us they are said he beseech them then by that same love which leadeth them along and they will come soon as the wind toward us had bent their course i cried o toil-worn souls come speak with us so be it that one else forbid it not as doves when called by their desire come flying with raised and steady pinions through the air to their sweet nest borne on by their own will so from the band where dido is they issued advancing through the noisome air toward us so strong with love the tone of my appeal o thou benign and gracious living creature that goest through the gloomy purple air to visit us who stain the world blood-red if friendly were the universal king for thy peace would be pray to him since pity thou showest for this wretched woe of ours of whatsoever it may please you hear and speak we will both hear and speak with you while yet as now it is the wind is hushed the town where i was born sits on the shore whither the po descends to be at peace together with the streams that follow him love which soon seizes on a well-born heart seized for him that fair body's sake whereof i was deprived and still the way offends me love which absolves from loving none that's loved seized me so strongly for his love of me that as thou seest it doth not leave me yet love to a death in common led us on cain's ice awaiteth him who quenched our life these words were wafted down to us from them when i had heard those sorely troubled souls i bowed my head and long i held it low until the poet said what thinkest thou when i made answer i began alas how many tender thoughts and what desire induced these souls to take the woeful step i then turned back to them again and spoke and i began thine agonies francesca cause me to weep with grief and sympathy but tell me at the time of tender sighs whereby and how did love concede to you that ye should know each other's veiled desires and she to me there is no greater pain than to remember happy days in days of misery and this thy leader knows but if to know the first root of our love so yearning a desire possesses thee i'll do as one who weepeth while he speaks one day for pastime merely we were reading of lancelot and how love o'erpowered him alone we were and free from all misgiving oft did that reading cause our eyes to meet and often take the colour from our faces and yet one passage only overcame us when we had read of how the longed-for smile was kissed by such a lover this one here who never more shall be divided from me trembling all over kissed me on my mouth a gal hot the book and he who wrote it no further in it did we read that day while one was saying this the other spirit so sorely wept that out of sympathy i swooned away as though about to die and fell as falls a body that is dead end of inferno canto five Section six of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto six, the third circle, intemperance and food, gluttons. On my return to consciousness, which closed before the kindred couple's piteous case, which utterly confounded me with grief, 
new torments all around me i behold and new tormented ones where'er i move where'er i turn and wheresoe'er i gaze in the third circle am i that of rain eternal cursed cold and burdensome its measure and quality are never new coarse hail and snow and dirty coloured water through the dark air are ever pouring down and foully smells the ground receiving them a wild beast cerberus uncouth and cruel is barking with three throats as would a dog over the people that are there submerged red eyes he hath a dark and greasy beard a belly big and talons in his hands he claws the spirits flays and quarters them the rainfall causes them to howl like dogs with one side they make shelter for the other oft do the poor profaners turn about when cerberus the mighty worm perceived us his mouths he opened showing us his fangs nor had he any limb that he kept still my leader then stretched out his opened palms and took some earth and with his fists well filled he threw it down into the greedy throats and like a dog that barking yearns for food and when he comes to bite it is appeased since only to devour it doth he strain and fight even such became those filthy faces of demon cerberus who thundering stuns the spirits so that they would fain be deaf over the shades the heavy rain beats down we then were passing as our feet we set upon their unreal bodies which seem real they each and all were lying on the ground excepting one which rose and sat upright when it perceived us pass in front of it o oh, thou that through this hell art being led it said to me recall me if thou canst for thou before i unmade was wast made and i to it the anguish thou art in perchance withdraws thee from my memory so it doth not seem that thee i ever saw but tell me who thou art that in so painful a place art set and to such punishment that none though greater so repulsive is and he to me thy town which is so full of envy that the bag o'erflows already owned me when i was in the peaceful life choco you townsmen used to call me then for my injurious fault of gluttony i am broken as thou seest by the raid nor yet am i sad soul the only one for all of these here are subject for like fault unto like pain thereat he spoke no more thy trouble chaco i replied to him so burdens me that it invites my tears but tell me if thou canst to what will come the citizens of our divided town if any one therein is just and tell me the reason why such discord hath assailed her and he to me then after struggling long they'll come to bloodshed and the boorish party will drive the other out with much offence then afterward the latter needs must fall within three suns and the other party rise by help of one who now is on the fence a long time will it hold its forehead up keeping the other under grievous weights howe'er it weep therefore and be ashamed two men are just but are not heeded there the three sparks that have set men's hearts on fire are overweening pride envy and greed herewith he closed his tear-inspiring speech and i to him i'd have thee teach me still and grant the favour of some further talk farinata and tekiaio who so worthy were jacopo rusticucci arrigo and mosca and the others who were set on doing good tell me where these are and let me know of them for great desire constraineth me to learn if heaven now sweeten or hell poison them and he among the blackest souls are these a different fault weighs toward the bottom each if thou descend so far thou mayst behold them but when in the sweet world thou art again recall me prithee unto others minds i tell no more nor further answer thee his fixed eyes thereupon he turned askance a while he looked at me then bowed his head and fell therewith among the other blind then said my leader he'll not wake again on this side of the angel trumpet's sound 
what time the hostile podesta shall come each soul will find again its dismal tomb each will take on again its flesh and shape and hear what through eternity resounds we thus passed through with slowly moving steps the filthy mixture of the shades and rain talking a little of the future life because of which i said these torments teacher after the final sentence will they grow or less become or burn the same as now and he to me return thou to thy science which holdeth that the more a thing is perfect so much the more it feels of weal or woe although this cursed folk shall never more arrive at true perfection it expects to be more perfect after than before as in a circle round that road we went speaking at greater length than i repeat and came unto a place where one descends there found we plutus the great enemy end of inferno canto six section seven of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto seven the fourth circle intemperance and wealth misers and prodigals the fifth circle pepe satan pepe satan thus plutus with his clucking voice began that noble sage then who knew everything said to encourage me let not thy fear distress thee for whatever power he have he'll not prevent our going down this rock then to those swollen lips he turned around and said be silent thou accursed wolf with thine own rage consume thyself within not causeless is our going to the bottom there is it willed on high where michael wrought vengeance upon the arrogant rebellion as sails when swollen by the wind fall down entangled when the mast breaks even so down to the ground the cruel monster fell into the fourth ditch we descended thus advancing further o'er the woeful edge which bags all evil in the universe justice of god alas who heapeth up the many unheard of toils and pains i saw and wherefore doth our sin torment us so as yonder o'er charybdis doth the sea which breaks against the one it runs to meet so must the people dance a ring dance here i here saw folk more numerous than elsewhere on one side and the other with great howls rolling big weights around by strength of chest they struck against each other then right there each turned and rolling back his weight cried out why keepest thou and wherefore throw away they circled thus around the gloomy ring on either hand unto the point opposed still shouting each to each their vile refrain then each turned back when through his own half ring he had attained the other butting place and i whose heart was well nigh broken said now teacher show me who these people are and tell me whether all these tonsured ones upon our left ecclesiastics were and he replied to me they each and all were in their first life so squint-eyed in mind that they with measure used no money there clearly enough their voices bark it forth whene'er they reach the two points of the ring where difference in fold unmated them these churchmen were who have no hairy covering upon their heads and popes and cardinals among whom avarice works its mastery and i to him among such men as these i surely teacher ought to recognize a few who by these sins polluted were and he to me thou shapest a vain thought the undiscerning life which made them foul now to all recognition makes them dark to these two shocks they'll come eternally these from the sepulchre will rise again close-fisted these shorn of their very hair ill-giving and ill-keeping took from them the lovely world and set them at this fray to qualify it i'll not use fair words now canst thou son behold the short-lived cheat of riches that are put in fortune's care and for whose sake the human race contends for all the gold there is beneath the moon and all that was there once could not avail to make one of these weary spirits rest teacher said i to him now tell me further what is this fortune thou dost touch upon 
which hath the world's good things thus in her claws o oh, foolish creatures said he then to me how great the ignorance which hurteth you i'd have thee swallow now my thought of her the one whose knowledge everything transcends so made the heavens and so gave guides to them that every part on every other shines thus equally distributing the light likewise for worldly splendours he ordained a general minister and guide to change from time to time the vain goods of the world from race to race from one blood to another past all resistance by the minds of men wherefore one people governs and the other declines in power according to her judgment which hidden is as in the grass a snake your knowledge is not able to resist her foreseeing she decides and carries on her government as theirs the other gods her permutations have no truce at all necessity compels her to be swift hence oft it happens that a change occurs this is the one who is so often cursed even by those who ought to give her praise yet give her blame amiss and ill repute but she is blessed and gives no heed to that among the other primal creatures glad she turns her sphere and blessed enjoys herself but now to woe more piteous let's descend now falls each star that rose when i set out and one is here forbidden too long a stay we crossed the circle to the other bank over a bubbling stream that poureth down along a ditch which from it takes its shape then purple black much darker was its water and we accompanying its dusky waves went down and entered on an uncouth path a swamp it forms which hath the name of styx this dismal little brook when it hath reached the bottom of the grey malignant slopes and i who was intensely gazing there saw muddy people in that slimy marsh all naked and with anger in their looks they struck each other not with hands alone but with their heads and chests and with their feet and rent each other piecemeal with their teeth said the good teacher son thou seest now the souls of those whom anger overcame nay more i'd have thee certainly believe that neath the water there are folk who sigh and make this water bubble at its surface as wheresoever it turn thine eye reveals stuck in the slime they say sullen we were in the sweet air that's gladdened by the sun bearing within us fumes of surliness we now are sullen in the swamp's black mire this hymn they gurgle down inside their throats because they cannot utter it with perfect speech and so we circled round the filthy fen a great arc between the dry bank and the marsh our eyes intent on those that swallow mud and to a tower's foot we came at last end of inferno canto seven Section 8 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 8, The Fifth Circle, Intemperance and Indignation, The Wrathful and Sullen, Styx, the City of Dis. I say, continuing, that long before we ever reached the lofty tower's foot, our eyes had upward toward its summit turned, because of two small flames we there saw placed and of another answering from so far that hardly could mine eyesight make it out then to all wisdom's sea i turned around and said what saith this and what replies that other fire and who are they that made it and he to me upon the filthy waves thou canst already see what is expected unless the marsh's fog conceal it from thee bowstring ne'er shot an arrow from itself that sped away so swiftly through the air as i beheld a slender little boat come toward us through the water thereupon under the guidance of a single boatman who shouted thou art caught now wicked soul o oh, phlegeus phlegeus said my master then this time thou criest out in vain no longer shalt thou have us than while we cross the swamp like one who listens to a great deceit practised upon him and who then resents it so phlegeus in his stifled wrath became my leader then went down into the boat and had me enter after him and only when i was in it did it laden seem soon as my leader and i were in the boat 
the ancient prow goes on its way and cuts more water than with others is its wont while we were speeding through the stagnant trench one stood before me filled with mud and said now who art thou that comest ere thy time and i to him even though i come i stay not but who art thou that art become so foul he answered as thou seest i am the one who weeps then i to him in sorrow and in grief mayst thou accursed spirit here remain for thee i know all filthy though thou be then toward the boat he stretched out both his hands my weary teacher therefore thrust him off saying away there with the other dogs and with his arms he then embraced my neck and kissed my face and said blessed be she who pregnant was with thee indignant soul he was a haughty person in the world nor is there any goodness which adorns his memory hence his shade is furious here how many now up yonder think themselves great kings who here shall be like pigs in mire leaving behind them horrible contempt and i said teacher i'd be greatly pleased to see him get a ducking in this broth before we issue from the marshy lake and he to me thou shalt be satisfied before the shore reveal itself to thee tis meet that thou enjoy a wish like that soon after this i saw the muddy people making such havoc of him that therefore i still give praise and render thanks to god they all were shouting At Filippo Argenti. the spirit of the wrathful florentine turning meanwhile his teeth against himself we left him there of him i therefore tell no more but on mine ears there smote a wail hence i intent ahead unbar mine eyes the kindly teacher said now son at last the town whose name is this is drawing near with all its host of burdened citizens and i said teacher clearly i behold its mosques already in that valley there vermilion as if issuing out of fire and he to me the eternal fire within which keeps them burning maketh them look red as thou perceivest in this nether hell thereat we came inside the trenches deep which fortify that region comfortless to me its walls appeared to be of iron not without going first a long way round we came to where the boatman cried aloud to us get out for here the entrance is more than a thousand o'er the gates i saw of those that from the heavens had reigned who vexed were saying who is he that without death is going through the kingdom of the dead and my wise teacher thereupon made signs of wishing to have private talk with them their great disdain they somewhat checked and said come thou alone and let him go his way who with such daring entered this domain let him retrace alone his foolish road and try it if he can for thou shalt here remain that him so dark a land did show think reader whether i lost heart on hearing those cursed words for i did not believe that i should e'er return on earth again o oh, my dear leader who hast made me safe more than seven times and extricated me from serious dangers which i had to face forsake me not said i when so undone if further progress be denied to us let us at once retrace our steps together that lord then who had brought me thither said be not afraid for none can take from us our passage since by such a one it's given but thou await me here and with good hope nourish and comfort thou thy weary soul for i'll not leave thee in the nether world thus goes his way and there abandons me my tender father and i in doubt remain for yes and no contend within my head i could not hear what he proposed to them but with them there he did not long remain for each in rivalry ran back within they closed the gates those enemies of ours right in my master's face who stayed outside and walking with slow steps returned to me his eyes were downcast and his eyebrows shorn of all self-trust and as he sighed he said who has forbidden me the homes of pain though i get angry be not thou dismayed he said to me for i shall win the fight whatever defensive stir be made within this insolence of theirs is nothing new for at a gateway less concealed than this they use it once which still is lockless found 
death's scroll thou sawest over it and now this side of it one such descends the slope crossing the rings unguided that through him the city will be opened unto us end of inferno canto eight section nine of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto nine the gate of the city of dis the sixth circle heresy the colour cowardice brought out on me who saw my leader coming back the sooner repressed in him his unaccustomed hue he stopped attentive like a man who listens because his eyesight could not lead him far through the dark air and through the heavy fog yet we must win the battle he began unless one such did offer us herself oh how i long for some one to arrive i well perceived how when he overlaid what he began to say by what came after that these were words that differed from the first but none the less his language gave me fear because i lent to his unfinished phrase a meaning worse perhaps than he intended into this bottom of the dismal shell doth any of that first grade air descend whose only penalty is hope cut off i asked this question he replied to me it seldom comes to pass that one of us performs the journey whereupon i go tis true that i was conjured once before down here by magic of that wild erecto who used to call shades back into their bodies my flesh had hardly been made bare of me when me she forced to enter yonder wall and thence withdraw a soul from judas ring that is the lowest and the darkest place and from the heaven that turns all things most distance well do i know the road so be at rest this marsh from which the mighty stench exhales girdles the woeful city round about which without wrath we cannot enter now and more he said but i recall it not because mine eye had made me wholly heed the glowing summit of the lofty tower where three infernal furies stained with blood had suddenly uprisen all at once having the members and the mien of women and girt with water snakes of brightest green for here they had small serpents and horned snakes wherewith their frightful temples were entwined and he who well the handmaids of the queen of everlasting lamentation knew said unto me behold the fierce erinius this is megera here upon the left electo she who weepeth on the right tisiphone's between thereat he ceased each with her nails was tearing at her breast they smote them with their hands and cried so loud that to the poet i drew close in dread now let medusa come we'll turn him thus to stone they all cried out as down they looked wrong were not to punish theseus raid turn back and close thine eyes for should the gorgon reveal itself and thou behold the face there'd be no more returning up above the teacher thus and turning me himself on my hands he did not so far rely as not to close mine eyes with his as well o ye in whom intelligence is sound heed carefully the teaching which lies hidden beneath the veil of my mysterious lines there now was coming o'er the turbid waves the uproar of a dread inspiring sound because of which both shores were all a quake a noise like nothing other than a wind impetuous through opposing heats which smites a forest and without the least restraint shatters lays low and carries off its boughs dust-laden it goes proudly on its way and makes wild animals and shepherds flee he freed mine eyes and said direct thou now thy keenest vision o'er that ancient scum to where that reeking smoke is most intense as frogs before the hostile water snakes scatter in all directions through the water till each is squatting huddled on the shore more than a thousand ruined souls i saw who thus from one were fleeing who on foot but with dry feet was passing over sticks that dense air he kept moving from his face by often passing his left hand before him and only with that trouble weary seemed 
i well perceived he was a messenger from heaven and to my teacher turned with signs he warned me to keep still and bow before him ah how disdainful did he seem to me he reached the gate and with a little wand he opened it for hindrance had he none o oh, people thrust from heaven and held in scorn upon the horrid threshold he began whence dwells in you this overweening pride why is it ye kick against the will from which its end can never be cut off and which hath more than once increased your pain of what avail to butt against the fates your cerberus if ye remember well still sports for this a hairless chin and neck he then returned along the filthy road nor did he say a word to us but looked like one whom other cares constrain and gnaw than that of him who in his presence is then we with full assurance toward the town after those holy words addressed our steps we entered it without the least contention and i who longed to look about and see the state of those whom such a fortress holds when i was in it cast mine eyes around and see on every side an ample plain with anguish and with awful torture filled even as at arles where marshy turns the rhone or as at pola near quarnaro's gulf which bounds italia and her border bathes the sepulchres make all the ground uneven so likewise did they hear on every side save that their nature was more bitter here for flames were spread about within the tombs whereby they glowed with such intensity that no art needeth greater heat for iron the lids of all of them were raised and wails so woeful issued thence that of a truth they seemed the wails of wretched tortured men teacher what sort of people are those there said i who buried in those ark-like tombs make themselves heard by means of woeful sighs arch heretics are with their followers here said he of every sect and far more laden than thou believest are the sepulchres here like with like is buried and more hot and less so are the monuments thereat when he had turned him to the right we passed between the woes and lofty bastioned walls end of inferno canto nine section ten of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain Inferno, Canto X. The Sixth Circle. Heresy. Heretics. Now wends his way along a narrow path between the torments and the city's wall, my teacher, and behind his shoulders, I. O lofty virtue, I began, that leads me around the impious circles at thy pleasure. Converse with me, and satisfy my wishes. The people that are lying in the tombs, could they be seen? for all the lids are raised it seems and there is no one keeping guard and he to me they all will be locked in when from jehoshaphat they here return together with the bodies they have left above on this side have their burial place with epicurus all his followers who claim that with the body dies the soul to the request however which thou makest thou'lt soon receive a due reply in here as also to the wish thou keepest from me and i good leader i but keep my heart concealed from thee in order to speak little nor hast thou only now thereto disposed me o oh, tuscan thou that through the town of fire dost go alive with such respectful speech in this place be thou pleased to stay thy steps thy very language makes thee manifest a native of that noble fatherland to which i was perhaps too great a bane all of a sudden issued forth these words from one of those ark tombs hence i in fear a little closer to my leader drew and he said turn around what dost thou see farinata who has risen there thou'lt see him wholly from his girdle up already i had fixed mine eyes on his and he was standing up with chest and head erect as if he had great scorn for hell my leader then with bold and ready hands pushed me between the sepulchres toward him saying now let thy words be frank and clear when i was neath his tomb he looked at me a while and then as though disdainfully he asked of me 
who were thine ancestors and i who was desirous to obey hid it not from him but revealed it all whereat he slightly raised his brows and said so bitterly were they opposed to me and to mine ancestors and to my party that i on two occasions scattered them if they were driven out i answered him from all directions they returned both times your people though have not well learned that art a shade then at the tomb's uncovered mouth rose at his side as far up as his chin i think that he had risen upon his knees round me he looked as if he wished to see whether some other one were with me there but when his doubt had wholly spent itself weeping he said if thou through this blind prison dost go by reason of high-mindedness where is my son and why is he not with thee and i to him i come not by myself he who is waiting yonder leads me here one whom perhaps your guido held in scorn the nature of his torment and his words had read this person's name to me already on this account was my reply so full then of a sudden standing up he cried what saidst thou held is he not still alive doth not the sweet light strike upon his eyes when he perceived the short delay i made before replying down upon his back he fell nor outside showed himself again the other one meanwhile the great-souled man at whose request i stopped changed not his looks nor did he move his neck or turn his side and if continuing his previous words he said if they have badly learned that art far more doth that torment me than this bed and yet that lady's face who ruleth here shall not be lighted fifty times again ere thou shalt know how heavy that art is and so mayst thou return to the sweet world pray tell me why so pitiless toward mine that people is in every law of theirs whence i to him the havoc and great slaughter which caused the arbia to be coloured red occasion such petitions in our church when sighing he had tossed his head he said in this thing i was not alone nor surely had i without due course moved with the rest but i was yonder where assent was given by every one to do away with florence the only one to openly defend her so may your seed eventually repose i begged of him untie for me i pray the knot which has perplexed my thinking here it seems if well i hear that ye behold beforehand that which time brings with itself while in the present ye do otherwise we see he said like one whose sight is poor things that are far from us to that extent the highest leader shines upon us still when they approach or are our intellect is wholly vain and we if others bring no news know nothing of your human state hence thou canst understand that holy dead will be our knowledge from that moment on when closed shall be the gateway of the future thereat for i was grieved at my mistake i said you'll therefore tell that fallen man his son is dwelling with the living still and if in answering i was mute just now cause him to know it was because my thoughts were struggling with the problem you have solved and now my teacher was recalling me with greater haste i therefore begged the spirit that he would tell me who was with him there he said with over a thousand here i lie the second frederick and the cardinal are here within i speak not of the rest he thereupon concealed himself and i those words recalling which seemed hostile to me back toward the ancient poet turned my steps the latter moved and then as on we went he said to me why art thou so perplexed and him in what he asked i satisfied then let thy mind preserve that sage enjoined what thou hast heard against thyself pay now attention here his finger then he raised when in the sweet ray's presence thou shalt be of her whose lovely eyes see everything from her thou'lt know the journey of thy life thereafter to the left he turned his feet we left the wall 
and toward the middle went along a path which to a valley leads which even up there unpleasant made its stench end of inferno canto ten section eleven of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto eleven the sixth circle heresy the distribution of the damned in the inferno upon the utmost verge of a high bank formed in a circle by great broken rocks we came upon a still more cruel pack and there by reason of the horrible excess of stench the deep abyss exhales for shelter we withdrew behind the lid of a large tomb whereon i saw a scroll which said pope anastasius i contain whom out of the right way photinus drew our going down from here must be delayed so that our sense may first get used a little to this foul blast we shall not mind it then the teacher thus and i find thou therefore some compensation lest our time be lost and he to me see how i think of this my son within these rocks he then began are three small circles which from grade to grade are similar to those thou leavest now full of accursed spirits are they all but that hereafter sight alone suffice thee hear how and wherefore they are packed together of all wrongdoing which in heaven wins hate injustice is the end and each such end aggrieves by either violence or fraud but whereas fraud is man's peculiar evil god hates it most therefore the fraudulent are down below and greater pain assails them all the first circle holds the violent but since against three persons force is used its shape divides it into three great rings both against god one's neighbour and one's self may force be used against themselves i mean and what is theirs as clearly shown thou'lt here by force both death and painful wounds are given one's neighbour and thereby his property is ruined burned and by extortions robbed the first ring hence torments in separate troops all homicides and those that smite with malice spoilers of property and highway robbers upon oneself may one lay violent hands and on one's goods hence in the second ring must needs repentant be without avail whoever of your world deprives himself gambles away and dissipates his means and weepeth there where he should joyful be gainst god may force be used by wittingly denying that he is by blasphemy and by despising nature and his goodness and therefore with its mark the lesser ring sealeth both sodom and cahor and him who speaking from his heart despises god and fraud whereby all consciences are bitten one may employ against a man who trusts him and against a man who storeth up no trust this latter kind of fraud would seem to kill only the bond of love which nature makes hence in the second circle make their nest hypocrisy and flatteries and workers of magic coining theft and simony pandas and grafters and such filth as these in the other way forgotten is the love which nature makes and that which afterward is joined thereto when special trust is born hence in the smallest ring where the universe its centre hath and on which this is seated whoever betrays is spent eternally teacher said i thine argument proceeds most lucidly and full well classifies this deep abyss and those that people it but tell me now those of the muddy marsh those whom the wind drives those the rain beats down and those that with such keen tongues meet each other why aren't they punished in the red-hot town if god be angry with them and if not why are they tortured in those several ways and he to me why doth thine intellect wander so far from that which is its wont or doth thy mind intently gaze elsewhere hast thou no recollection of the words with which thine ethics treats extensively 
the dispositions three which heaven rejects incontinence and malice and insane bestiality and how incontinence offends god least and hence receives least blame if thou consider this opinion well and then remember who those are above that outside undergo their punishment well shalt thou see why from these wretches here they are set apart and why less wrathfully vengeance divine is hammering on them here o son that healest every troubled sight thou so contentest me when answering questions that doubt no less than knowledge pleases me return a little further back said i to where thou sayest usury offends goodness divine and loose the tangled knot philosophy said he to me points out to him that understandeth it and not in one part only that nature takes her course from the intellect divine and from its art and if thou note thy physics carefully after not many pages shalt thou find that your art follows that as best it can as the disciple him who teaches hence your art is grandchild as it were to god from these two things if thou recall to mind the first of genesis must people needs obtain their livelihood and progress make and as the usurer takes another course nature both in herself and in her follower he scorneth since in something else he trusts but follow me now for i please to go because the fishes o'er the horizon quiver and wholly over chorus lies the wane and one descends the bank much further on end of inferno canto eleven Section 12 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno Canto 12. The Seventh Circle. The First Ring. Violence against one's fellow man. Murderers and spoilers. Phlegathon. The place where to descend the bank we came was alp-like, and through what was also there, such that all eyes would be repelled by it as is that downfall on the hither side of trent which sidewise smote the adige through earthquake or through failure of support since from the mountain's summit whence it moved down to the plain the rock is shattered so that it would yield a path for one above even such was the descent of that ravine and on the border of the broken bank was stretched at length the infamy of crete who in the seeming heifer was conceived and when he saw us there he bit himself like one whom inward anger overcomes in his direction then my sage cried out dost thou perhaps think athens duke is here who gave thee death when in the world above be gone thou beast for this man cometh not taught by thy sister but is going by in order to behold your punishments as doth a bull who from his leash breaks free the moment he receives the mortal blow and cannot walk but plunges here and there so doing i beheld the minotaur and he aware cried out run to the pass tis well that while he rages thou descend thereat we made our way adown that heap of fallen rocks which often neath my feet were moved because of their unwonted load i went along in thought and he perchance thou thinkest of this landslide which is guarded by that beast's anger which i quenched just now now i would have thee know that when down here to nether hell i came that other time this mass of rock had not yet fallen down but certainly if i remember well not long ere he arrived who carried off from this the highest circle's mighty prey on every side the deep and foul abyss so trembled that i thought the universe had felt the love whereby as some believe the world to chaos hath been oft reduced and at that moment this old mass of rock was thus both here and elsewhere overthrown but turn thine eyes down yonder now for lo the stream of blood is drawing near to us wherein boils who by violence harms others 
o oh, blind cupidity o oh, foolish wrath that so dust in our short life goad us on and after in the eternal steep us thus i saw a wide moat curving in an arc and such that it embraces all the plain according as my escort had informed me and in a file between it and the bank centaurs were running by with arrows armed as in the world it was their wont to hunt on seeing us descend they all stopped short and three of them detached them from the troop with bows and arrows they had chosen first and one cried from afar ye that is sense the slope to what pain are ye coming tell it from there or else i draw my bow my teacher said our answer we will give to chiron yonder when we reach his side thus ever to thy harm was thy will rash he touched me then and said that one is nessus who died for lovely digenera's sake and who himself wrought vengeance for himself the middle one who gazes at his breast is that great chiron who brought up achilles the other pholus who so wrathful was they go by thousands round about the moat shooting each soul that from the blood emerges further than its own sin allotted it to those swift-footed beasts we then drew near chiron an arrow took and with its notch backward upon his jaws he pushed his beard when he had thus uncovered his great mouth he said unto his mates are ye aware that he who comes behind moves what he touches yet dead men's feet are not thus one to do and my good leader who now reached his breast where the two natures are together joined replied he lives indeed and thus alone must i need show to him the dark abyss necessity is leading him not pleasure one who withdrew from singing praise to god gave me this new commission he is not a highwayman nor i a robber's soul but by the power through whom i move my steps along so wild a road bestow on us one of thy troop at whose side we may be and who may show us where one fords and carry this man upon his back for he is not a spirit who can travel through the air upon his right breast chiron turned and said to nessus turn around and guide them thus and if another troop should meet you cause it to stand aside then we with this safe escort skirted the edge of that red boiling stream wherein the boiled were crying out aloud i saw some people in it to their brows these tyrants are the mighty centaur said who took to bloodshed and to plundering here tears are shed because of heartless wrongs here alexander is and who for years grieved sicily fair dionysus the brow which has so black a head of hair is azolino the other which is blond obiso of este who in truth was quenched up in the world by his unnatural son i turned then toward the poet but he said be he now first to thee and second i a little further on the centaur stopped over some people who it seemed emerged out of that boiling river from their necks on one side there a lonely shade he showed us and said he yonder in god's bosom pierced the heart which still is honoured on the thames then people i beheld who from the stream held out their heads and even all their chest and many did i recognize of these thus shallower and shallower became that blood until it only cooked their feet here was the place for us to ford the ditch even as thou seest that the boiling stream grows shallow more and more on this side here the centaur said i wish thee to believe that on this other side its bottom sinks increasingly until it joins the place where it behoveth tyranny to groan justice divine is over here tormenting that attila was a scourge on earth pyrrhus and sextus and forever milks the tears which with the boiling it unlocks from rinier da coneto and rinier pazzo who on the high roads waged so great a war he then turned back and crossed the ford again end of inferno canto twelve
Section 13 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 13, The Seventh Circle, The Second Ring, Violence Against One's Self, Suicides and Squanderers. Not yet had Nessus reached the other side when we had set our steps within a wood, which was not marked by any path whatever no green leaves there but leaves of gloomy hue no smooth and straight but gnarled and twisted twigs nor was there any fruit but poison thorns no thickets rough and dense as these are owned by those wild beasts that hate the tilled estates that lie between the cecina and corneto herein those ugly harpies make their nest who drove the trojans from the strophides with gloomy prophecies of future loss wide wings they have and human necks and faces their feet are clawed and feathered their great bellies they utter wailings on the uncouth trees my kindly teacher then began to say before thou enter any further know that in the second ring thou art and wilt be until thou reach the horrid plain of sand hence look around thee well and things thou'lt see that from my words would take away belief moans i heard uttered upon every side but saw no person who might make them there hence utterly confused i checked my steps i think he thought i thought that all those voices were uttered from among those thorny trunks by people hiding there on our account the teacher therefore said if thou break off a little twig from any of these trees the thoughts thou hast will all be proven false i then stretched out my hand a little way and from a sturdy thorn tree plucked a twig whereat its trunk cried out why dost thou rend me then after growing dark with blood its cry began again why dost thou break me off hast thou no spirit of compassion in thee men we were once and now our stocks become thy hand ought surely to have more pity even if the souls of serpents we had been as from a fresh green log that at one end is being burned and at the other drips and makes a hissing with the escaping air so from the broken twig together issued both words and blood i therefore dropped the end and stood dumbfounded like a man who fears had he before been able to believe a wounded soul replied my sage to him what in my verses only he has seen he had not set his hand on thee whereas the thing's incredibility has made me lead him to do what i myself regret but tell him who thou wast that he by way of compensation may refresh thy fame up in the world where he can still return the trunk with sweet words thou dost entice me that i cannot keep still be not annoyed if i am tempted to a little talk i am the man who once held both the keys of frederick's heart and he who turned them round so gently lacking and unlocking it that most men from his secrets i withheld so faithful was i to my glorious charge that for its sake i lost both sleep and strength the courtesan who never turned away her harlot eyes from caesar's dwelling place a common form of death and vice of courts against me inflamed the minds of every one and those on fire inflamed augustus so that my glad honours turned to wretched grief my mind to vent its feelings of disdain and thinking to avoid disdain by death made me unjust against myself the just by this tree's uncouth roots i swear to you i never broke the faith i owed my lord who so deserving was of reverence and to the world should one of you return let him assist my memory which still lies crushed beneath the blow which envy gave it a while he waited then the poet said since he is still lose not thy chance but speak and ask him other questions if thou like whence i to him ask thou again whate'er thou thinkest satisfactory to me for i could not such pity stirs my heart hence he began again so may this man do freely for thee what thy words request imprisoned spirit may it please thee still to tell us how within these knotted trunks a soul is bound and tell us if thou canst 
if any from such limbs is ever freed thereat the trunk blew hard and afterward that wind was changed into the following words briefly shall a reply be made to you whenever a wild spirit leaves the body from which itself hath torn itself away minos commits it to the seventh ravine into the woods it falls nor is a place allotted to it but where fortune hurls it there like a grain of sped it germinates it grows into a sapling and wild tree the harpies feeding then upon its leaves cause pain to it and for the pain of vent like other spirits for our spoils will come though not that any be reclothed therewith for it is not right to have what one casts off we'll drag them with us here and then our bodies will all around the dismal wood be hung each on the thorn tree of its hostile shade we still were giving heed unto the trunk believing that it wished to tell us more when we were startled by a sudden noise as likewise he is who perceives a boar and pack of hounds approach his hunting post and hears the crashing of the beasts and boughs and lo two on the left who naked were and scratched and fled away so rapidly they shattered all the branches of the wood the one ahead now hurry hurry death and the other one who thought himself too slow cried lano not so knowing were thy legs when running from del topo's battle jousts and then perhaps because of failing breath he there made of himself and of a bush a group the wood behind these two was full of swarthy bitches ravenous and fleet as greyhounds are when from their chains unleashed into the one who crouched they set their teeth and tore him into pieces bit by bit they then made off with those his suffering limbs thereat my escort took me by the hand and led me to the bush which all in vain out of its bleeding rents was shedding tears o giacomo it said the san andrea what boots it thee to make a screen of me and how am i to blame for thy bad life when over him my teacher stopped he said who then was thou that through so many gashes art blowing forth with blood such painful speech and he to us o spirits that have come in time to see the unbecoming havoc which from me thus hath torn away my leaves collect them at the foot of my sad bush i to that town belonged which for the baptist changed its first patron wherefore he for this will always make her mournful with his art and were it not that on the anno's bridge there lingers still some little glimpse of him those townsmen who rebuilt her afterward over the ashes left by attila had caused that work to be performed in vain i made myself a gibbet of my house end of inferno canto thirteen section fourteen of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto fourteen the seventh circle the third ring violence against god blasphemers since love for my own native place constrained me i gathered up the scattered twigs and leaves and gave them back to him who now was weak thence to the bound we came where from the third the second ring is severed and wherein a frightful form of justice may be seen to manifest aright what here was new i say that we had reached a barren plain which from its bed removeth every plant the woeful wood is as a garland round it as round the former is the dismal moat there on its very edge we stayed our steps its soil was of a dense and arid sand whose nature differed in no way from that which once was trodden by the feet of cato vengeance of god how much by every one thou oughtest to be feared who readeth here what to these eyes of mine was manifest of naked souls i many flocks beheld who all wept very sorely while on each a different law appeared to be imposed a few lay on the ground upon their backs and some were seated cuddled up together while others moved about continually 
most numerous were those that moved around and least so those that under torment lay but all the freer had their tongues to wail down on the whole great waste of sand there rained with gentle fall dilated flakes of fire like flakes of snow that fall on windless alps as were the flames which alexander saw in india's torrid regions as they fell upon his hosts unbroken to the ground and this he met by ordering his troops to trample on the soil because the flames when single were more easily put out even such descended here the eternal heat whereby the sand was set on fire as tinder is kindled under steel to double pain and ever without resting was the dance of wretched hands that kept now here now there slapping away each latest burning flake thou teacher i began that conquerest all except the stubborn devils who came out against us at the entrance of the gate who is that great one who seems not to mind the fire but lies there scornful and awry so that the rain seems not to ripen him and that same one who had observed that i concerning him was questioning my leader cried as i was alive such am i dead is jove i should tire that smith of us from whom in wrath he took the pointed thunderbolt wherein i smitten was that final day or should he tire the others each in turn in mongio bellow smithy black with smoke by calling out help help good vulcan help even as he did on Flerga's battlefield, and should he shoot at me with all his might, no glad revenge would he obtain thereby. Thereat my leader spoke with so much force that I had never heard him use the like. In that thine arrogance, O Capanius, is not extinguished, art thou all the more chastised. No torment, saving thine own rage, were for thy furious pride a fitting pain then with a gentler mien he turned to me and said one of the seven kings was he who thebes besieged he held and seems to hold god in disdain and little seems to prize him but as i told him his own spitefulness is fit enough adornment for his breast now follow me and see that thou meanwhile set not thy feet upon the burning sand but to the thicket keep them ever close in silence we went on and came to where out of the wood a little stream spurts forth whose ruddy colour makes me shudder still as from the bulikame springs a brook which afterward the sinful women share even so went that one down across the sand its bottom and both sides had turned to stone as also had the embankments on each side I hence perceived the crossing-place was there. Of all the other things which I have shown thee, since first we entered through the outer gate, whose threshold unto no one is denied, nothing has ever by thine eyes been seen as notable as is this present brook, which deadens over itself all little flames. These were my leader's words. I therefore begged that he would freely grant to me the food, desire of which he had so freely given amid the sea there lies a wasted land he told me thereupon whose name is crete under whose king the world of old was pure there is a mountain there which happy once with waters and green leaves was ida called tis now abandoned like a thing outworn whilom a trusty cradle for her son rhea selected it and when he wept to hide him better caused a shouting there within that mountain stands a great old man who holds his shoulders to a damiata turned and who as at his mirror looks at rome his head is formed of finest gold his arms and breast are of the purest silver then as far as to his loins he is made of brass all chosen iron is he down from there save that baked clay his right foot is and straighter he stands on that than on the other foot each of these parts except the golden one is broken by a cleft whence trickle tears which when collected perforate that cave from rock to rock they course into this vale 
then Acheron with Styx and Phlegaton they form, and through this narrow duct descend as far as where one goes no further down. They form Cocytus there, and what that pool is like thou'lt see, hence here it is not told. And I to him, if thus this present stream has from our world descended, why alone on this ring's edge hath it appeared to us? And he, Thou knowest that the place is round, and though a long way thou hast gone already, ere to the left, descending toward the bottom, through the whole circle thou hast not yet gone. Wherefore, if aught that's new appear to us, it should not bring amazement to thy face. And I again, but where are Phlegathon and Lethe, teacher? For of this one silent, thou sayest the other of this rain is made. And he replied, thou certainly dost please me in all thy questions but the red streams boiling ought surely to have answered one of them lethe thou'lt see but there outside this cave where the souls go to wash themselves when once their sin repented of has been removed and then he said it is now time for us to leave the wood see that thou follow me the banks which are not burned afford a path and up above them every flame is quenched. End of Inferno Canto 14one of the hard embankments bears us now, and overhead the brook's mist shades them so, that from the fire it saves the stream and banks. Such bulwarks as to keep the sea away the Flemings make between Vitsand and Bruges, through fearing lest the high tide break upon them, and as the Paduans make along the Brenta, their villages and strongholds to defend, ere Chiarentana feel the summer heat. In such a way were those embankments made, although the master did not make them there so high or thick, whoe'er he may have been. So far we were already from the wood, that I could not have seen just where it was, even had I turned around to look behind, when we a band of spirits met, who came along the bank, each one of whom looked hard at us, as in the evening one is wont to look at people when the moon is new and toward us they were knitting close their brows, as an old tailor at his needle's eye. When by that gathering I had thus been eyed, one of them who had recognized me, seizing my garment's hem, exclaimed, Ah, oh, how wonderful! And I, when toward me he had stretched his arm, fastened upon his roasted face, mine eyes, so that, though blistered, it did not prevent mine intellect from recognizing him and downward having bent my face toward his, I answered him, Are you here, Ser Brunetto? And that one, Oh, my son, be not displeased, should Brunetto Latini a little way turn back with thee, and let the troop go on. I beg you to, with all my power, said I, and if you'd have me sit with you, I will, if it please that one, for with him I go. O oh, son, he said, whoever of this herd stands still at all lies prone a hundred years, nor shields himself when smitten by the fire. Therefore go on, I'll follow at thy skirts, and then I'll join again my company, which goes bewailing its eternal loss. I dared not from the path descend to go upon his level there, but held my head bowed down like one who walks in reverence. And he began, What fortune, or what fate, before thy last day, leadeth thee down here? And who is he that showeth thee the way? I answered him, When in the life serene up yonder in a vale I lost my way, before my age had rounded out its noon. Thereon I turned my back but yester morn. This one, as I returned to it, appeared to me, and o'er this path now leads me home. 
and he to me if thine own star thou follow thou canst not fail to reach a glorious port if in the lovely life i judged aright and had i not so prematurely died i seeing heaven so well disposed towards thee had given thee comfort in thy work <laughs> but that ungrateful wicked people which of old came down from Fiesole, and which e'en now smacks of the mountain and of hard grey stone for thy well-doing shall become thy foe and rightly for among the acid sobs it is not fitting that sweet figs bear fruit an old fame in the world proclaims them blind a greedy envious overweening folk see to it that thou cleanse thee from their ways thy fortune hath in store for thee such honour that either party shall be hungry for thee but distant from the goat shall be the grass <laughs> let then the beasts of fiesole make litter with their own selves nor let them touch the plant if on their dung-heap any perchance still in which the sacred seed may live again of those old romans who remained therein when of such wickedness the nest was made if perfectly fulfilled had been my prayer i then replied to him you had not yet been banished from the natural life of man for in my mind is fixed and stirs e'en now my heart that dear and kind paternal face you showed when in the world from time to time you taught me how man makes himself eternal and how much gratitude i feel for this must while i live be in my words perceived what of my course you tell i write and keep with other texts for a lady to explain who can if i ever attain to her i only wish that this be clear to you that i if but my conscience chide me not am ready for whatever fortune wills not new unto mine ears is such reward hence as she lists let fortune turn her wheel and let the country clown his mattock ply thereat my teacher over his right cheek turned back and looked at me and then he said he listens well who giveth heed to this nor speaking less do i on this account go on with ser brunetto asking who his fellows were of greatest note and rank and he to me it is well to know of some our silence on the rest will merit praise for short the time were for so long a talk know then in brief that clerics were they all and mighty men of letters of great fame soiled by the self-same sin when in the world and with that sad crowd yonder priscian goes and francis of a course or two and him if thou hadst had a longing for such scurf thou couldst have seen there whom the servant servant changed from the arno to the bacilione where he behind him left his ill-strained nerves <sighs> i'd speak of more but i can come and talk no further for a new dust-cloud i see rising o'er yonder on the sandy plain people with whom i must not be are coming let my tesoro in which i'm still alive be recommended thee i ask no more then round he turned and seemed to be of those who at verona run across the meadow to win the green cloth and of these he seemed not he who loses but the one who wins end of inferno canto 15
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 16. The Seventh Circle, the Third Ring. Violence Against Nature. Sodomites. I now was where the booming of the water which fell into the following round was heard like the dull buzzing sound which beehives make, when three shades separated from a group which neath the rain's tormenting punishment was passing by and ran along together toward us they came and each of them cried out stop thou that by thy guard dost seem to us a citizen of our corrupted town alas what wounds i saw upon their limbs both old and recent by the flames burnt in it pains me still but to remember them my leader giving heed to these their cries turned his face round toward me and said now wait to those men yonder courtesy is due and were not for the fire which arrow-like the nature of the place shoots forth i'd say that haste were more becoming thee than them and they when we had stopped began again their old refrain and after they had reached us all three of them made of themselves a wheel as champions oiled and nude are wont to do when looking for an advantageous grip before they come to giving blows and wounds thus as he wheeled each turned his face toward me so that his feet continuous journey made in opposite direction to his neck and one began even if the wretched nature of this soft place and our burned shrivelled faces bring us and our requests into contempt still let our reputation bend thy mind to tell us who thou art that dost so safely rub on the soil of hell thy living feet he in whose footprints thou dost see me tread was though he go both nude and hairless now of higher rank than thou believest him he was the grandson of the good gualdrada his name was guido guerra and when alive his wisdom and his sword accomplish much the other who behind me treads the sand tejero aldebrandi is whose voice should have been welcomed in the world above and i who with them am tormented here jacopo rusticucci was and surely my shrewish wife than aught else hurts me more if i had been protected from the fire i would have leapt into their midst below and i believe my leader had allowed it but since i should have burned and baked myself fear was victorious over my good will which made me eager to embrace them there i then began your state impressed within me not scorn but so much pain that only late will all of it entirely disappear as soon as this my lord said words to me because of which i thought within myself that there were people coming such as you of your own town am i and evermore have i your doings and your honoured names related and heard mentioned with regard i leave the gall and for the sweet fruit go which my veracious leader promised me but to the centre must i first descend so may thy spirit lead thy members long the former thereupon replied to me and after thou art gone thy fame be bright tell me if courtesy and worth abide within our town as they were wont to do or whether they have wholly gone from it for guillermo borsieri who but newly has been in pain with us and with our mates goes yonder grieves us greatly with his words the people newly come and sudden gains have bred in thee such pride and such excess that florence thou art even now in pain thus with uplifted face i cried whereat the three who this as answer understood looked at each other as one looks at truth if satisfying others other times cost thee so little happy thou that thus at thy sweet will dost speak they all replied hence so must thou from these dark places saved return to see the lovely stars again when saying i was there shall do thee good see that thou tell the people about us 
they then broke up their wheel and in their flight it seemed as if their nimble legs were wings amen could not have been as quickly said as they then disappeared my teacher therefore thought it advisable for us to leave i followed him and not far had we gone before the water's noise was so near by that had we spoken we had not been heard and as the stream which is the first that eastward from monteveso takes a separate course upon the left slope of the apennines and which above is aquaqueta called before it flows into its lowly bed and at forli is of that name deprived booms loud because of falling o'er a cliff above san benedetto of the alp where for a thousand there should refuge be even thus as o'er a precipice it fell we found that coloured water roaring so that very soon it would have hurt our ears i had a cord around me girt wherewith i once had thought that i could capture the leopard with the brightly coloured hide when from me i had wholly loosened it even as my leader had commanded me i coiled it up and held it out to him thereat upon his right he turned around and hurled it to some distance from the edge down into that profound and dark abyss surely some strange new thing must needs reply said i within myself to this strange signal which with his eye my teacher follows thus ah with what caution men should deal with those who see not only what is done by others but with their wisdom see into their thoughts he said to me what i am waiting for and what thy thought now dreams will soon come up soon to thy vision will it be revealed heir to a truth that hath a falsehood's face ought one to close his lips as best he can for though one faultless be it brings him shame but i cannot suppress it here hence reader even by the verses of this comedy so may they not be void of lasting favour i swear to thee that through that coarse dark air i saw a shape which would have chilled with wonder however brave a heart come swimming up as he returns who going down at times to clear an anchor clinging to a reef or aught else lying hidden in the sea above extends and draweth in below end of inferno canto sixteen Section 17 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 17, The Seventh Circle, The Third Ring, Violence Against Art, Usurers. Behold the wild beast with the pointed tail, which, crossing mountains, breaks through walls and armor. Behold who sickens all the world with stench my leader thus began to speak to me and signalled to it to approach the edge near where the marble we had traversed ended and that foul image of deceit came on and landed on the bank its head and chest but o'er the edge it drew not up its tail its face was as the face of a just man so pleasing outwardly was its complexion the body of a serpent all the rest two paws it had all hairy to the armpits its back and breast as well as both its sides were painted o'er with snares and wheel-like shields ne'er with more colours in its woof and warp did turks or tartars manufacture cloth nor by arachne were such webs designed as flatboats sometimes lie upon the shore in water partly partly on the land and as among the greedy germans yonder the beaver seats himself to wage his war so lay that worst of beasts upon the edge which closes in the sandy plain with stone all of its tail was quivering in the void and twisting upward its envenomed fork which like a scorpion's weapon armed its tip our path must turn aside a little now my leader said to me until we reach that wicked beast reclining over there around our right breast therefore we went down and took ten paces on the very edge thus surely to avoid both sand and fire and after we had come to it i saw upon the sand a little further on some people sitting near the precipice my teacher then that thou mayst take with thee a full experience of this ring go on and see the nature of the life they lead there be thy conversation brief meanwhile till thou return i'll talk with this wild beast 
that its strong shoulders may be yielded us thus further on along the outer edge of that seventh circle all alone i went to where the melancholy people sat out of their eyes their woe was bursting forth first here then there they helped them with their hands now from the flame now from the heated soil not otherwise do dogs in summer time now with their paws and with their muzzles now whene'er by fleas or flies or gadflies bitten when on the face of some i set mine eyes on whom the woeful fire is falling there i knew not one of them but i perceived that from the neck of each there hung a pouch which had a certain colour and design wherewith their eyes appeared to feed themselves and as i looking came into their midst azure upon a yellow pouch i saw which had the form and semblance of a lion then as my gaze continued on its course another i beheld as red as blood exhibiting a goose more white than butter and one of them who had his small white pouch emblazoned with an azure pregnant sow said to me what dost thou in this our ditch now go thy way and since thou livest still know that my fellow townsman vitaliano will sit beside me here upon my left i with these florentines a paduan am and very frequently they stun my ears by shouting let the sovereign knight arrive who'll bring with him the pocket with three beaks herewith his mouth he twisted sticking out his tongue as doth an ox that licks its nose and i afraid lest any longer stay might anger him who warned me to be brief turned from those weary spirits back again i found my leader who had climbed already upon the back of that fierce animal and said to me now be thou strong and bold by stairs like these shall we descend hereafter climb thou in front for midst i wish to be so that the tail may do no injury like one with quartan fever's chill so near that pale already are his finger-nails and that but looking at the shade he shudders such at the words he uttered i became but that shame made its threats to me which renders a servant strong when in a good lord's presence as on those horrid shoulders i sat down i wished to tell him see that thou embrace me my voice however came not as i thought but he who succoured me at other times and other straits as soon as i was up encircled and sustained me with his arms and then he said now geryon move thou on wide be thy wheels and gradual thy descent bethink thee of the unwonted load thou hast as from its mooring place a little boat backs slowly out even so did he withdraw and when he wholly felt himself in play to where his breast had been he turned his tail and moved the latter stretched out like an eel while with his paws he gathered in the air i do not think that there was greater fear when phaeton let go his horse's reins whereby as still appears the sky was burned nor yet when wretched icarus perceived his back unfeathering through the melting wax while calling him his father cried thou holdst an evil course than mine was when i saw that i was in the air on every side and gone the sight of all things save the beast the latter swimming slowly wends his way wheels and descends but i perceive it not save by the wind below and in my face the waterfall i now heard on the right making a horrid roar beneath us hence i outward thrust my head with eyes turned down more fearful of the abyss i then became for fires i now beheld and wailings heard hence trembling i clung closer with my thighs and then for i perceived it not before by the great torments which on diverse sides drew near i saw our wheeling and descent even as a falcon long upon the wing which without seeing lure or game bird makes the falconer say alas thou comest down descendeth weary through a hundred rings whence he had swiftly started and alights far from his lord in angry sullenness so likewise gerion set us down below close to the bottom of the rough-hewn rock and of our persons rid as fast as flies an arrow from a bowstring sped away end of inferno canto seventeen
Section 18 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 18, The Eighth Circle, Fraud, The First Trench, Panders and Seducers, The Second Trench, Flatterers and Prostitutes. A place there is in hell called Male Bolge, holy of stone and of an iron hue, as is the round wall which encircles it. Right in the midst of its malicious field yawneth a well exceeding wide and deep, of whose construction, in its place, I'll speak. Round, therefore, is the girdle which remains between the well and that hard high wall's base, and ten great trenches subdivide its bed. As is the appearance which, where many moats encircle castles for the wall's protection, the section where they are presents, such was the one those trenches furnished here and just as in such fortresses small bridges stretch from their thresholds to the outmost bank so crags ran from the bottom of the cliff across the banks and trenches to the well which gathering them together cuts them off in this place then we found ourselves when dropped from gerion's back the poet thereupon held to the left and i behind him moved Upon the right side I beheld new cause for sympathy, new pains, and scourges new, wherewith the first trench was completely filled. Down at its bottom naked were the sinners. This side the middle facing us they came, beyond it with us but with quicker steps. Means such as those which at the jubilee the Romans took, because of its great throng, to have the people pass across the bridge, who toward the castle all on one side face, and toward st peter's go their way while all move toward the mountain on the other edge this side and that upon the dark stone floor horned demons with great scourges i beheld who from behind were fiercely whipping them ah how they caused them to lift them up their heels when by the first blows smitten certainly none waited for the second or the third while i was going on mine eyes were met by one of them and instantly i said i fast not from a previous sight of him to make him out i therefore stayed my feet and having stopped with me my gentle leader assented to my going back a little that scourged one thought that he could hide himself by looking down but little it availed him for thou that castest down thine eyes said i unless the features which thou hast are false venedico cacianimico art but what brings thee into such pungent sources and he to me unwillingly i tell it but forced i am by thy transparent speech which makes me recollect the olden world i was the one who led gisola bella to do according to the marquis's will however the disgusting tale be told nor am i here the only bolognese that weeps nay this place is so full of us that not so many tongues are taught to-day between savena and reno to say pipa and if thereof thou wouldst have pledged your proof recall to mind our avaricious breasts as thus he spoke a demon with his lash smote him and said to him pander be gone there are no women here to sell for coin i then rejoined my escort whereupon when we had taken some few steps we came to where a crag projected from the bank this we ascended with the greatest ease and turning to the right along its ridge we left those everlasting circling walls when we were where it hollows out below to let the scourged pass through my leader said now stay thy steps and on thee let the sight of all these other ill-born spirits strike whose faces thou hast not perceived as yet because they've gone with us in our direction as from the ancient bridge we watched the troop which on the other side was toward us coming and which the scourge was likewise driving on without my asking my good teacher said look at that great man there who as he comes for all his pain seems not to shed a tear how royal an appearance he still keeps jason is he who by his doughtiness and wit deprived the colchians of their ram he passed the isle of lemos on his way after its pitiless and daring women had given up to death their every male with tokens of his love and flattering words he there deceived the maid hypsipyle 
who previously had all the rest deceived. He left her there with child, and all alone. Him to this punishment that fault condemns. And for Medea too is vengeance wrought. With him go those that in this way deceive. Be this enough to know of this first ditch, and of those too that in its fangs it holds. Already were we where the narrow path forms with the second bank across, and makes therewith abutments for another arch. We thence heard people in the following trench who whined and groaned, and with their muzzles puffed, while smiting their own bodies with their palms. The banks were crusted over with a mould by vapour from below, which sticking there, offensive to both eyes and nose, became. So deep the bottom that there is no means of looking into it, unless one climb the arch's summit, where the crag is highest. Thither we came, and from it in the ditch people I saw immersed in excrement, which seemed from human privies to have come. While peering with mine eyes down there, I saw a head so foul with filth, that whether clerk's or layman's head it were was not apparent scolding he said why greedier art thou to look at me than at the other foul ones and i because if i remember well i've seen thee with dry hair ere now for thou alessio interminei of luca art that's why i eye thee more than all the rest and he then as he beat upon his pate those flatteries immersed me here below, wherewith my tongue was never surfeited. Then, after this, my leader said to me, See that thou urge thy glance a little further, that with thine eyes thou quite attain the face of that disgusting and dishevelled wench, who yonder claws herself with filthy nails, and crouches now, and now is on her feet. That Theus is, the prostitute, who answered her paramour when he had said, Have I great thanks from thee? Nay, marvellously great. Herewith, then, let our sight be satisfied. End of Inferno Canto 18「Section 19 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto Nineteen, The Eighth Circle, Fraud, The Third Trench, Simoniacs. O Simon Magus, O his wretched followers, since ye the things of God, which ought to be the brides of righteousness, rapaciously adulterate for silver and for gold, it now behooves the trumpet sound for you, for in the third great trench your station is. We now had climbed the next tomb-spanning bridge and were on that part of the crag which hangs directly o'er the middle of the trench. Wisdom supreme, how great the art thou showest in heaven, on earth, and in the evil world! How justly, too, thy virtue makes awards! I saw that on its sloping sides and bottom the livid-coloured stone was full of holes, all of one width, while each of them was round. Nor less nor more wide did they seem to me than those which in my beautiful St. John's are made as places for baptizing priests, and one of which not many years ago I broke to save one who was choking in it, be this a witness undeceiving all. Out of the mouth of each a sinner's feet protruded, and as far as to the calf his legs, the rest of him remained within. The souls of all were, both of them, on fire because of which their joints so strongly twitched they would have snapped green twigs and cords of grass and as a flame on oily things is wont to move along the outer surface only so likewise was it there from heels to toes who teacher is he yonder who is tortured by twitching more than all the rest his mates said i and whom a red of flame is sucking and he to me if thou wouldst have me bear thee down yonder bank which lowest lies from him thou'lt know both of himself and of his sins and i what pleases thee i like my lord thou art and that i part not from thy will thou knowest as also what is left unsaid we then upon the fourth embankment came and turning round descended on our left into that narrow bottom pierced with holes 
nor yet did my good teacher set me down from off his back but brought me to the hole of him who grieved so sorely with his shank whoe'er thou art sad soul that holdest down thine upper portion planted like a stake i then began say something if thou canst i there was like a friar that confesses a base assassin who on being planted calls him again that death may be delayed and he cried out dost thou stand there already dost thou stand there already boniface by several years the writing lied to me art thou so quickly sated with the wealth for which thou didst not fear to seize by fraud and outrage next the lady beautiful even such did i become as those are who not understanding what is answered them deem themselves mocked and think of no reply then virgil said tell him immediately i am not the one i am not the one thou thinkest and i replied to him as i was bidden whereat the spirit writhed with both his feet then sighing and with weeping voice he said what is it then that thou dost ask of me if to know who i am concern thee so that for it thou hast crossed the bank know then that i was with the mighty mantle clothed and verily the she-bear's son was i so eager to advance the cubs that wealth i pocketed up there and here myself the others who in working simony preceded me are gathered neath my head flattened between the fissures of the rock i in like manner shall down yonder fall when he arrives whom i believed thou wast when i of thee the sudden question asked but now already longer is the time that i thus upside down have cooked my feet than he will plant it stay with ruddy souls for after him shall come from westward lands a lawless shepherd of still uglier deed and fit to cover him and me renewed shall jason be of whom in maccabees one reads and as to that one his king yielded even so who governs france shall yield to this i know not whether i was here too bold in that i answered him in this strain only now tell me pray how great the treasure was our lord demanded of st peter first before he placed the keys in his control surely he asked for naught but follow me nor yet did peter or the rest take gold or silver from matthias when by lot he took the place the guilty soul had lost therefore keep still for thou art rightly punished and take good care of that ill-gotten wealth which caused thee to be valiant against charles and were it not for this that i am still forbidden by reverence for the keys supreme thou hadst in keeping in the joyful life words of still greater weight would i employ because your greed by trampling on the good and raising the depraved afflicts the world the evangelist was thinking of your shepherds when she who on the waters hath her seat was seen by him to fornicate with kings the one who with the seven heads was born and from the ten horns her support received while virtue still was pleasing to her spouse ye've made yourselves a god of gold and silver and from idolaters how differ ye save that they worship one and ye a hundred ah constantine of how much ill was mother not thy conversion but the dower gift the earliest wealthy father took from thee while i was singing him such notes as these he whether it were wrath or conscience bit him was fiercely kicking out with both his feet i verily believe it pleased my leader he heeded with so glad a look throughout the utterance of those true clear words of mine he therefore took me up with both his arms and when he had me wholly on his breast he climbed again the path down which he came nor tired of holding me in his embrace but bore me to the summit of the arch which crosses from the fourth bank to the fifth when there he gently set his burden down gently because that crag was rough and steep and would be difficult for goats to cross from thence another trench was shown to me 
End of Inferno Canto 19section twenty of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto twenty the eighth circle fraud the fourth trench diviners and soothsayers about strange punishments must i make verses and furnish matter for the twentieth song of this first lay which treats of those submerged already had i wholly given myself to looking down at its uncovered bottom which with the tears of agony was bathed when people in the great round trench i saw come weeping silently and at the pace at which in this world litanies advance then as my sight fell on them lower down wondrously twisted each of them appeared between the chin and where the chest begins for toward his loins his face was turned around and backward it behooved him to advance because of foresight they had been deprived by palsy some perhaps may thus have been entirely turned around but i have not seen it nor do i think there ever was one such so may god let thee reader gather fruit from this thy reading think now for thyself how i could ever keep my own face dry when at close range i saw our human image so twisted that the weeping of the eyes along the fissure bathed the back indeed as on a rock of that hard crag i leaned i wept so that my escort said to me art thou still foolish as the others are here liveth piety when holy dead is pity who then guiltier is than he who lets his feelings judge divine decrees lift lift thy head and see the man for whom before the trojans eyes the earth was opened whence all cried whither art thou rushing now amphiaraus why quittest thou the war and he ceased not from plunging headlong down to minos who lays hold on every one see how he makes a bosom of his shoulders because he wished to see too far ahead he looks behind and backward goes his way behold theresius there who changed his looks when female he became from being male his members being each and all transformed and afterward he needs must strike again the two entwining serpents with his rod ere he the plumage of a male regained he who to that one's belly turns his back is aaron's who in Luni's mountain quarries, where toils the Carese who dwells below, among white marbles had as dwelling place a cave, from which his view was not cut off when at the stars he gazed, or at the sea. And she who yonder with dishevelled locks covers the breasts which thou dost not behold, and has on that side all her hairy skin, was Manto who first searched through many lands then settled in the place where i was born thereof i'd have thee hear me speak a little after her father had from life departed and bacchus city had become enslaved she wandered long about the world up there in lovely italy beneath the alps which o'er the tyrol lock out germany there lies a lake which is benaco called from o'er a thousand springs i trow tween garda and valcamonica the pennine alp is bathed by waters which therein find rest a midway place there is where trento shepherd and he of brescia and the veronese might each his blessing give if there he went pesquera next a fair and mighty fortress and fit to face both bergamasks and brescians sits where the shore lies lowest round about there all that in benaco's spacious lap cannot be held flows out of it perforce and down through verdant pastures forms a stream when once its water gathers head to run no more benaco mincio is its name till at governolo it joins the po not long its course before it finds low ground or rich it spreads and making it a marsh is wont at times to be unsound in summer passing that way 
the cruel virgin saw a region in the middle of the fen untilled and naked of inhabitants there to escape all human fellowship and work her arts she settled with her slaves and lived and there she left her empty body thereafter men who all around were scattered collected in that place which was a strong one because it had a fen on every side o oh, those dead bones of hers they built a town then after her who first picked out the site they called it mantua with no other lot the people in it were more numerous once before the foolishness of Casalodi had been deceived by Pinamontis' guile. I charge thee, then, if e'er thou hear it said, my town had its beginning otherwise, permit no falsehood to defraud the truth. Thy statements, teacher, are so sure to me, said I, and take such hold upon my faith, that those of others would be burnt-out coals. But tell me if among these passing people thou seest any one deserving note, for my mind now is wholly bent on that. He told me then, The one who from his cheeks extends his beard across his swarthy shoulders, an augur was, when Greece lacked males so much, that for her cradles only few were left. Twas he who said, with Calchas aid, at Aulis, the time to cut the fleet's first rope. His name Eurypylus, and in a certain place he thus is called by my high tragedy. This thou knowest well, who knowest all of it. That other one, so thin about his flanks, was Michael Scott, who surely understood the artful game of magical deceits. Guido Bernatti, see, and see Asdente, who wishes now that he had given heed to cord and leather, but too late repents. See the sad women who abandoned needles, spindles, and shuttles to become diviners, these wrought their spells with herbs and images. But now, come on, for Cain is with his thorns holding the bounds of both the hemispheres, and plays upon the waves below Seville, and round already was the moon last night. Thou surely must recall it, since at times it harmed thee not, when in the dark woods deaths. Thus he to me, as meanwhile on we went. End of Inferno, Canto 20。Section 21 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 21. The Eighth Circle, Fraud. The Fifth Trench, Corrupt Politicians. Speaking of other things, my comedy cares not to sing. We thus from bridge to bridge moved on, and when upon the summit stopped, in order to behold the next ravine of Male Borge, and the next vain cries. And I beheld it wonderfully dark, and just such sticky pitch as that which boils in the Venetian's arsenal in winter, for caulking up again the unsound ships which cannot then be sailed, instead of which, as one a new one builds one plugs the ribs of that which many voyagers has made one hammers at the stern and at the prow another one fashions oars another cordage twists while still another mends a jib or mainsail such was the coarse dense pitch which not by fire but by an art divine boiled there below and limed the bank on every side i saw the pitch but nothing in it save the bubbles the boiling raised and that the whole of it kept swelling up and settling back compressed while i was gazing fixedly down yonder my leader cried to me beware beware and drew me to himself from where i was i then turned round as one who longs to see the thing which it behooves him to escape and who when by a sudden fear unmanned although he sees delays not his departure and i perceived behind us a black devil come running up along the rocky crag ah how ferocious in his looks he was and in his actions how severe he seemed with wings outspread and light upon his feet his shoulder which was sharp and high was loaded with both a sinner's haunches whom he held clutched tightly by the sinews of his feet oh malebranche from our bridge he cried here's one of santa zita's ancients 
Put him beneath, for I'm for more of them returning to that town which I have well stocked therewith. There, save Bonturo, everyone's a grafter. A no for money there becomes a yes. He hurled him down, and o'er the rugged crag returned, and never was a mastiff loosed with so much hurry to pursue a thief. The other sank, and then rose, doubled up. Those fiends, though, who were sheltered by the bridge, cried, Here the holy face awaileth not. One here swims otherwise than in the Sergio. If therefore thou dost not desire our hooks, protrude not from the surface of the pitch. They pricked him then with o'er a hundred prongs, and said, Here under cover must thou dance, that, if thou canst, thou mayest thieve secretly. Not otherwise do cooks have scullions plunge the meat with hooks into the cauldron's midst, to hinder it from floating on its surface. Thereat my kindly teacher said to me, That here thy presence be not known, crouch down behind a rock which may avail to screen thee. And be not thou afraid for any harm that may be done to me, who know these things, for I in phrase like this have been before. He then passed on beyond the bridge's head, and when the sixth embankment had been reached, he had to show assurance in his face. With just the storm and fury wherewith dogs break out and rush upon a poor old man, who stops and begs at once from where he is, from neath the little bridge those devils issued and turned against him all their grappling hooks. But he cried out, Be none of you malicious. Before your grappling hooks take hold of me, let one of you advance and hear me speak. Then take ye counsel as to grappling me. Then all cried out, Let Malacoda go! Thereat one started, while the rest kept still, and as he came said, What does this avail him? Dost thou think, Malacoda, said my teacher, that, as thou seest, I have hither come, safe until now from all your hindrances, unheld by will divine and favouring fate? Let us go on, for it is willed in heaven that I should show another this wild road. Thereat his pride received so great a fall that at his feet he dropped his grappling hook, and to the rest said, let him not be wounded my leader thereupon cried out to me thou that among the bridges broken rocks art crouching safely now regain my sight i therefore moved and quickly came to him then all the fiends advanced so far i feared they would not keep their word even thus i once saw infantry who under pledge of safety were from caprona coming forth afraid when among so many foes they saw themselves then wholly to my leader's side I drew, nor from their faces, which did not look good, did I remove my eyes. For as their prongs they lowered, one fiend to another said, Wouldst thou that I should touch him on his rump? And they replied, Yes, see thou nick it for him. But that fiend who was with my leader talking turned round at once and said to him, Keep still, keep still there, Scarmiglione. Then to us, Further advance along this present crag cannot be made, because the sixth arch yonder lies wholly shattered on the ground below. But, if it please you still to go ahead, go on along this ridge. There is nearby another crag which furnishes a path. Than this hour, five hours later yesterday, twelve hundred, six and sixty years had passed since here the path was broken. I am sending some of my company in that direction to see if any yonder air themselves. Go on with them, for they will not be bad. Step forward, Alicino and Calcabrina. He then began to say, Thou too, Cagnazzo, and that old Barbariccia guide the ten. Have Libicoco go, and Dragignazzo, tusked Ciriato too, and Graffia Cane, with Farfarello and crazy Rubicante. Search round about the boiling birdlime pitch, that these be safe as far as that next crag, which all unbroken goes across the den. O oh, teacher, what is this I see? said I. If thou know how, pray let us go alone, for I request no escort for myself. If thou as wary art as thou art wont, dost thou not notice how they gnash their teeth, and with their eyebrows threaten us with woe? And he to me. I would not have thee frightened, let them grin on, then, 
as they like, for that they are doing at the wretches who are boiled. They wheeled and moved along the left bank then, but not till each, as signal toward their leader, had first thrust out his tongue between his teeth, and he had of his rump a trumpet made. End of Inferno, Canto 21「Section 22 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 22. The Eighth Circle. Fraud. The Fifth Trench. Corrupt Politicians. Ere now have I seen cavalry break camp, start to attack, or be reviewed, and even at times retreat in order to escape. Scouts have I also seen upon your lands, O Aretines raids too have i beheld and tournaments and tilting matches fought with trumpets now and now with bells with drums and beacon signals made from fortresses with native and with foreign things but never have i seen horse or infantry or ship by sign of either land or sky set out with instrument of wind as odd as that with the ten demons we were going on ah the fierce company but in a church with saints consort with gluttons at an inn upon the pitch alone was i intent that i might see all details of the trench and of the people who were burned therein as dolphins do when arching up their backs they give the warning which bids mariners take measures for the safety of their ship even so at times his suffering to relieve one of the sinners there displayed his back and hid it in less time than lightning takes and as in ditches at the water's edge frogs stay with nothing but their muzzles out and thus conceal their feet and all the rest even so on all sides did those sinners stay and now that barbariccia was approaching they likewise neath the boiling pitch withdrew i saw and still it stirs my heart with horror one waiting thus as oft while one frog stays it happens that another scurries off and graffia cane who was nearest to him hooking his pitch smeared tresses pulled him up so that an otter he appeared to me i knew by now the names of each and all i noted them so well when they were chosen and when they called each other noticed how o rubicante see thou set thy claws upon him so that thou peel off his skin the accursed all cried out together then and i my teacher if thou canst contrive to learn who that wretch is who thus has fallen into his adversary's hands my leader thereupon drew near to him and asked him whence he was and he replied of navarre's kingdom i a native was my mother placed me out to serve a lord for she had borne me to a rascal knave who both himself and what he owned destroyed i next in good king tibault's household served and there i set myself to graft for which i pay the reckoning in this heat here ciriato from whose mouth protruded as from a boar's a tusk on either side caused him to feel how one of them could rip among bad cats the mouse had fallen now for barbariccia clasped him in his arms and said stand off while i am clutching him then toward my teacher having turned his face he said ask him again if more thou wish to know of him before the others rend him my leader then now tell me knows thou any among the other sinners neath the pitch who latin is and he not long ago i left a man from that vicinity would that like him i still were covered up for i should then fear neither claw nor hook here libicoco said we've borne too much and with his hook so seized him by the arm and tore it that he carried off a piece and draghignazzo also wished to clutch him down at his legs but their decurion then turned right around at them with threatening looks when they were somewhat pacified again of him who was still looking at his wound my leader asked without delay who then was he from whom thou tookst unlucky leave as thou hast said to land upon the shore and he made answer that was fra gomita galura's man vessel of all fraud who when he held in hand his master's foes so dealt with them that each is glad their money he took and as he puts it let them all off easy 
and even in other offices was not a petty but a first-rate grafter with him don michel zanke of logodoro associates and never do their tongues feel tired out by talking of sardinia but oh look at the other grinning there more would i say but i'm afraid lest that one be making ready to claw my skin then the great provost turned toward farfarello who rolled his eyes as if he meant to strike and said off yonder thou malicious bird if you desire thereat began again the terror-stricken man to see or hear tuscans or lombards i will have them come but let the evil claws here stand aside a little that their vengeance be not feared and i while setting in this very place for one that i am shall make seven come out when i shall whistle as our wont it is when any one of us protrudes himself cagnazzo at this speech his muzzle raised and shook his head and said here the sly trick devised by him to cast himself below then he who frauds in great abundance had replied to him tricky indeed am i when for my mates a greater pain i win here alikin could not control himself but said in opposition to the rest i shall not gallop after thee in case thou dive but o'er the pitch shall beat my wings the ridge abandoned be the bank a screen to see if thou alone art more than we now reader of a new sport shalt thou hear each turned his eyes the other way and he the first who had thereto been most opposed the navarese chose well his time stood firmly upon the ground and jumping suddenly from what they purposed freed himself thereby for this each felt himself to blame but most the one who of the loss had been the cause hence he moved first and shouted thou art caught but little did it profit him for wings could not outmeasure fear as one went under the other flying upward raised his breast nor different is the speed with which a duck dives under water when a hawk draws near who vexed and baffled thus flies up again then calcabrina angered by the flout flew out behind him glad that one escaped because it let him scuffle with the other and then the grafter having disappeared he turned his claws upon his own companion and grappled with him o'er the ditch but he being indeed a fighting sparrow-hawk fitted to claw him well they both fell down into the middle of the boiling fen a sudden separator was the heat but rising thence was quite impossible they had their wings so limed with sticky pitch then barbariccia vexed as were the rest his mates had four of them with all their hooks fly to the other bank on both sides then they speedily descended to their posts and stretched their hooks out toward the pitch belimed who now were cooked inside their crusted hides and thus embarrassed we abandoned them End of Inferno, Canto 22section twenty three of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto twenty three the eighth circle fraud the sixth trench hypocrites silent alone and unaccompanied we went along one first and one behind as minor friars go when on the road my thoughts by reason of the present brawl were turned to aesop's fable that wherein he talks about the frog and mouse for now and at this moment are no more alike than one is like the other if beginning and end be linked by an attentive mind and even as one thought from another springs so next from that one was another born which doubled my first fear hence thus i thought these devils have been scorned on our account and with such injury and scoff indeed that i believe that they are greatly vexed if anger to ill will be joined they'll come more fiercely after us than doth a dog the rabbit which he seizes with his teeth already i was feeling all my hair bristling with fear when gazing back intent i said if teacher thou hide not thyself and me with speed i dread the evil claws we have them now behind us and i so imagine them that i already feel them and he if i were made of leaded glass thine outward image i would not reflect more quickly than thine inward i receive even now thy thoughts were coming among mine with outlook and intent so similar 
that I with both a single purpose formed. If it be true the right bank slopeth so, that to the following trench we can descend, we shall escape from this imagined chase. He had not finished telling me his plan, when not far off I saw them coming on with wings outspread, intent on seizing us. My leader then took hold of me at once, even as a mother, by the noise aroused, and seeing close to her the burning flames, seizes her child and flees, and doth not stop, since caring more for him than for herself, even long enough to clothe her with a shift. And downward from the ridge of that hard bank, his back he yielded to the hanging rock, which closes one side of the following trench. Water ne'er moved as swiftly through a sluice to turn the overshot wheel of a mill, when closest to the paddles it approaches, as did my teacher o'er that selvage bank, bearing me down with him upon his back, as though his son I were and not his mate. His feet had hardly reached the trench's bed below, when they were on the ridge above, just over us, but naught was now to fear, because the providence on high, which willed to place them in the fifth trench as its servants, takes from them all the power of leaving it. A painted people found we there below, who, moving with exceedingly slow steps, shed tears, and in their looks appeared subdued and weary. Cloaks they had, equipped with cowls, lowered before their eyes, and cut like those which in Colonna fashioned for her monks. So gilded outside are they that they dazzle, but inside all are lead, and of such weight that those which Frederick clothed men with were straw. O oh, cloak that wearies through eternity! We turned again as ever to the left, along with them, intent on their sad plaint. But owing to the weight that weary folk came on so slowly that new company we had at every motion of our legs. Hence to my leader I, contrive to find some one whom we may know by deed or name, and while thus going move thine eyes around. And one, who heard my Tuscan speech, cried out behind us stay your feet o ye that run so quickly through the gloomy air from me perhaps shalt thou receive what thou dost ask thereat my leader turned and said now wait and then proceed according to his pace i stopped and too i saw those faces showed great mental haste to be with me and yet their burden and the narrow path delayed them on coming up to us they watched me long with eyes askance and uttered not a word then toward each other turning thus they spoke this one seems by the action of his throat alive but if they're dead by what right then go they uncovered by the heavy stole and then addressing me they said o oh, tuscan who to the gathering of sad hypocrites art come scorn not to tell us who thou art and i to them on Arno's lovely stream, and in its famous town, both born and bred, I'm in the body I have always had. But who are ye, adown whose cheeks there drips, as I perceive, so great a woe, and what the penalty which sparkles on you thus? These orange cloaks, one answered, are of lead, and of such thickness are they, that the weights thus cause the scales that balance them to creak. We jovial friars were, and Bolognese, I Catalan, and Lord Ringo he, by name, and chosen by thy town together, as one alone is usually called, to keep its peace. And such we were, as still in the Gardingo's neighbourhood appears. O oh, friars, I began your evil deeds, but said no more, because there struck mine eyes one crucified by three stakes on the ground. On seeing me, sighs through his beard he blew, and writhed all over, then Fra Catalan, informed thereby of what had happened, said, The pinioned man thou gazest at advised the Pharisees that it expedient was to torture one man for the people's sake. Stretched crosswise, as thou seest on the road, and naked, he is forced to be the first to feel how much whoever passes weighs, and in like fashion suffer in this ditch his father-in-law, and others of the council which proved a seed of evil for the Jews i then saw virgil marvelling at him who in the figure of a cross was stretched so basely in eternal banishment then to the friar he addressed these words be not displeased to tell us an you may if on the right there lie a crossing place by means of which we too may issue hence without black angels being forced to come and extricate us from this trench's bed 
nearer than thou dost hope he then replied a crag there is which at the great round wall begins and all the cruel trenches spans save that at this one it is broken down and spans at naught but ye can climb the ruins which from its base lie piled along the slope my leader kept his head bowed down a while then said wrongly did he report the thing who yonder grapples sinners with his hook the friar then among the many vices given the devil at bologna i once heard that he a liar is and sire of lies thereat my leader with great strides departed somewhat disturbed by anger in his looks then i the burden left and followed on behind the footprints of beloved feet end of inferno canto twenty three Section 24 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 24, The Eighth Circle, Fraud, The Seventh Trench, Thieves. When in the youthful season of the year the sun beneath Aquarius warms his locks, while southward now the knights pursue their way, and when the hoar-frost draws upon the ground the counterfeit of her white sister's face, though shortly lasts the temper of her pen the peasant lacking provender gets up looks out and seeing all the country white slaps himself on the thigh returns indoors and walking to and fro laments poor wretch not knowing what to do then later on returning out again recovers hope on seeing that the world has shortly changed its face and taking down his shepherd's staff out to their feeding drives his tender sheep even thus my teacher filled me with dismay when i beheld such trouble in his face thus too the plaster quickly reached the wound for when we had attained the ruined bridge my leader turned to me with that sweet look which at the mountain's foot i first perceived first having well surveyed the ruined arch after some counsel taken with himself his arms he opened and took hold of me and like a man who ponders while he acts and always seems to look ahead even so while upward to the top of one great rock he pushed me he sought out another crag and said take hold of that one next but first see whether it be fit to bear thy weight no path was this for one who wore a cloak since scarcely could we two though he was light and i was pushed ascend from rock to rock and had the slope on that bank not been shorter than on the other i know not of him but i would surely have been overcome but since the whole of Malebolge slopes down to the opening of the lowest well, such is the nature of each trench's banks, that one is high and low the following one, and yet we reached at length the ridge above, from which the crag's last rock projects. My breath was so exhausted from my lungs, when up at last, that I could go no further. Nay, on arriving, I sat down at once. Thus henceforth must thou rid thyself of sloth, my teacher said for one attains not fame sitting on cushions or neath canopies and he that lives without attaining it leaveth on earth such traces of himself as smoke doth in the air or foam in water therefore get up overcome thy troubled breath with that soul energy which wins all fights unless it sink beneath its body's weight a longer stairway must be climbed tis not enough that these stairs have been left if then thou understand me let it profit thee i thereupon arose and showed myself better equipped with breath than i had felt and said go on for i am strong and bold we took the pathway up along the crag which rocky was narrow and hard to climb and steeper far than was the one before not to seem weak i talked as on i went this from the next trench caused a voice to come which was incapable of forming words though i was on the summit of the arch which crosses here i know not what it said but moved to anger seemed the one who spoke downward i looked and yet my living eyes could not attain the bottom for the dark hence teacher try to reach the following ridge said i and let us from the wall descend for as i hear but do not understand so looking down from hence i make out nothing no other answer give i thee he said save that of action 
for a fair request ought to be met by deeds without a word we climbed down from the bridge's further head where to the eighth embankment it is joined and then the trench was clearly shown to me and in it i beheld a frightful throng of snakes and of so weird a kind that still the memory of them freezes up my blood let libya and her sand no longer boast for though she breed kelidri jaculi with chenkri farii and amphisbainai ne'er with all ethiopia did she show nor e'en with what above the red sea lies either so many or such evil plagues among this cruel and most dismal swarm people were running nude and terrified and with no hope of hole or heliotrope their hands were bound behind their back with snakes whose tail and head were thrust between their loins and tied together in a knot in front then lo a serpent hurled himself at one who near our bank was standing and transfixed him there where the neck is to the shoulders joined never were o or e so quickly written as he took fire and burning up must needs turn wholly into ashes as he fell whereat though thus destroyed upon the ground the dust assembling of its own accord turned instantly into the self-same man so likewise as great sages have declared the phoenix dies and then is born again as she approaches her five hundredth year she feeds through life on neither herbs or grain but on a momum only and incense tears her final swaddling bands are nard and myrrh and as is he who falls nor knoweth how by demon force which pulls him to the ground or other inhibition binding man and who on getting up again looks round wholly bewildered by the great distress which he has felt and as he looks heaves sighs such was that sinner after he had risen o power of god how truly just thou art that in revenge dost deal such blows as these thereat my leader asked him who he was and he replied into this wild ravine i reigned from tuscany not long ago mule that i was a beast's life not a man's i liked i'm vanni fucci called the beast for me pistoia was a worthy den then tell him not to slip away i said and ask what fault thrust him down here for i once saw in him a man of blood and strife the sinner then who understood feigned not but turned toward me both mind and face and said as with a sudden shame he coloured up that thou hast caught me in the misery in which thou seest me gives me greater pain than that which took me from the other life i can't refuse what thou dost ask of me i am placed thus low because twas i who robbed the vestry known for its fair ornaments a deed once falsely put upon another but now lest thou enjoy this sight of me if thou art ever out of these dark lands thine ears to my announcement ope and hear pistoia first despoils herself of neri then florence changes folk and government from valdimarca mars draws forth a bolt by turbid clouds enveloped next with wild and cruel storm a battle will be fought upon the piceni plain then suddenly the bolt will cleave the mist in such a way that every bianco will thereby be wounded and this i've said that it may give thee pain end of inferno canto twenty four Section twenty five of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto twenty five. The Eighth Circle. Fraud. The Seventh Trench. Thieves. The thief, at the conclusion of his words, lifted his hands with both their figs and cried, Take that, O God, for it is to thee I show them. From that time onward, snakes have been my friends, for thereupon one coiled around his neck, as if to say, I'd have thee speak no more. Another, coiling, tied his arms together, and clinched itself so well in front of him that he could make no use of them at all. Pistoia, 
ah pistoia why not will to burn to ashes and no longer last since in ill doing thou excellest thy seed in all of hell's dark rings i've seen no spirit so arrogant toward god not even he who fell down headlong from the walls at thebes without another word he fled away whereat i saw a centaur full of rage come crying where where is the stubborn soul not even maremma has so many snakes i think as on his crupper that one had as far as where our human form begins upon his shoulders right behind his nape there crouched a dragon with wide opened wings and he sets fire to whomsoe'er he meets my teacher said he yonder carcass is who neath the rocks that form mount aventine oft made a lake of blood he travels not along the road o'er which his brethren go because of having fraudulently robbed the famous herd which he as neighbour had this ended his sly deeds beneath the club of hercules who may perhaps have dealt him a hundred blows whereof he felt but ten while thus he spoke that sinner too made off whereat three spirits came and stood below us whom neither i nor even my leader noticed until they all cried out who then are ye because of which our conversation ceased for afterward we heeded them alone i knew them not but so it happened then as it is wont to do in certain cases that one perforce employed another's name saying but where can chanfa have remained hence that my leader might give heed i placed my finger in a line from chin to nose if thou art slow now reader to believe what i shall tell no marvel will it be for i who saw it hardly grant i did as toward them i was holding up my brows lo a six-footed serpent hurls itself in front of one and clings to him all over with both its middle feet it clasped his paunch and with its forefeet seized upon his arms then with its teeth it wounded both his cheeks it spread its hind feet out along his thighs and thrusting next its tail between the two it stretched it upward all along his back ivy was never rooted to a tree so fast as round about the other's limbs that horrible wild creature twined its own and thereupon as if hot wax they were they stuck together and their colours mixed till neither seemed to be what it had been just as a brownish hue precedes the flame on burning paper which is not yet black while equally the white part dies away the other two looked on and each exclaimed oh me angelo what a change is thine for see thou now art neither two nor one already into one had both heads turned when we two countenances still beheld mixed in a single face where both were lost from the four previous strips two arms were made the thighs and legs the belly and the chest became such members as were never seen cancelled therein was every former aspect the transformed figure seemed both two and none and thus appearing slowly moved away as like a lightning flash a lizard looks if changing hedges neath the dog day's scourge across a road it passes even such a little fiery serpent seemed to me as toward the bellies of the other two it came livid and black as peppercorn and in that part through which our nourishment is first received it transfixed one of them and then fell down stretched out in front of him the pierced man gazed at it but nothing said nay firmly on his feet he stood and yawned as if attacked by fever or by sleep he at the serpent looked and it at him one through his wound the other through its mouth smoked hard and each smoke with the other mingled let lucan then be silent where he tells of poor sabellus's and nasidius's fate and giving heed hear what is now proclaimed of cadmus and of arethusa too let ovid cease to speak for though his verse turn him into a snake and make of her a fount i grudge him not for face to face he ne'er so changed two natures that the forms of each were ready to exchange their matter they blended each with each in such a way that while the serpent forkwise clove its tail the wounded man together drew his feet the legs and with them in the very thighs so stuck together that in little time their juncture left no mark that could be seen the cloven tail was taking on the shape which there was being lost the skin of one meanwhile was growing soft and hard the others 
i saw his arms withdrawing to his armpits and both the serpent's feet which were not long lengthen as much as those were growing short and then its hinder feet together twisted became the member which a man conceals while from his own the wretch had two thrust forth and while the smoke was veiling both of them with novel hues and generated hair on one side and deprived of it the other the one stood up and down the other fell nor turned aside for that the impious eyes beneath which each of them was changing face the one who stood drew his in toward his temples and from the excessive matter coming there ears issued on his undeveloped cheeks and that which ran not back but was retained of this superfluous matter gave the face a nose and thickened suitably its lips he who was lying down thrusts forth his muzzle and backward through his head withdraws his ears even as a snail doth with its horns his tongue which single used to be and prompt to speech divides itself while in the other case the split one closes and the smoking stops the soul which had become a savage beast flees hissing through the trench the other spits behind him as he talks then having turned away from him his just created shoulders he to the third said i'd i'd have booze run on his belly over this path i thus beheld the seventh ballast change and interchange here let its novelty excuse me if it slightly blur my pen and though somewhat bewildered were my eyes and though confused my mind those men could not escape so secretly that i should fail puccio Shankato perfectly to see and of the three companions who came first he only was not changed the other one was he for whom gavile thou dost weep end of inferno canto twenty five Section twenty six of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto twenty six, the eighth circle, fraud, the eighth trench, fraudulent counsellors. Rejoice, O Florence, since thou art so great that thou dost beat thy wings o'er sea and land, while even through hell thy name is spread abroad. Among the thieves five such as these I found, thy citizens, whence shame accrues to me, nor to great honour risest thou thereby. But if the truth be dreamed at dawn's approach, thou'lt feel a little while from now what Prato, of others not to speak, is craving for thee. And were it now, it would not be too soon. So were it, then, since thus it needs must be. For it will grieve me more the more I age we went away and up the flight of stairs the bourns had formed for our descent before my teacher climbed again and drew me with him and as we followed up the lonely path among the rocks and boulders of the crag our feet proceeded not without our hands i sorrowed then and now again i sorrow when i direct my mind to what i saw and curb my genius more than i am wont lest it should run when virtue guides it not that if a kindly star or aught that's better have blessed me i myself may not regret it as many glow-worms as the countryman who on the hillside takes his rest when he who lights the world least hides his face from us while to the gnat the fly is giving way sees down along the valley where perchance he gathers in his grapes or ploughs his field with just as many flames the whole eighth trench was gleaming bright as i perceived at once when i was where its bottom came in view as he who by the bears avenged himself beheld elijah's chariot when it left and when to heaven its horses rose erect since he could not so trace it with his eyes as to see more than just the flame alone when like a little cloud it rose on high of such a nature were the flames that moved along the gully of the ditch for none displays its theft though each a sinner hides risen up to look i so stood on the bridge that without being pushed i would have fallen had i not grasped a great projecting rock my leader who perceived me thus intent then said the spirits are within the fires and each is swayed by that wherewith he burns my teacher i replied i'm more assured through hearing thee but deemed it so already and wished to ask thee 
who is in the flame which comes along so cloven at the top that from the pyre it seems to rise whereon eteocles was with his brother placed he answered me therein are both ulysses and diomed tormented who in pain thus go together as they did in wrath and in that flame of theirs they now bewail the ambush of the horse which made the gate from which the romans noble seed went forth there they lament the trick because of which they damia dead still mourns achilles there the palladium's penalty is paid if they can speak within those sparks said i i pray thee teacher much and pray again that mine be worth to thee a thousand prayers refuse not my request to linger here until the horned flame come this way thou seest that toward it i am inclined by great desire and he replied to me thy prayer deserves much praise and therefore i accede to it but see thou that thy tongue restrain itself leave speech to me who have a clear idea of what thou wouldst for they since greeks they were might be perchance disdainful of thy words after the flame had come so near to us that time and place seemed fitting to my leader it was in this fashion that i heard him speak o ye that in a single flame are two if i deserved of you when still alive if i deserved of you or much or little when in the world i wrote the lofty verses depart not but let one of you inform us whither when lost he went away to die the greater horn then of the ancient flame began to quiver with a murmuring sound as would a flame made weary by the wind and then while swaying here and there its tip as if the latter with a tongue that spoke gave forth a voice and said when i departed from circe who concealed me near gaeta more than a year before aeneas so had named the place nor fondness for my son nor pious reverence for my aged father nor even the bounden love which should have cheered penelope could overcome within me the eagerness i had to gain experience both of the world and of the vice and worth of men but forth i put upon the deep and open sea with but a single ship and with that little company by whom i had not been deserted both its shores i then beheld as far away as spain morocco and the island of the sards and all the rest that that sea bathes round about both old and slow were i and my companions when we attained that narrow passageway where hercules set up those signs of his which warned men not to sail beyond their bounds seville i left behind me on the right hand chaeta i'd left already on the other and then i said o brothers ye who now have through a hundred thousand perils reached the west to this so short awaking time still left your senses will not to refuse the experience of that world behind the sun which knows not man bethink you of the seed which ye have sprung for ye were not created to live the life of stupid animals but manliness and knowledge to pursue so eager for the voyage did i make my fellows by this little speech of mine that after it i hardly could have checked them hence to the morning having turned our stern we with our oars made wings for our mad flight ere veering toward the left as on we sped night was already seeing all the stars of the other pole and our pole so low down that from the ocean's floor it never rose five times rekindled and as often quenched had been the light beneath the moon since first we entered on the passage of the deep when lo a mountain loomed before us dim by reason of the distance and so high it seemed to me that i had seen none such and we rejoiced but soon our happiness was turned to grief for from the new-found land a whirlwind rose and smote our vessel's prow three times it made her whirl with all the waters then at the fourth it made her stern go up and prow go down even as another pleased till over us the ocean's waves had closed end of inferno canto twenty six Section 27 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 27. The Eighth Circle, Fraud. The Eighth Trench, Fraudulent Counselors. 
the flame because of having ceased to speak was quiet and erect and now away from us was going with the gentle poet's leave when lo another which behind it came caused us to turn our eyes up toward its tip by reason of a vague sound issuing thence as the sicilian bull which bellowed first with the lament of him and that was right who with his file had given form to it was wont to bellow with the voice of him who suffered in it so that though of brass it seemed the one by whom the pain was pierced even so since from the body of the flame they had nor path nor mouth the painful words were changed at first into the latter's tongue but when these words had travelled to the tip and given it that vibration which the tongue when uttered gave to them we heard it say o thou to whom i now address my voice and who just now didst talk in lombard saying now go thy way for thee i urge no more though i perhaps have somewhat late arrived be not displeased to stop and speak with me thou seest that i am not although i burn if into this blind world thou only now art fallen down from that sweet latin land whence all my guilt i bring pray tell me whether the romanials are having peace or war for i came from the mountains tween urbino and that high peak from which the tiber springs while downward i was leaning still intent my leader touched me on my side and said speak thou for this one an italian is and i who had my answer all prepared began to speak without delay o soul that art concealed down yonder thy romagna is not at present and she never was devoid of war within her tyrant's hearts but i left none apparent there just now ravenna is as she for many years has been polenta's eagle so broods there that cervia it o'ercovers with its wings the town which made the long resistance once and of the french a sanguinary heap beneath the green paws finds itself again verrucchio's former mastiff and the new who foully with montagna dealt there make where they are wont a gimlet of their teeth the cities of lamone and santerno the little lion of the white lair rules who changes sides from summer-time to winter and that whose flank is by the savio bathed lives as it sits twixt plain and mount a free state half and half a tyranny and now i pray thee tell me who thou art nor harder be than others here have been so may thy name maintain itself on earth after the flame had roared a little while as is its fashion to and fro it moved its pointed tip and then gave forth this breath if i believed that my reply were made to one who to the world would e'er return this flame would stay without another quiver but inasmuch as if i hear the truth none e'er returned alive from this abyss fearless of infamy i answer thee a man of arms i was then caught a leer trusting since girded thus to make amends and certainly my trust had been confirmed were it not for that high priest whom ill befall who set me at my former sins again both how and why i'd have thee hear from me while i was still the shape of bones and flesh my mother gave me my performances were not a lion's but a fox's deeds all covert practices and hidden ways i knew and i so carried on their arts that to the ends of earth their fame was noised when i perceived at last that i had reached that period of my life when each should strike his sails and coil his ropes what hitherto had given me pleasure i thereat disliked i yielded then repenting and confessing and that alas poor me would have availed the prince of modern pharisees who then hard by the lateran had a war on hand though not with either saracens or jews for christian were all enemies of his and none of them had gone to conquer acre or been a merchant in the sultan's land 
not heeding in himself his lofty office and holy orders, or in me the cord, which Lena used to make those girt therewith, but as upon Seracte. Constantine once bade Sylvester heal his leprosy. So this one called on me, as Master Leech, to cure him of the fever of his pride. He asked me for advice, but I kept still, because his words were like a drunkard's words. And then he said, Let not thy heart mistrust. I from now on absolve thee. Teach me, then, how I can Palestrina overthrow. To lock and unlock heaven is in my power, as thou dost know. Two, therefore, are the keys my predecessor held in small esteem. His weighty words then drove me to the point at which the silent course appeared the worse. Father, I therefore said, since from the sin thou washest me, which I must now commit, a promise long drawn out but shortly kept will cause thy triumph on the lofty seat. Then Francis came for me when I was dead, but one of our black cherubs said to him, Remove him not, and do not wrong to me. Among my many alls he must needs descend because he gave the fraudulent advice, since which till now I have had him by the hair. For who repents not cannot be absolved, nor yet can one at once repent and will, the contradiction not permitting it. O oh, woe for me! O oh, how I shook with fear, when, after laying hold on me, he said, Perhaps thou didst not think me a logician. He carried me to Minos, and the latter round his hard back eight times entwined his tail, and when in great rage he had bitten it, A sinner of the thievish fire is this, he said, Hence where thou seest me, I am lost, and, thus robed, sorrowing go my way. When he had thus completed his discourse, the flame departed from us with its grief, twisting and lashing its sharp-pointed horn. I and my leader then passed further on up o'er the crag, as far as the next arch which spans the ditch, wherein their due is paid to those who burdens win by severing bonds. End of Inferno Canto 27《セクション28 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 28, The Eighth Circle, Fraud, The Ninth Trench, Sowers of Discord. Whoever could, even with unfettered words, tell fully of the blood and of the wounds which now I saw, though oft he told the tale, all tongues would certainly fall short of it by reason of our speech and of our mind whose means are small for taking in so much if all the people should again assemble who on apulia's fortune ravaged soil suffered of old from all the loss of blood shed by the trojans and in that long war which with its spoil of rings made such high heaps as livy writes who maketh no mistakes with those who felt the painful force of blows received in waging war with robert guiscard and those whose bones are still heaped up together at Ceperano, where a faithless liar was each Apulian, and near Tagliacozzo, where old Alardo won, though all unarmed. And if of these one showed a limb pierced through, and one a limb lopped off, it would all be nothing, compared with this ninth trench's foul display. No cask indeed by loss of middle board or stave is opened as was one I saw, split from the chin to where one breaketh wind, while down between his legs his entrails hung, his pluck appeared, and that disgusting sack which maketh excrement of what is swallowed. While I on seeing him was all intent, he looked at me, and opening with his hands his breast, he said, See now how I am cloven. Behold how torn apart Mahomet is. Ali, in tears, moves on ahead of me, 
cloven in his face from forelock down to chin. And all the others whom thou seest here, disseminators were, when still alive, of strife and schism, and hence are cloven thus. There is a devil here behind, who thus fiercely adorns, and to the sword's edge puts each member of this company anew, when we have gone around the woeful road, because ere one return in front of him, the wounds thus made have all been closed again. But who art thou that musest on the crag, perhaps to put off going to the torture, adjudged thine accusation of thyself? Death hath not reached him yet, replied my teacher, nor to a torment is he led by guilt, but that complete experience may be given him, I, who am dead, must needs conduct him here from circle unto circle down through hell, and this is true, as that I speak to thee. On hearing him, more were there than a hundred who stopped there in the ditch to look at me, and who through their surprise forgot their pain. To Fradolcino, do thou therefore say, Thou that perhaps wilt shortly see the sun, if soon he would not hither follow me, to arm him so with food, lest stress of snow should give the Novaries a victory, which else would not be easily obtained. When one foot he had raised to go away, Mohammed said these words to me, which done upon the ground he stretched it to depart. Another then, who had his neck pierced through, his nose cut off as far as neath his brows, and who had one ear only, having stopped to gaze in wonder with the others there, opened before the rest his throat, whose neck vermilion was on every side, and said, O thou that by thy guilt are not condemned, and whom up in the Latin land I've seen, unless to great resemblance play me false, call Pierre de Medicina to thy mind, if e'er thou see again the lovely plain which from Vercelli slopes to Marcabo, and makes it known to Fano's two best men, to Messer Guido and Angiolello too, that they, unless foreseeing be in vain, down here will from their vessel be cast forth, and drowned in sacks near La Catolica, through a disloyal tyrant's treachery. Between the isles Maholica and Cyprus, Neptune ne'er saw so great a crime committed, by pirates, nay, nor by the Argolic folk, that traitor who sees only with one eye, and holds the town, from seeing which, one now, is with me here, who fain would fasting be, will to a conference have them come with him. He'll then so act, that against Fokara's wind, they'll stand in need of neither vow nor prayer. And I to him, point out and show to me, if news of thee thou'dst have me bear above, which is the one who had the bitter sight. Thereat he laid his hand upon the jaw of one of his companions, oped his mouth, and cried, This is the one, for he speaks not. When exiled he removed all doubt in Caesar, by saying that a man, when once prepared, ne'er brook delay but to his detriment. Oh, how dismayed that Curio seemed to me, who from his throat now had his tongue cut out, yet once had been so daring in his speech. Then one, from whom both hands had been locked off, raising his maimed arms through the gloomy air, so that his blood befouled his face, cried out, Mosca, will thou remember too, who said, Alas, what's done is done, a speech which proved the seed of evil for the Tuscan race. And death, I thereto added, to thy tribe. Then he, as woe on woe he heaped, went off as one would whom his grief had made insane. But I remained to look upon the throng, and such a thing I saw as I should be afraid to tell of without further proof. If it were not that conscience reassures me, the good companion which, beneath the breastplate of conscious purity, emboldens man. I really saw, and still I seem to see it, a trunk without a head, which moved along, as moved the others of the mournful herd and by the hair it held the severed head which hanging like a lantern from its hand was saying as it gazed at us o oh, me with his own self he made himself a lamp and two in one they were and one in two how this can be he knows who so ordains 
when at the bridge's very foot he was he raised his arm above him head and all that he might thus bring nearer to us his words which were now see my baneful punishment thou that though breathing goest to see the dead see whether any be as great as this and that thou with thee mayst bear news of me know that bertrand de born i am the man who gave the youthful king the ill support of sire and son i mutual rebels made ahithophel by absalom and david with his malicious goadings did no more because i severed those who thus were joined i bear my brain around with me alas severed from its foundation in this trunk retaliation thus is seen in me end of inferno canto twenty eight section twenty nine of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto twenty nine the eighth circle fraud the tenth trench falsifiers of metals the many people and unheard of wounds had caused my eyes to be so drunk with tears that fain they were to linger there and weep but virgil said at what art gazing still why is it that thine eyes still rest down there among the wretched mutilated shades thou didst not thus when in the other trenches consider then if thou propose to count them that this trench circles two and twenty miles and that the moon is now beneath our feet short is the time allowed us still and more there is to see than what thou seest here if thou hadst heeded i thereat replied the reason for my gazing there thou wouldst perhaps have granted me a longer stay meantime my leader on his way was going and i behind him moving as i made my answer adding in that hollow place whereon i kept mine eyes so steadily i think a spirit sprung from mine own blood bewails the fault so dearly paid for there thereat my teacher said let not thy thoughts hereafter break on him heed other things and there let him remain for at the foot of that small bridge i saw him point thee out and with his finger fiercely threaten thee jerry del bello i then heard him called so holy wast thou then intent on him who formerly possessed hautefort that thou till he departed didst not look beyond leader said i his death by violence which is not yet avenged for him by any who shared the shame made him indignant that as i believe was why he went away without addressing me he thus has caused me to pity him the more we thus conversed till we had reached the first place on the crag whence had there been more light the next ravine had to its very bottom been revealed when we or malebolge's final cloister were situated so that its lay brethren could be perceived by us uncouth laments which had their arrow-heads with pity barbed so pierced me through and through that with my hands i closed mine ears such pain as there would be if from the hospitals of valdichiana maremma and sardinia from july until september all diseases came together in one ditch such was it here and out of it there came a stench like that which out of rotting limbs is wont to come adown the last bank of the lengthy crag we went as ever to the left and then much clearer was my vision toward the bottom wherein the servant of the most high lord justice infallible is punishing the falsifiers she recordeth here i do not think it were a sadder sight to see the whole race in a genus sick when so suffused with poison was the air that all the animals down to the little worm fell dead and when the ancient race of people according to what poets hold for truth out of the seed of ants restored themselves than now it was to see the spirits languish down in that gloomy ditch in different heaps one on his belly lay and others leaned against each other's shoulders while another crawled on all fours along the dismal path without conversing step by step we moved both looking at and listening to the sick who could not raise their bodies two of these i then saw sitting and against each other leaning just as a pan against a pan is leaned to warm and spotted o'er with scabs from head to foot 
and never have i seen a curry-comb plied by a boy for whom his master waited or by one who kept awake against his will as each oft plied upon himself the edge of finger-nails for the great rage of itching which hath else no help their nails kept scraping down their scabs as doth a knife the scales of brim or fish of other kinds equipped with larger scales o oh, thou that with thy fingers flays thyself to one of them my leader then began and who at times doth pincers make of them pray tell us whether latin any be of those in here so may thy nails suffice thee for thy work eternally we both of us whom thou beholdest here so spoiled are latin answered one who wept but who art thou that didst inquire of us my leader thereupon said i am one who with this living man from ledge to ledge descend and who proposed to show him hell thereat the common back was broken up and trembling each of them turned round toward me with others who had heard him by rebound then my good teacher drew close up to me and said say whatsoever thou wilt to them hence since he so had wished it i began so may your memory never fly away from human minds in that first world of ours but rather under many suns survive pray tell me who ye are and of what people nor let your foul and loathsome punishment make you afraid to show yourselves to me i of arezzo was and albero da siena had me burned one then replied but what i died for doth not bring me here tis true i said to him although in jest that i knew how to raise me in the air and he who curious had but little sense wished me to show that art to him and only because i did not make him deedless he had me burned by one who treated him as son but to the last trench of the ten minos who may not make mistakes condemned me for the alchemy i practised in the world then to the poet i now was there ever a people as vainglorious as the men of siena surely not the french by far whereat the other leprous one who heard me replied to what i said excepting striga who moderation knew and what he spent and nicolo who was the first to find the costly use of cloves in gardens where such seed takes root excepting too the company on whom Khan wasted his vineyard and great forest land while dabagliato squandered all his sense but so that thou mayst know who backs thee thus against the men of siena point thine eyes toward me that well my face may answer thee so shalt thou see that i am capocchio's shade who meddles falsified by alchemy and thou if well i see thee shouldst recall how good an ape of nature i was once end of inferno canto twenty nine section thirty of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto thirty the eighth circle fraud the tenth trench falsifiers of persons money and words when juno on account of semele was angry with the royal blood of thebes as several times she showed herself to be so fiercely mad did athamas become that when he saw his wife approaching him burdened by her two sons on either side spread we the nets he cried that i may take upon their passing lioness and cubs and thereupon stretched out his cruel claws and taking hold of one learchus named whirled him around and dashed him against a rock his wife then with the other drowned herself again when fortune so low down had brought the trojans arrogant all daring power that with their kingdom shattered was their king hecuba sad forlorn and captive now when she had seen her dead polyxena and in her painful anguish had perceived her polydorus lying on the beach out of her senses barked as would a dog so greatly had her suffering turned her mind but ne'er did furies or of thebes or troy reveal in any one such cruelty in goading beasts or much less human limbs 
as that which i beheld in two death-pale and naked shades who ran around and bit as doth a boar when from the sty let out one reached capocchio and so thrust his tusks into his neck behind that dragging him he made his belly scrape the solid ground the aretine still trembling said to me that imp is gianni schicchi who enraged goes all around ill-treating others thus then oh i said to him so may the other not fix his teeth in thee be not too tired to tell me who he is before he skips and he to me that is the ancient soul of wicked mirror who outside the bounds of lawful love became her father's mistress she came to sin with him by counterfeiting another person in herself as dared the other one who yonder goes away that he might gain the lady of the stud to counterfeit buoso donati's self and make his will and give it legal form when the two furious souls on whom my eyes were fixed had passed away i turned them round to look upon the other evil born and one i saw who like a lute was shaped if he had only had his groin cut off down in the region where a man is forked the heavy dropsy which unmates the limbs in such a way with ill-digested humour that face and paunch no longer correspond were causing him to keep his lips apart as doth the hectic who because of thirst turns one lip chinward and the other up oh ye that are and wherefore i know not free from all torment in this world of woe said he to us behold and pay attention to master adam's wretched misery when living i had all that i desired and now alas i crave a drop of water the little brooks which toward the arno run down from the casentino's green-clad hills and render all their channels cool and fresh are evermore before me nor in vain because their image makes me drier far than this disease which strips my face of flesh the rigid justice which is scourging me takes from the very place in which i sinned the means to give my size a greater flight there lies romena where i falsified the coin on which the baptist form is stamped for that i left my body burned above but could i see the woeful soul of guido or alexander or their brother here for fonte branda i'd not give the sight one is in here already if the shades who go around here raging tell the truth but what is that to me whose limbs are bound if only i were still so light of foot that i could in a hundred years advance one inch i'd be already on the road in search of him among the loathsome people although this trench goes round eleven miles and is no less than half a mile across through them am i in such a family for they persuaded me to coin the florins which had at least three carats of alloy then i to him said who are those two wretches who smoking like wet hands in winter time are lying there beside thee on thy right i found them here he answered when i reigned into this ditch since when they have not turned nor will i think for all eternity one is the woman who charged joseph falsely the other sinon 
troy's deceitful greek their burning fever makes them weak like this and one of them who felt aggrieved perhaps at being named so darkly smote the speaker upon his hard stiff belly with his fist it made a sound as it had been a drum then master adam smote him with his arm which did not seem less hard upon his face and said though i of motion be deprived by reason of my limbs which heavy are i have an arm that's loose for needs like this then he replied when going to the fire thou hadst it not so ready but just so and more thou hadst it when thou madest coin he of the dropsy here thou sayest true but thou was not so true a witness there where thou wast questioned of the truth at troy if i spoke falsely thou didst falsify the coin said sinon i'm for one sin here and thou for more than any other demon remember perjurer the horse replied he of the swollen paunch and bitter be for thee that known it is by all the world i'll be for thee the thirst wherewith thy tongue is cracking said the greek and that foul water which for thine eyes thus makes thy porch a hedge thereat the coiner said as is its wont thy mouth in speaking evil gapeth wide for though i'm thirsty and humour stuffs me out thine is the fever and the aching head and thou'dst not stand in need of many words bidding thee lick the mirror of narcissus on listening to them i was all intent when now be careful there my teacher said for i am not far from quarrelling with thee when i thus heard him speak to me in anger such was the shame wherewith i turned to him that through my memory it is circling still and such as he who dreameth of his harm and dreaming wishes that he dreamt and thus as if it were not longs for that which is such i became who impotent to speak would fain excuse myself and all the while was doing so but did not think i was less shame would wash away a greater fold than thine hath been my teacher said to me therefore unburden thee of all thy sadness and count on me as ever at thy side if it again should chance that fortune find thee where folk in such a wrangle are engaged for vulgar is the wish to hear such things End of Inferno Canto 30、Section 31 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno Canto 31 The Edge of the Central Well The Giants one and the selfsame tongue first wounded me so that it coloured both my cheeks and then supplied me with the medicine required achilles and his father's lance i hear was likewise wont to be the source of first a sad and after of a grateful gift we turned our backs upon the woeful vale over the bank which girds it round about and passed across without a single word here less than night it was and less than day so that my sight advanced not far but here i heard a horn give forth so loud a sound that it had rendered any thunder faint this led mine eyes as counter to its path they followed wholly to a single place after the woeful rout when charlemagne the holy army of his knights had lost roland blew not so terrible a blast i had not kept my head turned toward it long when many lofty towers i seemed to see i therefore teacher say what town is this since from the darkness from too far away thou peerest he replied it comes about that afterward thou errst in conceiving if yonder thou attain thou'lt clearly see how from far away one's senses are deceived 
hence onward urge thyself a little more thereat he took my hand with kindly care and said to me ere further on we go so that the fact may seem less strange to thee know then that towers they are not but giants and all of them are standing in the well around the bank each from his navel down as when a fog is thinning off one's gaze little by little giveth shape to that which since it packs the air the mist conceals even so as through the dense dark air i pierced and nearer drew and nearer to the brink error in me took flight and fear increased for as upon its round enclosing walls monte regione crowds itself with towers thus o'er the margin which surrounds the well with one half of their bodies towered up those frightful giants whom when from the sky he thunders jupiter is threatening still already now was i distinguishing the face of one his shoulders and his breast most of his paunch and down his sides both arms when nature ceased from making animals like these and took such executioners from mars she certainly did very well and even if she of elephants and whales repent her not whoever subtly looks holds her therein the more discreet and just for where the reasoning faculty is joined to evil will equipped with power to act people can make against it no defence his face appeared to me as long and big as is at rome the pine cone of st peter's and in proportion to it were his other bones so that the bank which from his middle down an apron was showed quite so much of him above it that of reaching to his hair three frisians would have made a useless boast for i full thirty spans of him perceived down from the place at which one buckles cloaks et almi. the frightful mouth to which no sweeter psalms were fitting thereupon began to cry then toward him cried my leader foolish soul keep to thy horn and vent thyself therewith when wrath or other passion seizes thee search at thy neck and thou wilt find the cord which holds it tight o spirit of confusion and see it lying on thy mighty breast to me then self-accused he stands for this is nimrod to whose evil thought is due that more than one tongue in the world is spoken let us leave him alone nor talk in vain for such is every tongue to him as his to others is for that is known to none then turning to the left we travelled on much further and within a crossbow's shot we found the next one far more large and fierce what was the master's power who girded him i cannot say but this one had in front his left arm and behind his back his right tied by a chain which downward from his neck held him so bound that on the uncovered part it wound around as far as the fifth coil my leader said to me against jove most high this proud soul wished to test his strength and hence hath this reward Ephialtes is his name his haughty undertaking he attempted what time the giants caused the gods to fear the arms he plied he moveth now no more and i to him if possible it be i'd gladly have these eyes of mine enjoy experience of the measureless briarius then he replied antis thou behold not far from here who speaks and since unbound can set us at the bottom of all sin he is much further on whom thou wouldst see and bound he is and shaped like this one save that more ferocious in his looks he seems there never was an earthquake strong enough to shake a tower with so much violence as Ephialtes quickly shook at this then more than ever yet did i fear death nor for it was there need of more than fear had it not been that i perceived his bonds we thereupon proceeded further still and to antaeus came who full five ells beside his head protruded from the pit o thou that in the valley fortune blessed which once caused scipio to inherit glory when with his followers hannibal took flight once tookst a thousand lions as thy prey and who hadst thou been at thy brethren's war on high it seems that it is still believed the sons of earth had been the victors there pray set us down below nor let disdain affect thee where the cold locks up cocytus make us not go to titius 
or to Tiphius. This man can give what most is longed for here. Stoop, then, nor twist thy muzzle. He can still give fame to thee on earth, since he is living, and still looks forward to long life, if grace recall him not untimely to itself. The teacher thus, then he in haste stretched out the hands, whose mighty pressure Hercules once felt, and took my leader. Virgil then, on feeling himself taken, said to me, Come here, that I may take thee up. And then so did, that he and I one bundle were. Such as the Caricenda seems, when viewed beneath its leaning side, when e'er a cloud sails o'er it so that opposite it hangs. Such did Antaeus seem to me, who watched to see him stoop, and such a moment twas, that I had gladly gone another road. But lightly at the bottom which devours Judas and Lucifer, he set us down. Nor thus bent over did he linger there, but raised himself, as on a ship a mast. End of Inferno, Canto 31section thirty two of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto thirty two the ninth circle treachery cocytus traitors to their relatives and to their country if i had rhymes that were as harsh and hoarse as would be fitting for the dismal hole on which lean all the other circling rocks i'd squeeze the juice of my conception out more fully but because I have them not, not without fear do I resolve to speak, for to describe the bottom of the universe is not an enterprise wherewith to jest, nor for a tongue that says mamma and dad. Let then those ladies give my verse their aid, who helped Amphion build the walls of Thebes, that from the facts the telling differ not. O rabble that ill-born beyond all people are in a place to speak of which is hard, far better had ye here been sheep or goats when we were down within the gloomy well beneath the giant's feet though lower far and i still gazing at its lofty wall i heard one say to me look where thou walkest and see that with thy feet thou trample not the heads of us two wretched weary brothers thereat i turned around and saw before me and neath my feet a lake which being frozen seemed to be made of glass and not of water the danube up in austria never made so thick a veil in winter for its course nor yonder neath the cold sky did the dawn as what was here for even if tambernic had fallen on it or had pietrapana it had not cracked even at its very edge and as a frog remains to do its croaking with muzzle out of water in the season when oft the peasant dreams that she is gleaning even so as far as where one's shame is shown the woeful shades were livid in the ice as to the notes of storks they set their teeth each kept his face turned downward from his mouth the cold and from his eyes his saddened heart provides itself a witness in their midst when i had gazed around a while i looked down at my feet and two i saw with heads so close together that their hair was mixed ye that are pressing thus your breasts together say who ye are said i they bent their necks and when their faces had been raised toward me their eyes moist only inwardly before gushed upward through the lids whereat the cold binding the tears between them closed them up a clamp ne'er bound so tightly board to board whereat so great the anger mastering them like two he-goats they butted one another and one who had by reason of the cold lost both his ears with face still lowered said why dost thou mirror thee so much on us if thou wouldst know who those two near thee are the valley from which thy Vicenzio flows belonged to their sire albert and to them they issued from one body and thou canst search through all caina but thou it never find a shade more worthy to be fixed in ice not he whose breasts and shadow broken were by one same blow at arthur's hand nor yet focaccia nor this fellow here whose head so blocks me that i cannot see beyond and who was asol mascarioni called who he was though if tuscan now knowst well and that thou put me to no further speech know then that i was comaccione de pazzi 
and that to excuse me i await Kalin. thereafter i beheld a thousand faces made dog-like by the cold hence frozen ponds cause me to shudder now and always will and now while toward that centre we were moving where to all heavy objects gravitate and i was trembling in the eternal cold i know not whether it were will or fate or chance but as i walked among the heads hard in the face of one i struck my foot weeping he scolded wherefore dost thou smite me unless thou comest to increase the vengeance for monteperti why dost thou molest me and i said teacher wait now for me here that i through him may issue from a doubt then at thy pleasure shalt thou hurry me my leader stopped and i to him who still was savagely blaspheming said what sort of man art thou that scoldest people so now who art thou that ghost he replied through antinora smiting cheek so roughly that it would be too much wert thou alive i am alive and it may profit thee was my reply for me to place thy name if fame thou ask among my other notes and he i crave the contrary away with thee and bother me no more for ill dost that now how to flatter in this bog thereat i seized him by the nape and said it needs must be that thou reveal thy name or that no hair remain upon thee here then he to me though thou pull out my hair i'll neither say nor show thee who i am fall thou upon my head a thousand times i had his hair wrapped round my hand already and more than one shock had i plucked from him while he was barking with his eyes turned down when here another cried what ails thee bocca is making noise with jawbones not enough unless thou bark what devil touches thee henceforth said i i would not have thee speak perfidious traitor for true news of thee i'll carry with me to thy lasting shame but be gone and tell where thou wilt he answered but be not silent if thou issue hence of him who had now just his tongue so ready he here bewails the money of the french him of duero thou canst say i saw where cold the days are for the sinful folk and if thou shouldst be asked who else was there thou hast beside thee him of Pecaria, who had his gorget cut in two by florence gianni de soldanier is further on i think with ganelon and tebardello who while its people slept unlocked faenza from him we had departed now when two i saw so frozen in a single hole that one man's head served as the other's cap and as because of hunger bread is eaten even so the upper on the other set his teeth where to the nape the brain is joined nor otherwise did tadeus gnaw the temples of menalippus out of spite than this one was gnawing at the skull and other parts o thou that showest by a sign so beastly hatred toward him thou eatest tell me why said i to him on this express condition that shouldst thou rightfully of him complain i knowing who ye are and that one's sin may quit thee for it in the world above if that wherewith i speak be not dried up End of Inferno Canto 32section thirty three of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto thirty three the ninth circle treachery cocytus traitors to their country and to their guests from his grim meal that sinner raised his mouth and wiped it on the hair of that same head which he had spoiled behind he then began thou wouldst that i renew a hopeless grief the thought of which already breaks my heart before i speak of it but if my words are likely to be seeds and bear the fruit of infamy upon the traitor whom i gnaw speaking and weeping shalt thou see together i know not who thou art nor by what means thou art come down here but when i hear thee speak thou truly seemst to me a florentine know then that i count ugolino was and this man here ruggieri the archbishop and now i'll tell thee why i'm thus his neighbour that as the outcome of his evil thoughts i trusting him was seized and afterwards was put to death there is no need to say but that which thou canst not have heard that is how cruel was my death thou now shalt hear and whether he have wronged me thou shalt know 
a narrow slit within the molting tower which bears because of me the name of hunger and in whose walls still others must be locked had through its opening shown me many a moon already when i had the evil dream which rent apart the curtain of the future this one therein a lord and huntsman seemed chasing the wolf and wolfings towards the mount which hinders pisans from beholding luca with bitches lean and eager and well trained for he had set before him in his van gualandi with sismondi and lanfranchi after a little run both father and son seemed weary to me then methought i saw their flanks torn open by sharp pointed fangs when just before the morning i awoke i heard my children who were with me there sob in their sleep and ask me for their bread cruel indeed thou art if thinking what my heart forebode thou grievest not already and if thou weepest not at what art wont to weep awake they were and now the hour was drawing nigh when food was brought to us hence each by reason of his dream was worried and then i heard the dread tower's lower door nailed up whereat without a word i looked my children in the face i did not weep so like a stone had i become within they wept and my poor little anselm said father thou lookest so what aileth thee but still i did not weep nor did i answer through all that day or through the following night till on the world another sun had dawned then when a little beam had made its way into our woeful prison and i perceived by their four faces how i looked myself i bit in anguish both my hands and they thinking it done because i craved to eat immediately stood up and said to me father much less shall we be pained if us thou eat thou with this wretched flesh did clothe us do thou then strip it from us now thereat to sadden them no more i calmed myself through that day and the next we all kept mute ah why hard earth didst thou not open up then gaddo when the fourth day we had reached stretched himself out at length before my feet and said my father why dost thou not help me and there he died and even as thou seest me between the fifth day and the sixth i saw the three fall one by one and blind already i gave myself to groping over each and two days called them after they were dead then fasting proved more powerful than pain when he had spoken thus with eyes awry he seized again the wretched skull with teeth which for the bone were strong as are a dog's ah pisa foul reproach of those that dwell in that fair country where the sea is heard since slow thy neighbours are to punish thee then let caprara and gorgona move and make a hedge across the arno's mouth that every person in thee may be drowned for though count ugolino had the name of traitor to thee in thy castle towns thou shouldst not thus have crucified his sons their youthful age had made thou modern thebes regatta and uguccione innocent and the other two my canto names above further along we went to where the ice roughly enswathes another class of people not downward turned but wholly on their backs weeping itself allows not weeping there and tears which find a barrier in their eyes turn back to cause their suffering to increase because the first ones form a solid block and thus like crystal visors wholly fill the hollow cup beneath the brow and though as in a callous spot because of cold all feeling had departed from my face it seemed to me that now i felt some wind whence i to him my teacher who moves this is not all moving air quenched here below and he ere long shalt thou be where thine eyes seeing the cause which raineth down the blast will make an answer to thee as to this one of the wretches of the icy crust called out to us thereat o oh, souls so cruel that unto you the last place is assigned remove from me the hard veils on my face that i may somewhat vent the pain that fills my heart before the tears freeze up again whence i to him if thou wouldst have me help thee say who thou art 
and should i not relieve thee may i needs reach the bottom of the ice then he i frate alberigo am he of the evil garden's fruit who here for every fig i gave get back a date then oh said i art thou already dead and he to me replied i have no knowledge how in the world above my body fares such is the privilege of this ptolemea that frequently a soul falls into it ere arthropos have caused it to move on but that thou scrape more gladly from my face these glassy tears know then that just as soon as any soul betrays as i betrayed its body is taken from it by a demon who then takes charge of it until its time be all revolved into a well like this it rushes headlong down and so perhaps the body of the shade that winters here behind me is still visible above this thou shouldst know if just come down for he Sabranca doria is and many years have now gone by since he was thus shut up i think said i that thou deceivest me for Branca doria is not dead as yet but eats and drinks and sleeps and dons his clothes above us in the male branca's ditch he said there where the sticky pitch is boiling not yet had Mikel Tsanke's soul arrived when in his stead this fellow left behind a devil in his body as did also one of his kinsmen who with him performed the treachery but stretch thy hand here now and open my eyes and yet i oped them not for rudeness shown to him was courtesy ah genoese ye men estranged from all morality and full of every vice why from the earth are ye not wholly driven for with the meanest spirit of romagna i found one such of you that for his deeds in soul he bathes already in cositos and seems in body still alive above end of inferno canto thirty three Section 34 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 34, The Ninth Circle, Treachery, Cocytus, Traitors to Their Benefactors, Lucifer. The banners of the King of Hell advance toward us. Now, therefore, look ahead of thee. My teacher said, And see if thou perceive him as when a heavy fog is breathed abroad or when at night our hemisphere grows dark a windmill looks when seen from far away even such a structure seemed i now to see then for the wind i shrank behind my leader for other shelter was there none i now and tis with fear i put it into verse was where the shades were wholly covered up and visible as is a straw in glass some lying are and some are standing up one on his head the other on his soles one like a bow bends toward his feet his face when we had gone so far ahead that now it pleased my teacher to reveal to me the creature who once seemed so beautiful he stepped from where he was in front of me stopped me and said lo this and lo the place where thou must arm thyself with fortitude how frozen and how weak i then became ask thou not reader for i write it not because all speech would be of small avail i did not die nor yet remained alive think for thyself now hast thou any wit what i became of both of these deprived the emperor of the realm of woe stood forth out of the ice from midway up his breast and i compare more closely with a giant than merely with his arms the giants do consider now how great that whole must be that with such parts as these may be compared if once as beautiful as ugly now he still raised up his brows against his maker justly doth every woe proceed from him oh what a marvel it appeared to me when i beheld three faces to his head one was in front of us and that was red the other two were to the latter joined right o'er the middle of each shoulder blade and met each other where he had his crest that on the right twixt white and yellow seemed the left one such to look at as are those who come from there where valewood flows the nile 
under each face two mighty wings stretched out of size proportioned to so huge a bird sails of the sea i never saw so large they had no feathers but were like a bat's in fashion these he flapped in such a way that three winds issued forth from him thereby cossetus was completely frozen up with six eyes he was weeping and his tears and bloody slaver trickled o'er three chins in each mouth as a heckle would have done a sinner he was crushing with his teeth and thus was causing pain to three of them to him who was in front of us the biting was nothing to the clawing for at times his back remained completely stripped of skin that soul up there which hath the greatest pain judas iscariot is my teacher said who hath his head within and plies his legs without of the other two whose heads are down brutus is he who from the black snout hangs see how he writhes and utters not a word cassius the other is who so big limbed appears but night is coming up again and now tis time to leave for we've seen all then as it pleased him i embraced his neck and he availed himself of time and place and when the wings were opened wide enough he firmly grasped the shaggy flanks and then from tuft to tuft he afterward descended between the matted hair and frozen crusts when we were come to where the thigh turns round just at the thick part of the hips my leader with tiring effort and with stress of breath turned his head round to where his legs had been and seized the hair as one would who ascends hence i thought we were going back to hell hold fast to me for by such stairs as these panting like one worn out my teacher said must such great wickedness be left behind then through an opening in the rock he issued and after seating me upon its edge over toward me advanced his cautious step raising mine eyes i thought that i should still see lucifer the same as when i left him but i beheld him with his legs held up and thereupon if i became perplexed let those dull people think who do not see what kind of point that was which i had passed stand up my teacher said upon thy feet the way is long and difficult the road and now to middle tears the sun returns it was no palace hallway where we were but just a natural passage underground which had a wretched floor and lack of light before i tear myself from this abyss teacher said i on rising talk to me a little and correct my wrong ideas where is the ice and how is this one fixed thus upside down and in so short a time how hath the sun from evening crossed to morn then he to me thou thinkest thou art still beyond the centre where i seize the hair of that bad worm who perforates the world while i was going down thou wast beyond it but when i turned thou then didst pass the point to which all weights are drawn on every side thou now art come beneath the hemisphere opposed to that the great dry land o'er covers and neath whose zenith was destroyed the man who without sinfulness was born and died thy feet thou hast upon the little sphere which forms the other surface of judeca tis morning here whenever evening there and he who made our ladder with his hair is still fixed fast even as he was before he fell on this side out of heaven whereat the land which hitherto was spread out here through fear of him made of the sea a veil and came into our hemisphere perhaps to flee from him what is on this side seen left the place empty here and upward rushed there is a place down there as far removed from beelzebub as e'er his tomb extends not known by sight but by a brooklet's sound which flows down through a hole there in the rock gnawed in it by the water's spiral course which slightly slopes my leader then and i in order to regain the world of light entered upon that dark and hidden path and without caring for repose went up he going on ahead and i behind till through a rounded opening i beheld some of the lovely things the sky contains thence we came out and saw again the stars end of inferno canto thirty four
Section thirty five of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto one. Introduction to the Purgatorio. The shore of the island of Purgatory. Cato. To run o'er better water hoists her sails the little vessel of my genius now, which leaves behind her such a cruel sea. And of that second realm I'll sing wherein the human spirit purifies itself and groweth worthy to ascend to heaven but here let poetry arise from death since holy muses yours i am and let calliope hear somewhat higher soaring with those sweet tones accompany my song whose power the miserable magpies felt so keenly that of pardon they despaired the oriental sapphire's tender hue now gathering in the sky's unclouded face as far as to the first of circles pure began again to give mine eyes delight when forth i issued from the deadly air which with its gloom had filled mine eyes and heart the beauteous planet which incites to love veiling with light the fishes in her train was causing all the eastern sky to laugh round to the right i turned and set my mind upon the other pole and saw four stars never perceived save by the first of men the sky appeared to enjoy their little flames o region of the north that widowed art because deprived of gazing thereupon when i had from the sight of them withdrawn turning a little toward the other pole whence now the wane had wholly disappeared a lone old man beside me i perceived deserving of such reverence in his looks that no son owes his father any more long was the beard he wore and partly white as likewise was the hair upon his head two locks of which hung down upon his breast and so the rays of those four holy stars adorned his face with splendour that to me coarse he looked as if the sun were facing him who then are ye that gainst the blind streams have from the eternal prison escaped he said moving the while those venerable locks who led you or what served you as a lamp when forth ye issued from the night profound which makes the infernal veil for ever black are broken thus the laws of hell's abyss or through new counsel is there change in heaven that ye though damned are come to these my cliffs my leader thereupon took hold of me and with his words and with his hands and signs imposed respect upon my legs and brow he then replied i came not of myself from heaven came down a lady at whose prayer i helped this man with my companionship but since thy will it is that our true state should be explained to thee more clearly mine it cannot be that this should be denied thee not yet had this man his last evening seen, but through his folly was so near to it that he was left but very little time. As I have told thee, I was sent to save his life, nor was there any other way than this to which I have addressed myself. I have shown him all the people who are guilty, and now I mean those spirits to reveal who neath thy jurisdiction cleanse themselves long would it take to tell thee how i led him virtue descendeth from on high which helps me lead him to see thee and to hear thee speak his coming therefore pleased to welcome freedom he seeks which is so dear as knoweth he who gives up life therefore this thou dost know since death for its sake was not bitter to thee in utica where thou didst leave the rope which on the great day will so brightly shine the eternal edicts are not void through us for this man lives and i am not bound by minos but of that circle am wherein the eyes of thy chaste marcia are o holy breast whose looks implore thee still to hold her thine for love of her then yield thee unto us permit us through thy seven domains to go my grateful praise of thee I'll bear to her, if to be mentioned there below thou deign. Marcia, so pleased mine eyes, he then replied, that, while upon the other side I was, I granted all the favours she desired. 
now that she dwells beyond the evil stream no longer can she move me by the law made at the moment when i issued thence but if a lady of heaven impel and guide thee as thou hast said no need of flattering prayers suffice it thee that for her sake thou ask go then and see that with a leafless rush thou gird this man and that thou wash his face so that therefrom all foulness thou remove for twere not fit he went with eyes all cast by any mist before the first of those who serve as ministers of paradise this little isle around its lowest base down yonder where the waves are beating it produces rushes on its yielding ooze no other plant like one that brought forth leaves or hardened can maintain its life down there because it yields not when receiving blows thereafter be not hither your return the sun which rises now will show you how to climb the mountain by the easiest slope thereat he disappeared and i arose without a word and to my leader's side i closely drew and toward him turned mine eyes and he began son follow thou my steps let us turn backward for the shore slopes down on this side toward its lowly boundaries the dawn was vanquishing the morning breeze which fled before it so that from afar i recognized the shimmering of the sea we now were going o'er the lonely plain as one who to a road he lost returns and till he find it seems to go in vain when we were there where with the sun the dew still struggles on through being in a place where for the breeze it slowly melts away my teacher having spread out both his hands rested them gently on the tender grass whence i who of his purpose was aware yielded to him the cheeks my tears had stained he then brought all that natural colour back which hell had on my countenance concealed we came thereafter to that lonely shore which never saw its waters sailed by one who afterward experienced a return here as the other pleased he girded me o oh, wondrous sight for like the humble plant which he had chosen another instantly sprang forth again from where he tore the first end of purgatorio canto one Section thirty six of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto two. The shore of the island of Purgatory. The angel pilot and arriving souls. And now already had the sun arrived at that horizon whose meridian circle rests with its zenith o'er Jerusalem, and night, which circles opposite thereto, was issuing from the Ganges with the scales, which, when she gains, are falling from her hands. So that the white and pure vermilion cheeks of beautiful Aurora, where I was, were turning orange through excessive age. Along the seaside we were lingering still, like folk who, taking thought about their road, go on in heart, but with their bodies stay. When, lo, as, at the approach of morning, mars because of heavy vapours groweth red down in the west above the ocean's floor even so i saw may i again behold it a light which o'er the sea so swiftly moved that no flight is as rapid as its motion from which when i a moment had withdrawn mine eyes to ask a question of my leader again i saw it grown more bright and large and on each side of it there then appeared i knew not what white thing and underneath little by little came another forth meanwhile my teacher uttered not a word until the first white objects looked like wings then having recognized the pilot well he cried see see now that thou bend thy knees this is god's angel fold thy hands henceforth shalt thou behold such officers as this see how he so scorns human instruments as to wish neither oar nor other sail than his own wings between such distant shores see how he holds them straight up toward the sky 
stroking the air with those eternal plumes which do not mould as mortal feathers do and then as more and more the bird divine drew near to us the brighter he appeared therefore mine eyes endured him not near by but down i cast them with a little boat he came ashore so agile and so light the water swallowed up no part of it such on its stern the heavenly pilot stood that he would bless one were he but described more than a hundred spirits sat within when israel out of egypt they all in unison were singing there together with what is written after in that psalm then having signed them with the holy cross whereat all cast themselves upon the shore he went away as swiftly as he came the crowd which stayed seemed strangers to the place and gazed around them there as doth a man who with unwonted things acquaints himself the sun which from the middle of the sky had hunted capricorn with arrows bright was shooting forth the day on every side when those new people raised their brows toward us and said if ye know how point out to us the road that one should take to reach the mount and virgil answered ye perchance believe that we have had experience of this place but we are pilgrim strangers like yourselves we came just now a little while before you but by another way so rough and hard that going up will now seem play to us the souls who by my breathing had become aware that i was still a living being in their astonishment turned death-like pale and as around a messenger who bears the olive people surge to hear the news and as to crowding none of them seemed shy so one and all those fortune favoured souls fixed on my face their gaze as if forgetting to go and make their spirits beautiful then one among them i beheld advance in such a loving manner to embrace me that it persuaded me to do the like oh save in your appearance empty shades three times behind it did i clasp my hands and to my breast therewith as oft returned with wonder i believe i painted me smiling because of this the shade drew back while following after i pressed further on with gentle words he told me to desist then who it was i knew and begged of him to stop a little while and speak with me as thee i loved when in my mortal body he answered me even so when freed i love thee therefore i stop but wherefore goest thou Cazella, mine said i i take this journey that where i am i may return again but why from thee hath so much time been taken and he to me no outrage hath been done me if he who takes both when and whom he likes hath more than once refused me passage here for to a righteous will is his conformed yet peacefully these three months hath he taken whoever wished to enter into his boat hence i who now was toward the seashore bent where tiber's water mingles with the salt was with benignity received by him at yonder river's mouth toward which his wings even now are turned for those who go not down toward archeron always assemble there and i if some new law take not from thee the memory or the practice of the song of love which used to quiet all my longings be pleased a little to console therewith my spirit which because of coming here when in its body is so sore distressed the love that talketh with me in my mind he thereupon began to sing so sweetly that still within me is its sweetness heard my teacher i and those that with him were seemed as contented as if none of us had any other thing upon his mind absorbed in listening to his notes we all were motionless when lo the grave old man who cried ye laggard spirits what is this what means this negligence and standing still run to the mount and strip ye off the slough which lets not god be visible to you 
even as when picking grains of wheat or tares doves met together at their feeding calm and not displaying their accustomed pride if anything appear that frightens them all of a sudden leave their food alone because assailed by greater cause for care even so i saw that new-come family give up the song and toward the hillside move like one who goes but whither knoweth not nor was in less haste our departure made end of purgatorio canto two section thirty seven of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain purgatorio canto three answer purgatory the repentant who died excommunicated although their sudden flight had scattered them over the plain and turned them toward the mount where justice probes us with its penalties more closely to my faithful mate i drew and how without him had i run my race or who had drawn me up the mountain's side to me he seemed o'erwhelmed with self-reproach o oh, conscience when both dignified and clear how sharp a bite a slight fault is to thee when once his feet had given up the haste which of their dignity deprives all acts my mind to one thought limited at first enlarged its scope with eager interest now and toward that mountain i addressed my gaze which skyward rises highest from the sea the sun which back of us was flaming red in front of me was broken in the shape wherein i lent its rays a resting place i turned and at my side i looked afraid of having been abandoned when i saw the ground was dark in front of me alone when wholly turned my comforter began why still distrustful dost thou not believe that i am with thee and am guiding thee tis evening now where buried lies the body wherein i cast a shadow naples now possesses it from brindisi it was taken if then in front of me no shadow fall marvel no more than at the heavenly spheres thou wouldst which hinder not each other's rays that power enables bodies such as mine to suffer torments both of heat and cold which wills not that its ways be shown to us insane is he that hopes our human reason will ever travel o'er the boundless path o'er which one substance in three persons moves be satisfied o human race with facts for if you could have seen the cause of all no need had been for mary to bear child and you've seen vainly longing men so great that their desire would else have been appeased which given them is for an eternal grief i speak of aristotle and of plato and many others here he bowed his head and saying nothing more remained disturbed meanwhile we had attained the mountain's foot and there we found the rocky cliff so steep that legs would there be nimble all in vain between lerici and turbia the loneliest and wildest path is if compared with that a safely climbed and easy flight of stairs now who knows on which side the hill so slopes then said my teacher as he stayed his steps that he who wingless goes can make the ascent meanwhile as he was questioning his mind about the path and held his face bowed down and i was gazing upward round the cliff upon my left a throng of souls appeared who toward us moved their feet yet did not seem to move so slowly were they coming on teacher said i lift up thine eyes behold on this side people who will give us counsel if thou canst not obtain it from thyself he then looked up and with relief replied let us go toward them for they slowly come and thou sweet son be steadfast in thy hope those people were as yet as far away after a thousand of our steps i mean as a good thrower's hand would reach when all pressed up against the lofty bank's hard mass and stayed there still and huddled up together as when in doubt a walker stops to look virgil began o ye whose end was good o now elected spirits by the peace which i believe ye all look forward to say where the mount so lies that going up be possible for us for loss of time to him who knoweth most is most displeasing as from the fold young sheep are wont to come by ones and twos and threes while timidly the others stay with downcast eyes and muzzle and what the first one doth so do the rest 
all huddling up to her in case she stop simple and quiet nor yet knowing why even so the leader of that favoured flock i saw start forward then and toward us come modest in face and dignified in gait when those who were in front the light beheld so broken on the ground upon my right that gainst the cliff a shadow fell from me they stopped and backward drew a little way and all the others coming on behind not knowing why they did so did the same without your asking i affirm to you that this you see a human body is therefore the sun's light on the ground is broken be not surprised then but believe that not without a power that cometh down from heaven is he attempting to surmount this wall my teacher thus those worthy people then as with the back part of their hands they waved said turn then and ahead of us go in and one of them began whoe'er thou art as thus thou goest turn thy face recall if thou hast ever seen me in the world toward him i turned and on him fixed my gaze blond handsome and of noble mien he was although an eyebrow by a blow was cut when i had with due modesty disclaimed having e'er seen him there he said now see and showed me high upon his breast a wound then with a smile he said manfred am i the grandson of the empress constance hence i beg thee that on thy return thou go to my fair daughter mother of the honour of sicily and aragon and should aught else be told her tell her thou the truth after my body by two mortal stabs had been pierced through in tears i gave myself to that one who forgiveth willingly my sins were horrible indeed and yet the goodness infinite hath arms so wide that it receiveth all who turn to it and if cosenza's pastor who by clement was sent to hunt me down had then perused this page in god's book as he should have done my body's bones would still be lying there hard by the bridge's head near benevento under the keeping of the heavy cairn bathed by the rain the wind now blows them round outside the kingdom near the verdi's banks whither he moved them with extinguished lights not by their cursing is eternal love so lost that it cannot return again as long as hope hath still a speck of green tis true that he that dieth in contempt of holy church though at the very last he may repent outside this mountain's bank must stay for all the time that he hath been in his presumption thirty times as long unless by good prayers shortened be this ban see now if thou canst make me glad by telling my good constanza both where thou hast seen me and of this interdict for one is here greatly advanced by those that are beyond end of purgatorio canto three Section 38 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto 4. Antipurgatory, the first ledge. Those who neglected repentance until death. Whene'er, because of pleasure or of pain received by any faculty of ours, our soul is wholly centred thereupon, it seems to heed no other faculty and this is gainst that wrong belief which holds that one soul in us or another burns therefore when anything is heard or seen which toward it holds the soul intently turned time passes by and one perceives it not since one thing is the faculty which harks and that which holdeth all the soul another this last is bound as twere the former free of this i real experience had while hearing and wondering at that spirit for the sun had climbed up fifty full degrees at least though i had not perceived it when we came to where those souls cried out to us together 
The place which you are asking for is here. Oft doth a farmer, when the grapes grow dark, close up a wider opening in a hedge with but a little forkful of his thorns, than was the entrance there through which my leader, and I behind him, mounted all alone, when once the crowd had gone away from us. One climbs San Leo and then descends to Noli. One wins the summit of Bismantova, helped solely by one's feet. But one up here would have to fly, with the swift wings I mean and plumes of great desire, behind the guide who gave me hope and furnished me with light. As up within the cloven rock we climbed, its walls on each side closely hemmed us in, while under us the ground both feet and hands required. When on the high cliff's upper edge we were, and out upon the open slope which way my teacher shall we go said i and he to me take thou no backward step keep gaining ground behind me up the mount until some guide who knows appeared to us so high the summit was that it surpassed our sight and steeper far the slope than were a line from centre to mid quadrant drawn weary was i when i began to speak o oh, gentle father turn around and see how i remain alone unless thou stop draw thyself up my son as far as there he said and somewhat higher pointed out a ledge on that side circling all the hill his words so spurred me that i forced myself to crawl behind him on my hands and knees until the girding ledge was neath my feet there both of us sat down and faced the east whence we had made the ascent for looking back upon a traversed course is wont to help first to the shores below i turned mine eyes then raised them to the sun and was amazed that we were smitten by it on our left the poet well perceived that i was gazing dumbfounded at the chariot of the light which now was rising between the north and us if castor said he then to me and pollux were in the company of yonder mirror which up and down in turn conducts its light thou wouldst the zodiac's ruddy part behold revolving still more closely to the bears unless it issued from its ancient path if thou wouldst understand how this can be collect thy thoughts within thee and imagine both zion and this mount so placed on earth that both of them one sole horizon have and different hemispheres and thou wilt see how that the road which phaeton could not take alas for him must pass this mount on one while passing that one on the other side if thine intelligence but clearly heed surely my teacher never have i seen said i as clearly as i now perceive where once my mind appeared to be at fault how the mid-circle of supernal motion which in a certain art is called equator and ever between the sun and winter stays lies toward the north for reasons given by thee as far on this side as the hebrew people ever beheld it toward the heated parts but if it please thee i would gladly know how far we have to go because the mount higher ascends than eyes of mine can rise such is this mountain said he then to me that always hard to climb at first below it pains one less the higher one ascends hence when so pleasant to thee it shall seem that going up shall be to thee as easy as floating with the current in a boat thou then shalt have attained this pathway's end hope there to rest thee from thy breathless toil no more i answer this i know for truth when he had ended what he had to say the voice of one near by cried out perhaps ere that shall happen thou wilt need to sit on hearing this we both of us turned round and saw a massive boulder on our left which neither i nor he had seen before thither we drew and there some persons were who lingered in the shade behind the rock as one is wont to do through indolence and one of them who weary seemed to me was sitting with his arms around his knees and down between the latter held his face oh my sweet lord said i turn thine eyes on yonder man who shows himself to be more lazy than if sloth his sister were then turning round toward us and giving heed he moved his face no more than o'er his thigh and said go up now thou that act of art i then knew who it was nor did the strain which quickened still my breath a little hinder my going to him yet when at his side i was he barely raised his head and said 
Hast thou at last seen why it is the sun driveth his car o'er thy left shoulder here? His lazy actions and his few short words impelled my lips to smile a little. Then, Belacqua, I began, I grieve for thee no more, but tell me why thou sittest here. Art waiting for a guide, or hast thou now merely resumed thy customary mood? And he, What, brother, is the use of climbing? The bird of God who at the gate is seated would not allow me to approach the pangs. The sky must first turn round me here outside, as long as ever in my life it did, since I delayed good sighs until the end. Unless before then I be helped by prayers arising from a heart that lives in grace. Of what avail are those unheard in heaven? But now the poet, climbing on ahead, was saying, Come now on with me. Thou seest that our meridian by the sun is touched, and that already from the Ganges' banks night covers up Morocco with her feet. End of Purgatorio Canto 4《セクション39 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto 5. Antipurgatory, the Second Ledge. The Negligent Who Died by Violence. Already had I parted from those shades, and in my leader's steps was following on, when one behind me, pointing with his finger, cried out, See how the light seems not to shine upon the left side of that lower man who seems to act like one that's still alive. Hearing this speech, I turned mine eyes and saw that with astonishment they gazed at me, at me alone, and at the broken light. Why is thy mind so sore perplexed? Then said my teacher, That thou slackens thy pace. What cares thou for what is whispered here? Follow thou me and let the people talk. Firm as a tower remain, which never shakes its top, however hard the winds may blow for from himself he ever turns his mark in whom one thought wells up behind another for each of them impairs the other's strength what could i say in answer save i come and this i said tinged slightly with the colour which sometimes makes one worthy of forgiveness meanwhile a little way ahead of us some people crosswise o'er the slope were coming singing the miserere verse by verse when they became aware that through my body I gave no passage to the rays of light, they changed their chant into a long, hoarse, Oh! And two of them, acting as messengers, ran out to meet us, and inquiring, said, Cause, Cause us, us to know, know what, what kind, kind of, of life, life is, is yours. My teacher answered, Ye may go your way, and unto those that sent you out report that real flesh this man's body is. And if, as I suppose, they stopped because they saw his shadow they've been answered well enough if they respect him it may profit them i never saw ignited vapours cleave at nightfall an unclouded sky or break so rapidly from august clouds at sunset that these returned not up in shorter time and once there with the rest they veered toward us as would a troop that ran without a curb these people who are crowding us are many the poet said and come to beg of thee therefore go on and listen on thy way o soul that goest to be glad they cried as on they came with those limbs which thou hadst when thou wast born a little stay thy steps recall if thou hast e'er seen one of us that yonder thou mayst carry news of him why pray dost thou go on ah why not stop we all were slain of old by violence and sinners were until our latest hour then light from heaven so caused us to beware that we repentant and forgiving issued from life at peace with god who in our hearts stirs us with grievous longings to behold him and i howe'er i gaze upon your faces none do i recognize and yet if aught within my power can please you well-born souls ask it and i will do it by the peace which following the feet of such a guide hath now become my quest from world to world and one began each trusts in thy good help without an oath provided lack of power cut not thy good will short hence i who speak alone before the others beg of thee if e'er thou see the country which extends between romagna and the land of charles be courteous to me with thy prayers in fano that supplications do be made for me 
to help me purge away my grievous sins it was from there i came but those deep wounds whence flowed the blood wherein my life resided were given me in the anteranori's lap where i had trusted i should be most safe the lord of esti who was angry with me beyond the bounds of justice had it done yet toward la mira i had only fled when at oriago i was overtaken still yonder would i be where people breathe toward the lagoon i ran whose reeds and mire so hampered me i fell and there a pool formed from my veins i saw upon the ground then said another so may that desire which draws thee to the lofty mount be granted with kindly pity prithee help thou mine i montefeltro was i am buonconte Shivana cares not for me nor do others hence among these i go with head bowed down and i to him what force was it or chance caused thee to stray so far from campaldino that never hath thy burial place been known oh he replied a river called archiano flows crosswise at the casentino's foot and takes its rise among the apennines above the hermitage there where its name is lost i came a fugitive on foot pierced through the throat and staining with my blood the plain and there it was i lost my sight and ended speech with mary's name and there i fell and all alone my flesh remained the truth i tell tell thou among the living god's angel took me while the one from hell cried out why dost thou rob me thou from heaven thou bearest hence this man's eternal part because of one small tear which takes him from me but i shall with the rest deal otherwise well knowst thou how damp vapours in the air as soon as they ascend to where the cold affects them into water change again he joined that wicked will which asks for naught but evil with intelligence and stirred the mists and wind by power his nature gave the valley thereupon when day was spent he coughed o'er with fog from pratomagno up to the mountain chain and made the skies so lowering o'er it that the pregnant air to water turned the rain poured down and what the soil absorbed not reached the rivulets then having joined the torrent brooks it rushed so swiftly toward the royal stream that naught could hold it back the swift archiano then hard by its outlet found my frozen body and as it swept it on into the arno loosen the cross which with my arms i made upon my breast when sorrow's pain o'erwhelmed me along its banks and bed it rolled me on then covered me and wrapped me with its spoils prithee when to the world thou hast returned and when from thy long journey thou art rested after the second spirit said the third do thou remember me who pia am siena made me maremma me and maid he knoweth what this means who previously had in betrothal ringed me with his gem end of purgatorio canto five section forty of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto VI. Antipurgatory, the negligent who died by violence. Addressed to Italy and Florence. When e'er a game of dice is broken up, the one who loses, sorrowing, stays behind, and learns as sadly he repeats the throes. While with the other all the people leave. One goes before, one grasps him from behind, and at his side one asks to be remembered. And he stops not, but that one heeds and this the one whose hand he takes no longer crowds and from the throng he thus defends himself e'en such as he was i in that dense crowd for as i this and that way turned my face and promised each i freed myself therefrom here was the aretine who met his death from rinditaco's cruel arms and he who running madly in pursuit was drowned here frederick novello prayed with hands outstretched and he of pisa who induced worthy marzucco to reveal his strength count orso i beheld there and the soul through spite and envy from its body parted and not so he maintained through crime committed pierre de la brosse i mean and here while still on earth let brabant's lady see to it that among the worse flock she be not for this 
when i was free from each and all those shades who only prayed that others pray for them that their becoming holy might be sped it seems that thou deniest i began o thou my light expressly in a text that prayer can cause a change in heaven's decrees and yet these people only pray for this could it then be that this their hope is vain or is thy saying not quite clear to me and he to me that which i wrote is clear nor yet delusive is this people's hope if it be looked at with a healthy mind for justice stoops not from her lofty height because love's ardour all at once fulfils what he who dwelleth here must satisfy and there where i decided on this point the fault was not made good again by praying because the prayer discordant was with god yet in so deep a doubt decide thou not unless she bid thee do so who a light shall be between thine intellect and truth i know not if thou understand i speak of beatrice thou'lt see her up above smiling and happy on this mountain's top and i let's go then lord with greater haste for now i grow not weary as before and see the hillside casts its shadow now we shall go forward with this day he answered as long as we are able but the case is otherwise than what thou deemest it ere thou shalt be up there thou him shalt see return who now so shields him with the hill that thou dost not compel his rays to break but yonder see a soul who all alone is seated and toward us is looking now he will point out to us the quickest way we came to him o lombard soul how full of self-respect and noble scorn thou wast and in the moving of thine eyes how slow and dignified nought did he say to us but let us go our way and only gazed as would a couching lion in repose virgil meanwhile drew near to him and begged that he would show to us the best ascent and he to his request made no reply but asked us of our country and condition and my kind leader was with mantua beginning when the self-collected shade from where he was sprang up to meet him saying oh mantuan i'm sordello of thy town and each the other thereupon embraced ah italy thou slave thou inn of woe ship without pilot in a mighty storm not queen of provinces but house of shame so instant ready was that noble soul but at the sweet sound of his city's name to welcome here his fellow-citizen and yet within thee now thy living sons are not exempt from war and those one wall and moat enclose upon each other pray all round thy coastline search its shores poor wretch and then within thy bosom look and learn if any part of thee be blessed with peace what boots it that justinian rearranged thy bridle if thy saddle vacant be had it not been for that thy shame were less and ye are ye that ought to be devout and so let caesar in his saddle sit if well ye heeded god's advice to you behold how wild this animal has grown through being uncorrected by the spur since ye first set your hands upon her rein o german albert thou that dost forsake this creature now become untamed and wild and oughtest to bestride her saddle-bows may some just judgment from the stars befall thy blood and may it so unheard of be and plain that it may frighten thy successor for held by greed of lands outside its bounds thou and thy father also have allowed the empire's garden to become a waste come see the montagues and capulets monaldi and filippeschi careless man already troubled those and these in dread come come thou cruel man and see the oppression of thy nobility and right their wrongs and thou shalt see how safe is santa fior come see thy rome that widowed and alone is shedding tears and day and night is calling why dost thou not my caesar stay with me come see the people how they love each other and if for us no pity move thy soul come then and shame thee for thine own renown and if i be allowed o jove supreme thou that for us wast crucified on earth are thy just eyes too turned away elsewhere for in thy counsel's depths art thou in this a preparation making for some good from our perception utterly cut off 
for all italia's towns are full of tyrants and a marcellus every churl is deemed who comes to play a party henchman's role my florence well mayst thou be satisfied with this digression which concerns thee not thanks to thy people who look out for that many at heart are just but slow to shoot lest to the bow uncounselled they should come but thy folk on their lips alone are just many refuse to bear the common burden but thy folk eagerly respond and cry although uncalled i'll load myself therewith be joyful then since thou hast cause to be thou that art rich that peaceful art and wise whether i speak the truth results conceal not athens and lacedaemon they that framed the ancient laws and were so civilized in living well made but a little mark compared with thee that dost so carefully provide thee that thy fine october spinning as far as mid-november reaches not how many times within thy memory hast thou changed laws and coinage officers and customs and thy membership renewed and if thou well recall and face the light thou'lt see thy likeness to a suffering woman who on a feather bed can find no rest but seeks by tossing to relieve her pain End of Purgatorio Canto Six. Section forty one of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto Seven, Antipurgatory, The Veil of Flowers, Prince's Intent on Earthly Glory. After their words of greeting, dignified and glad, had three and four times been repeated, Sordello, drawing back, said, Who are ye? Or ever yet the spirits, who deserve to rise to God, were toward this mount directed? My bones were buried by Octavian's order. Virgil am I, and through no other guilt did I lose heaven, than through not having faith. Twas thus my leader thereupon replied like one who sudden sees before him aught he wonders at and as he says it is and no it's not believes and disbelieves such did the former seem and then his head he bowed and humbly turning back to him embraced him where inferior men take hold oh glory of the latins said he then through whom our language showed what it could do eternal honour of my native town what merit or what grace shows thee to me tell me if i deserve to hear thy words if thou from hell art come or from what cloister through all the circles of the woeful realm he answered him twas not for doing aught but for not doing i lost the sight of that exalted sun thou longest for and which was known by me too late there is a place below not sad because of pain but only gloom where moans sound not as wailings but are merely sighs there with those little innocents i dwell who not delivered yet from human guilt were bitten by the teeth of death and there with those i dwell who did not clothe themselves with the three holy virtues but who knew the others without vice and practised all but give us if thou know and can some sign whereby the sooner we may reach the place where purgatory hath its real beginning no fixed place is assigned us he replied i may go upward and around i'll join thee and be thy guide as far as i can go but see already how the day declines and one at night cannot ascend it hence were well to think of some fair resting place here to the right are souls that dwell apart if thou permit me i will lead thee to them and not without delight will they be known how then is this was answered should one wish to mount by night would some one hinder him or would one not ascend through lack of power then with his finger good sordello marked the ground and see he said when once the sun is gone thou couldst not even cross this line though not because aught else than gloom of night would hinder one from climbing that it is puzzles the will with impotence one could however downward go again therewith and walking o'er the hillside wander round while still the horizon kept the day confined 
my lord then said as if in wonder lost do thou then lead us thither where thou saidst that one well waiting can enjoy himself but little had we gone away from there when i perceived the hill was hollowed out as here on earth our hillside valleys are thither that shade said we'll betake ourselves whereof itself the hillside forms a lap and there will we await the coming day a winding path there was nor steep nor level which led us to a border of the dell where more than half away the hillside falls gold and fine silver scarlet and white lead indigo blue woods clear and shining brown and green of emeralds when newly flaked would each in hue be vanquished by the grass and flowers found growing in that bosomed dell as by the greater vanquished is the less nature not only had been painting there but with the fragrance of a thousand scents was making up a blend unknown on earth here seated on the grass among the flowers salve regina singing souls i saw who for the dell could not be seen outside before the waning sunlight nest itself began the mantuan who had guided us desire me not to lead you among these much better from this border shall ye learn to know the acts and faces of them all than greeted among them in the dale below the one that sitteth highest up and seems to have neglected what he should have done and with his mouth joins not the other's songs was emperor rudolph he who might have healed the wounds that so left italia dead that by another she reviveth late he who appears to cheer him ruled the land where rise the waters which the moldau gives the elbe and the elbe gives the sea named ottokar he was in swaddling clothes far better than is wenceslas his son on whom a bearded man feed lust and ease that small-nosed man who close in council seems with him that hath so kind a countenance died fleeing and disflowering the lily look at him yonder how he smites his breast and see the other one who for his cheek hath sighing made a cushion of his hand father and father-in-law of france's bane they know the latter's foul and vicious life hence comes the sorrow that so pierces them the one who so large-limbed appears and joins in song with him who hath the manly nose was girded with the cord of every worth and if the youth who seated is behind him had following after him remained as king worth would indeed have gone from vase to vase which of the other heirs cannot be said the kingdoms james and frederick hold but none is owner of a better heritage seldom doth human righteousness ascend among the branches this is willed by him who gives it that of him it may be asked my words concern the large-nosed man no less than the other peter who is singing with him whence both apulia and province are grieved that plant is as inferior to its seed as of her husband constant still vaunts more than beatrice and margaret do of theirs behold the king known for his simple life henry of england seated there alone he in his branches better issue hath he that among them lower on the ground is sitting and looks up is marquis william for whom both alexandria and her war make montferrat and canavese weep End of Purgatorio, Canto 7、Section、42 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto 8. Antipurgatory. The Veil of Flowers. Princes intent on earthly glory. The Serpent. Twas now the hour which homeward turns the longing, and melts the heart of those that sail the sea the day they've said good-bye to tender friends and thrills with love the pilgrim newly sped if from afar he hear a tolling bell that seems to mourn the slowly dying day when i began to render hearing vain and of those souls watch one who risen up was asking for attention with his hand he joined his palms and raising them on high turned toward the east his eyes with steadfast gaze as if to god he said i heed naught else ere daylight fadeth issued from his mouth with such devoutness and with notes so sweet that i was made unmindful of myself thereat the others sweetly and devoutly followed that soul and sang the whole hymn through 
fixing their gaze upon the spheres above sharpen thine eyes here reader for the truth for now its veil is certainly so thin that easy is the passage into it i saw that army of the gentle born gazing on high in silence after this as if in expectation pale and meek and issuing from above and coming down two angels with two fiery swords i saw which broken off were of their points deprived as green they were as little new-born leaves and clothed with garments which behind them trailed were stroked and fanned by verdant plumes one came and poised somewhat above us while the other alighted on the hillside opposite so that the people there remained between i well perceived that golden was their hair but on their faces vision went astray as would a power confounded by excess from mary's bosom both of them are come sordello said to guard this sheltered veil against the serpent which will soon arrive hence i who knew not by what path turned round chilled through with fear and to the trusted shoulders drew closely back sordello thereupon began and now among the mighty shades let us descend and we will speak with them greatly will they be pleased to see you here only three steps i think did i go down and was below then one i saw who looked at me alone as if he wished to know me the air had for some time been growing dark but not so much as tween his eyes and mine not to reveal what it concealed before toward me he came and i toward him advanced noble judge nino when i saw that not among the damned thou wast how glad i was no greetings fair were left unsaid between us and then he asked how long ago didst thou o'er the far waters reach the mountain's foot oh i exclaimed across the fields of woe i came this morn and in the first life am though by thus going i'll the other win when once my answer had been heard sordello and he drew back like people suddenly perplexed the first to virgil turned the other to one who there was seated crying out get up corrado come and see what god hath as a favour willed then turned toward me by that rare gratitude thou owest him who hides his primal why in such a way that there's no fording it when thou art past the wide waves ask my joan to pray for me where to the innocent replies are given i think her mother loves me now no more for those white wimples hath she laid aside which she poor soul must needs want back again through her one understands with greatest ease how long the fire of love and woman lasts unless rekindled oft by sight and touch the viper which conducts the milanese afield will never make as beautiful a tomb for her as would galura's cock these were the words he used his countenance marked with the impress of that righteous zeal which burneth in the heart with temperate flame my greedy eyes now sought the sky alone and only there where slowest are the stars as nearest to its axle is a wheel my leader then what art thou looking at up there my son and i at those three torches wherewith the pole on this side wholly burns then he the four bright stars which thou this morn didst see are low down on the other side and these have risen there where those were then while he was speaking thus sordello drew him aside and saying yonder see our foe lifted his finger up to have him look on that side where a little hollowed veil hath no defence a snake there was like that perhaps which gave the bitter fruit to eve on through the grass and flowers the wicked reptile glided and turning back its head at times was licking like a beast that smooths itself i did not see and therefore cannot tell how the celestial falcons gan to move but both i clearly saw when once in motion when cleft by their green wings it heard the air the serpent fled and back the angels turning regained their posts above with equal flight the shade who when he called him to the judge had closely drawn throughout the whole assault had not one moment loosed his gaze from me so may the lantern leading thee above find in thy wheel the wax that is required for one to reach the enamelled green on high he thus began 
If thou of Valdimagra or of its neighbouring land dost know true news, tell it to me, who once was mighty there. Corrado Malaspina I was called. I'm not the elder, but from him descended. I bore my race the love which here I cleansed. Oh, said I then to him, I've never been in your domains, but where throughout all Europe dwelleth a man who knows them not? The fame which honoureth your house proclaims its lords, proclaims its district, so that even he knows of them who hath never been there yet. I swear to you, so may I go on high, that of the glorious use of purse and sword your honoured race doth not despoil itself. Nature and use so favour it, that howe'er the guilty head distort the world, alone it goeth straight, and scorns the evil path. And he, Now go, for lo, the sun shall not seven times on that bed rest him which the ram now covers, and with all four feet bestrides, and this thy courteously expressed opinion shall in the middle of thy head be nailed with greater nails than words of other men unless the course of doom decreed be stayed. End of Purgatorio Canto 8section forty three of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain purgatorio canto nine antipurgatory the veil of flowers dante's first dream the gate of purgatory already was old titan's concubine whitening upon the orient's balcony outside the arms of her sweet paramour already was her forehead shining bright with gems arranged according to the shape of that cold beast which smites one with its tail and night had of the steps wherewith she climbs already taken two where we were then and now the third was lowering its wings when i who had somewhat of adam in me o'ercome with sleep reclined upon the grass on which all five of us were sitting then near morning at the hour in which the swallow begins to sing her melancholy lays perchance in memory of her earliest woes and when much more a pilgrim from the flesh and less imprisoned by its thoughts our mind well-nigh prophetic in its vision is an eagle in a dream i seemed to see suspended in the sky with plumes of gold and wings outspread intent on swooping down and it appeared to me that i was where his friends were left behind by ganymede when to the highest council he was raised I thought within myself, perhaps this bird is wont to strike, but here, and from elsewhere, perhaps, disdains to lift one with its claws. Then, having wheeled a while, it seemed to me that terrible as lightning it came down, and bore me up as far as to the fire. There it and I both seemed to burn together, and so intense was that imagined burning, my sleep was broken of necessity. Achilles roused himself no differently turning around him his awakened eyes nor knowing in what region he might be when sleeping in her arms his mother took him away from chiron to the isle of syros from which the greeks removed him afterwards then i aroused myself when from my face sleep fled away and death-like pale i turned like one who freezes when o'ercome by fright only my comforter was at my side and now the sun was higher than two hours and toward the open sea my face was turned be not afraid my lord then said to me be reassured for we are faring well restrain not but expand thine every power at purgatory art thou now arrived behold the cliff there which encloses it behold the entrance where it broken seems just now when in the dawn preceding day thy soul was sleeping in thee on the flowers wherewith the place down yonder is adorned a lady came and said i am lucia allow me to take up this sleeping man i shall assist him thus upon his way sordello and the other noble forms remained she took thee and when daylight dawned hither came up and in her footprints i she laid thee here and first her lovely eyes revealed to me that opened entrance then both she and sleep together passed away like one who when in doubt is reassured and into comfort turns his fear when once the truth has been disclosed to him i changed 
and when my leader wholly freed from care beheld me upward o'er the cliff he moved and i behind him followed toward the height reader thou surely seest how i exalt my subject therefore be thou not surprised if i support it now with greater art nearer we drew and were in such a place that where at first there seemed to be a break just like a fissure that divides a wall i saw a gate and under to approach it three steps of different colour each and then a keeper who as yet said not a word and as i opened more and more mine eyes i saw him sitting on the upper step such in his face that i endured him not and in his hand he had a naked sword which so reflected upon us its rays that toward him oft i turned my eyes in vain say what it is you wish from where you are he then began and where your escort is beware lest coming up should do you harm a heavenly lady of these things aware my teacher answered him said unto us just now go thither yonder is the gate and unto good may she advance your steps the courteous keeper of the gate resumed come forward therefore unto these our stairs made of white marble was the first great step to which we came so polished and so smooth i mirrored me therein as i appear the second step darker than purple black was of a rough and calcined kind of stone cracked lengthwise and across the third which rests in massive shape above it seemed to me to be of porphyry as flaming red as blood appears when spurting from a vein upon this last god's angel held both feet sitting upon the threshold which to me appeared to be a rock of adamant up over those three steps my leader then drew me along with my good will and said humbly request him to undo the lock devoutly at his holy feet i cast me i begged that of his mercy he would open but first i smote upon my breast three times then with his sword's sharp point he traced seven peas upon my brow and told me see thou to it that when inside thou wash away these wounds ashes or earth when excavated dry would with his garment of one colour be and from beneath it he drew forth two keys one was of gold the other silver was first with the white and after with the yellow he so did to the gate that i was pleased whenever one of these keys faileth so that in the lock it doth not rightly turn said he to us this passage opens not more precious is the first and yet the other ere it unlock much skill and judgment needs for it is that one which unties the knot peter from whom i hold them bade me err rather than opening than in keeping closed provided folk fell prostrate at my feet he pushed the holy portal's door thereat and said to us go in but i inform you that he who looks behind returns outside and when that sacred gateway's folding doors which were of strong resounding metal made were on their iron hinges turned around tarpeia roared not so nor proved so shrill when good metellus was removed from her because of which she afterwards kept lean i turned to heed its first resounding tones and thee we praise o lord i seemed to hear in voices mixed with those delightful sounds what i was hearing made upon me then just the impression one is wont to get when people with an organ sing for now the words are heard and now again are not end of purgatorio canto nine section forty four of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio Canto X. Purgatory, the First Ring. Pride. Instances of Humility. The Expiation of Pride. When past the threshold of the gate we were, whose use the evil love of souls impairs, because it makes the crooked path seem straight, t'was by its sound I knew that it had closed. And, had I turned mine eyes in its direction, what would have fittingly excused my fault? we mounted through a fissure in the rock which moved about to this side and to that as moves a wave that flees and draweth near a little skill must here be used by us my leader then began in keeping close 
now here now there to the receding side this caused our steps to be so slow and short that to her bed the waning moon had gone to rest herself again ere we had issued forth from that needle's eye but when set free we were and in the open up above where back the mountain's side recedes i weary and both of us uncertain of our way stopped short upon a level place up there more lonely than our roads through desert lands from where its margin borders on the void up to the foot of that high rising bank would measure thrice a human body's length and far as e'er mine eye could wing its flight now on the right and now upon the left such did this girding ledge appear to me our feet had not been moving on it yet when i perceived the bank surrounding it which being perpendicular could not be climbed white marble was and so adorned with carvings that not only polycletus but nature too would there be put to shame the angel who to earth came with the word of peace which wept for during many years had after its long closure opened heaven appeared before us there in gentle mien sculptured so truthfully it did not seem that he could be an image that is dumb one would have sworn that he was saying hail for she was there portrayed in effigy who turned the key that opened love on high and in her mien and acts she had the words behold the handmaid of the lord impressed as clearly as a figure stamped in wax keep not thy mind on one place only fixed my gentle teacher said who had me there on that side of him where one has his heart i therefore moved my eyes and further on than mary on the side where him i had who urged me to go on i then beheld another story graven in the rock passing by virgil therefore i drew near so that it might be set before mine eyes cut in the marble there the cart and oxen were drawing up the holy ark which made men dread a charge not given them in trust people in front appeared and all of them forming seven choirs made one of my two senses say no and the other one say yes they sing so too by reason of the incense smoke which there was pictured forth my eyes and nose became discordant as to yes and no the humble psalmist there with loins girt up came dancing on before the blessed vessel and doing so was more and less than king and michal opposite to this portrayed was from a palace window looking down as would an angry woman filled with scorn from where i was i onward moved my feet that i might closely note another tale which after michal gleamed upon me white the glorious action of that roman prince was storied here whose worth moved gregory to win his mighty triumph i refer to emperor trajan at his bridal stood a widow who in tears showed signs of grief the space around him there seemed trampled down and thronged with horsemen while above his head eagles it seemed upon a field of gold were fluttering in the wind among all these the sorrowing woman seemed to say my lord avenge me for the slaying of my son which breaks my heart and he to answer her wait now till i return and she like one whom sorrow makes impatient said but what my lord if thou shouldst not return and he that one will do it who shall hold my place how shall another's goddess help thy case she answered him if thou forget thine own then he now be thou comforted for needs must i perform my duty ere i leave justice so wills and pity keeps me here he to whose vision naught was ever new created this scene language new to us since not found here on earth while with delight i looked upon the pictures of such great humilities which for their maker's sake are also dear to see on this side lo much people come but slow the steps they take the poet murmured toward the grades above these souls will send us forward on our way mine eyes intent on gazing to behold new things for which with eagerness they long in turning toward him were not slow to move yet i do not have thee reader shrink dismayed from thy good purposes through hearing how god wills that what is due to be paid heed not the nature of the torment think of what comes after think that at the very worst beyond the judgment day it cannot go then i began that teacher which toward us i see advancing does not look like people nor know i what my sight is so deceived and he to me 
their torment's heavy nature so bows them toward the ground that my eyes too struggled therewith at first but steadily gaze there and disentangle with thine eyes what underneath those stones is coming on thou now canst see how each one smites himself o oh, ye proud christians sad and weary creatures who sick in mental vision put your trust in backward moving steps perceive ye not that worms we are created but to form the angelic butterfly which flies unscreened to judgment why then is it that your mind soars up in pride since ye are as it were defective insects even as is a worm in which formation is not yet complete as to hold up a ceiling or a roof in lieu of corbel one perceives at times a human figure joining knees to breast which out of unreality gives birth to real distress in him who sees it such seemed these to me when i had given good heed they were in truth both more and less bowed down as each had more or less upon his back but he that in his acts most patient was seemed to say weeping i can bear no more end of purgatorio canto ten section forty five of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto Eleven, Purgatory, the First Ring, Pride, the Lord's Prayer, the Proud. Our Father, thou that in the heavens dost dwell, not circumscribed, but for the greater love thou hast for what thou madest first on high, let both thy name and worth be given praise by every creature, even as it is meet that to thy loving spirit thanks be given and may thy kingdom's peace come down to us since we cannot attain it of ourselves for all our striving save it also come as gladly of their wills thine angels make a sacrifice to thee singing all hail so likewise gladly may men do with theirs give us this day our daily spirit food without which through this bitter wilderness he backward goes who onward toileth most and as we pardon every one the wrong we've suffered of thy mercy do thou us forgive regarding not what we deserve our virtue which is easily overcome test thou not through our ancient enemy but set us free from him who tempted so this is last request dear lord it is not indeed made for ourselves who need not make it here but is for their sake who behind us stayed thus praying good speed for themselves and us those shades beneath a burden went their way not unlike that whereof one dreams at times unequally tormented all of them and weary o'er the first ring round and round purging away the world's defiling mists if good things there be always said for us what can be said and done on their behalf down here by those whose will is rooted well surely one ought to help them wash away the stains they brought with them that they may issue cleansed and unburdened to the starry spheres pray so may pity and justice speedily unburden you that ye may move your wings and raise yourself according to your wish show us on which hand lies the shortest way to reach the stairs and be there more than one teach us the pass that hath the gentlest slope for owing to the load of adam's flesh which clothes his spirit he who with me comes is slow in climbing though against his will as to the words which in reply they said to those which he whom i was following spoke it was not evident from whom they came but this was said come with us on the right along the bank and ye shall find the pass which may be climbed by one that's still alive and were i not prevented by the stone which tames my haughty neck and forces me to keep my face bowed down at this man here who liveth still and telleth not his name i'd look to see if he's one i know and stir his pity for this heavy load latin i was and born to a great tuscan guglielmo aldobrandesco was my father i know not if you ever knew his name my forebears ancient blood and noble deeds caused me to be so arrogant that i unmindful of our common mother earth 
held every man in scorn to such extent i died for it as well know siena's folk and every child in campagnatico i am omberto nor to me alone doth this work ill for pride hath with itself drawn all my kin into calamity and here for this must i needs bear this load among the dead till god be satisfied since i among the living bore it not listening i bowed my face and one of them not he who had been speaking writhed around under the burden which was hampering him and having seen and recognized me called and kept his eyes with effort fixed on me who as i went along with them was stooping then oh said i art thou not oderisi the glory of agobio and the art which in paris is called illuminating brother said he more smiling are the parchments which franco bolognese paints the glory is now all his and only partly mine because of that great longing to excel whereon my heart was set i certainly would not have been so courteous while i lived here is the forfeit paid for pride like this nor should i be here yet had it not been that while i still could sin i turned to god o empty glory of our human powers how short a time green lasts upon its top unless uncultured ages overtake it once shimabue thought that he would hold the field in painting yet the cry is all for giotto now hence that one's fame is dark thus hath one guido taken from the other the glory of our tongue and he is born perhaps who from the nest will banish both worldly repute is but a breath of wind which cometh now from here and now from there and shifts its name because its quarter shifts what greater fame shalt thou have if when old thou quit thy flesh than hadst thou died ere pap and chink were dropped a thousand years from now for that if to eternity compared is shorter than the twinkling of an eye is to the sky's most slowly moving sphere all tuscany proclaimed the fame of him who walks so slowly on the road before me yet hardly is a whisper of him left in siena now whose governor he was what time the rage of florence was destroyed which then as haughty was as abject now your worldly fame is like the hue of grass which comes and goes and he discolours it through whom it springs up tender from the ground and i thy true speech heartening me with good humility thou prickst my swollen pride but who is he of whom thou spokest just now that he replied is provencan salvani and here he is because presumptuously he brought all siena under his control thus hath he gone and without rest he goes ere since he died who yonder dares too much in satisfaction pays such coin as this and i then if the spirit who delays before repenting till the verge of life abides below and cometh not up here unless good prayers assist him till as long a time be passed as he had been alive wherefore hath this man's coming been vouchsafed when in his greatest glory he replied all shame removed he freely took his stand in siena's campo and there to free a friend suffering in charles's prison he brought himself to quake in every vein i'll say no more and know that what i say is darkly spoken but so ere long will thine own neighbours act that thou'lt be able to interpret it this deed of his relieved him from those bounds end of purgatorio canto eleven
Section forty six of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto twelve. Purgatory, the first ring. Pride. Instances of punished pride. The angel of humility. With equal steps, like oxen going yoked, I went along beside that burdened soul as long as my dear pedagogue allowed. But when he said, Leave him, and go thou on for here it is well that each should urge his bark with sail and oars as much as e'er he can i straightened me as much as walking called for although my thoughts kept humble and depressed on had i moved and in my teacher's steps was following willingly and both of us were showing now how light of step we were when downward turn thine eyes he said to me well with it be to calm thee on thy way that thou shouldst see the bed thy souls are treading as over those that neath them buried lie that they may be recalled to people's minds tombs level with the ground the record bear of what they were before whence there they oft are wept for through the prick of memory which spurs to grief the pitiful alone even so i saw engraved in sculpture here though finer in respect to workmanship as much as from the mount juts out his path i saw on one side him who once was made nobler by far than any other creature fall like a flash of lightning down from heaven i saw briarius on the other side pierced by an arrow from the sky lie prone and heavy on the ground with mortal cold i saw apollo mars i saw and pallas as still in armour round their sire they stood gazing upon the giant's scattered limbs i saw great nimrod neath his mighty work dumb with confusion as he watched the folk who once were proud with him on sheena's plain o oh, niobe with what sad eyes i thee saw pictured forth in stone between thy children the seven and seven thy dead upon the road o oh, saul how plainly there on thine own sword didst thou seem dead upon gilboa's mount which felt thereafter neither rain nor dew o oh, mad arachne thee i saw as when already half a spider thou wast sad amid the tatters of thy fatal work o oh, rehoboam not a threat seems now thy face but terror-stricken as a way a chariot bears thee lest thou be pursued it showed moreover that hard pavement did how costly once alcmeon caused his mother's unlucky ornament to seem to her it showed how in the temple's walls his sons cast themselves on sennacherib and how when he was dead they there abandoned him it showed the slaughter and the cruel woe wrought by tamiris when she said to cyrus with blood i fill thee that didst thirst for blood it showed too how the assyrians took to flight routed when holophanes had been killed and also what was of that slaughter left i saw proud troy in ashes and in caves o oh, ilion how degraded and how vile it showed thou wast the image there perceived what master or of brush or graving tool could reproduce the shadows and the features which there would cause all cultured minds to wonder the dead seemed dead the living seemed alive whoever saw the real no better saw than i then did what i was treading on as long as bowed i walked be ye then proud and go with haughty looks ye sons of eve nor bow your heads to see your evil path more of the mountain had we circled now and of the sun's course far more had we spent than my not disengaged mind had supposed when he who always walked attentively ahead of me began lift up thy head the time for going thus absorbed is past see there an angel who is making ready to come toward us see how the sixth handmaiden returns now from the service of the day with reverence adorn thine acts and face that he may now be pleased to send us up think that this day will never dawn again so well accustomed was i to his warning that i should never let my time be lost that on this theme he could not darkly speak toward us the lovely creature was advancing arrayed in white and in his countenance such as when trembling seems the morning star his arms he opened then he oped his wings and said to us come 
nearby are the steps and going up is easy after this only a few to this announcement come o human race why born for upward flight fallest thou so before a little wind he led us on to where the rock was cut and there my forehead with his wings he stroked and promised that my passage would be safe as on the right hand to ascend the mount where seated is the church which dominates the well-ruled town o'er rubacontes bridge the slope's bold flight is broken by the stairs constructed in an age when choir and stave were safe so likewise doth the bank relax which from the next ledge here quite steeply falls but closely on each side the high rock rubs while turning thither we were on our way voices sang in such a way as words could not describe alas how different are the passes here from those in hell for one up here goes in with songs but there below with frightful wails we now were climbing up the holy stairs and lighter far i felt than formerly i seemed to be when on the level ground i hence said teacher say what heavy thing has been removed from me that as i walk i almost feel no weariness at all he answered when the peas which still remain almost extinct upon thy brow are quite erased as one is now thy feet will so be conquered by good will that they will feel not only no fatigue but it will be a pleasure to them to be upward urged i then did as do those who go about with something on their head they know not of till others gestures cause them to suspect whereat their hand assists in ascertaining searches and finds and so performs the work which cannot be accomplished by their sight and with my right hand's fingers spread i found that only six the letters were which he who held the keys had o'er my temples cut on seeing which my leader smiled with joy end of purgatorio canto twelve Section 47 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto 13. Purgatory, the Second Ring. Envy. Instances of Generosity. The Envious. We now were at the summit of the stairs, where for the second time is cut away the mount, a scent of which frees one from sin. And there a cornice, like the first one, girds the hillside round about, save that its arc more quickly curves. There is no shaded carving apparent here, nor is there any mark. The bank seems bare, as also seems the path, with but the livid colour of the rock. If we wait folk here of whom to ask our way, the poet argued, I'm afraid our choice will be, perhaps, delayed too long then on the sun he fixed his steadfast eyes made of his right the centre for his motion and turned the left side of himself around o oh, thou sweet light with confidence in whom i enter this new path conduct us thou he said as one should be conducted here thou warmst the world and on it thou dost shine if aught else urge not to the contrary thy rays at all times ought to be our guides already had we gone as far up there as here on earth is reckoned for a mile in little time because of ready will when flying toward us there were spirits heard who though unseen were to the board of love uttering their courteous calls the voice which first passed flying said aloud they have no wine and then behind us kept repeating it and ere because of having moved away it could be heard no more another passing cried i am orestes nor did that one linger what are these voices father said i then and even while i was asking lo a third which said love those from whom ye've ill received the kindly teacher then this circle whips the fold of envy hence the scourge's cords are drawn from love the curb will probably give forth a sound the contrary of this in my opinion i believe thou'lt hear it before the pass of pardon thou attain but keenly through the air address thy gaze and thou'lt see people on ahead of us who seated are and each against the cliff 
then wider than before i oped mine eyes i looked ahead and shades i saw with cloaks not differing from the colour of the stone and when a little further on we were i heard one crying mary pray for us and cries to michael peter and all the saints nor do i think there walks on earth to-day a man so hard that he would not be pierced by sympathy for what i then perceived for after i had drawn so near to them that what they did with clearness came to me tears from my eyes were drawn by bitter grief covered they seemed to me with coarse hair-cloth and one sustained the other with his shoulder while all of them were by the bank sustained even thus the blind in want of livelihood at pardons stand to beg for what they need and one upon the other bows his head that pity may be speedily aroused not merely by the sound of what they say but by their aspect which no less implores and as the sun availeth not the blind so to the shades whereof i spoke just now the sky's light willeth not to grant itself because an iron band runs through and sows the eyelids of them all as with wild hawks one does since otherwise they'd not keep still to me it seemed an outrage that unseen i should see others as i walked along i therefore turned to my wise counsellor he well knew what the dumb man wished to say and therefore waited not for me to ask but speak he said be brief and to the point virgil on that side of the corner sledge was coming on with me whence one can fall because it wreathes itself with no bank there on the other side i had those zealous shades who through the horrid seams were pressing so their tears that they were bathing both their cheeks turning to them i thus began o people who certain are of seeing that high light which your desire hath for its only object so melt grace soon the scum upon your conscience that memory's stream may through it clearly flow tell me for grateful will it be to me and pleasing if there is among you here a soul that latin is it will be well for him perhaps if i should come to know it o oh, brother mine we both are citizens of one true city but thou meanest one who while a pilgrim lived in italy it seemed to me that this i heard for answer a little further on than where i was i therefore let myself be heard much further among the rest i saw a shade which seemed expectant in its looks and if one ask how so held up its chin as do the blind spirit said i that dost subdue thyself that thou mayest climb if she that didst reply make thyself known to me by place or name cianese i was she answered and with these cleanse here my guilty life and pray to him with tears that he may lend himself to us though called sapia sapient was i not for i was far more glad of others harm than i of my good fortune ever was and that thou mayest not think that i deceive thee even as i tell thee hear how mad i was once my year's arch was on its downward course when with their foes my fellow-citizens were joined in battle near the town of colle i prayed to god for that which he had willed when routed there they took the bitter path of flight i felt on seeing them pursued a joy unequalled by all other joys i therefore upward turned my daring face and cried to god i fear thee now no more as doth the blackbird at the least fair weather when i was at the end of life i longed for peace with god but not yet would my debt have been diminished by repentance here had it not been that pietro pedinaggio who of his charity was grieved for me was mindful of me in his holy prayers but who art thou that askest of our state while going on and hast thine eyes unclosed as i believe and dost while breathing talk mine eyes will yet be taken from me here but not for long said i for they have not offended much by being turned by envy far greater is the fear wherewith my soul is filled of that tormenting pain below for even now the load there weighs upon me and she who then led thee to us up here if to return below thou think and i he that is with me here and speaketh not but i am living therefore ask of me elected spirit if thou'dst have me move my mortal feet in thy behalf on earth o oh, this she answered is so strange to hear that certainly it proves god's love for thee therefore assist me with thy prayers at times 
I beg thee by what most thou longest for, if e'er thou tread the soil of Tuscany, that thou among my kin restore my fame. Among that vain folk wilt thou see them there, which hopes in Talamone, and will waste more hope on it than on the Diana quest, but still more will the admirals invest. End of Purgatorio Canto Thirteen. Section forty eight of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto fourteen. Purgatory, the second ring, envy. Valdarno and Romagna in thirteen hundred. Instances of punished envy. Who is this spirit who around our mount is circling thus, ere death have given him flight, and at his will opens and veils his eyes? I know not who he is, but know he is not alone. Ask thou that nearer art to him, and greet him fairly, so that he may speak. Two spirits who were leaning on each other thus talked of me upon the right hand there, then turned their faces up to speak to me, and one said, Soul that still held in thy body toward heaven art going, of thy charity console us now, and tell us whence thou comest and who thou art for thou dost cause in us such wonder at the grace accorded thee as that demands which never was before and i a small stream winds through tuscany which up in falterona hath its rise and is not sated by a hundred miles from somewhere on its banks i bring this body vain would it be to tell you who i am because my name makes no great sound as yet if with my mind i rightly penetrate thy meaning that one then replied to me, who spoke before. Thou talkest of the Arno. Thereat the other spirit said to him, Why did this man conceal that river's name, as people hide the name of dreadful things? The shade who had been questioned as to this discharged its duty thus. I do not know, but meet it is that this vale's name should die, for from its source, where that wild mountain chain, whence severed is Pelorus, swells so greatly that in few places doth it pass that mark to there where it betakes it to restore whatever from the sea the sky sucks up whence rivers get what goes along with them virtue is snake-like as a foe pursued by all or through the region's evil luck or through bad customs which incite men there hence those that in this wretched valley dwell have changed their nature so that it would seem that circe had them in her pasturage among foul hogs of acorns worthier far than of all other food that's fit for man to use it first directs its sorry path as down it comes it afterwards finds curves that snarl more fiercely than their strength comports and turns from these its snout aside in scorn it keeps on falling and the more it swells the more that cursed and unlucky ditch finds that the dogs are turning into wolves descending then through many a gloomy gorge foxes it finds so full of fraud that naught have they to fear lest cunning master them <laughs> nor shall i cease to speak though overheard and for this man twere well if he were called hereafter what a truthful spirit shows me thy grandson i behold who first becomes a hunter of those wolves upon the banks of that fierce stream and terrifies them all he sells their flesh while still alive then kills them as an old beast he would of life depriving many himself of honour he deprives he issues bloody from the dismal wood and leaves it such that in a thousand years twill not rewood itself as once it was as at the announcement of some painful loss the face of him who listens is disturbed from wheresoe'er the danger may assail him even thus did i behold that other soul who turned to listen grow distressed and sad as soon as he had gathered in that speech the words of one soul and the other's face had caused me to desire to know their names therefore with prayers i mingled this request that spirit therefore who addressed me first began again thou dost have me condescend to do for thee what thou for me wilt not but since god wills that so much of his grace should shine in thee i'll not be niggardly guido del duca know then that i am and so consumed by envy was my blood that had i seen a man becoming happy livid with envy thou hadst seen me turn of what i sowed i'm reaping now the straw o human race why set your heart on things wherein companionship must be forbidden <sighs> this is rinieri 
this the honour is and glory of the house of calboli whose worth since him none hath inherited nor hath his blood alone despoiled itself tween po and mountains reno and the sea of those good things which truth and joy require for in those bounds the country is so full of poison stocks that only slowly now would they be lessened even if it were tilled where are good lizio arrigo mainardi pier traversaro and guido di carpinia oh, romagnols turned into bastards now when in bologna will a fabra rise when in faenza a bernardine di fosco the noble scion of a little plant wonder not tuscan if i weep now when with guido da prata i recall to mind ugo lindazzo who among us dwelt frederick tignoso and his company the traversara house the anastagi and both these families are void of heirs the ladies and the knights the toils and ease which love and courtesy once made us crave where hearts have grown so bad no pretinoro wherefore not vanish since thy family and many people with them have departed that guiltless they might be Fania caval begetting sons no longer doeth well but castracaro ill and conio worse which still takes trouble to beget such counts well the pagani too will fare when once their demon shall have gone but not so well that an unspotted fame will e'er remain to them o ugolin de fantoli thy name is safe since one can now no more be looked for who as a degenerate can darken it but go thy way now tuscan for weeping now affords me far more zest than speech our talk hath so distressed my mind we knew that those dear spirits heard us leaving and therefore merely by their keeping still they made us trust the path which we were taking when we advancing found ourselves alone a voice which seemed like lightning when it cleaves the air was heard and as it reached us there said whosoever findeth me shall slay me then vanished as when thunder rolls away if suddenly a cloud be rent apart soon as our hearing had a truce from this behold another with so great a crash it seemed to be its following thunderclap i am a claudus who was turned to stone then to draw closer to the poet's side i took a backward not a forward step the air was calm on all sides now when he that was the painful bit which in his bounds should hold a man but ye take in the bait and so the ancient adversary's hook draweth you to him hands of small avail is either curb or lure heaven calleth you and showing to you its eternal beauties around you moves and yet your eyes look down hence he who seeth all things scourges you end of purgatorio canto fourteen section forty nine of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto Fifteen. Purgatory, the Second Ring, Envy, the Angel of Generosity, the Third Ring, Anger, Instances of Gentleness. Between the third hour's close and day's beginning, as much as is apparent of the sphere, which like a child is ever given to play, so much now of its course toward evening seemed remaining to the sun. Twas vespers there, and midnight here and fully on the face its rays were striking us because the mount had been so circled by us that we now were going on directly toward the west when far more blindingly than e'er before i felt my forehead overcome by splendour and was bewildered by these unknown things over my eyebrows hence i raised my hands and made myself the screen which filing off tempers excessive light in what is seen as when from water or a looking-glass a ray leaps up in the opposite direction and in the same way mounts that down it came and from the falling of a stone departs at equal distance to the same extent as both experiment and art reveal even so it seemed to me that i was smitten as by a light reflected there before me because of which my sight was swift to flee dear father what is that said i from which i cannot screen my face sufficiently to help me and which toward us seems to come wonder thou not he answered me if still heaven's family affect thy sight an angel is this who comes to ask us to ascend it soon will happen that to see such things will be no burden 
but as great a joy as nature hath enabled thee to feel as soon as we had reached the blessed angel with joyful voice he said enter from hence a stairway far less steep than were the rest we were ascending having thence departed when was sung behind us and my teacher then and i we two alone were going up and as we went i thought of how i might get profit from his words whereat i turned toward him and asked what meant that spirit from romagna when he mentioned forbidden and companionship in things hence he of his worst fold he knows the harm hence let it not surprise if he therefore rebuke men that it be lamented less because your wishes aim at that wherein each share is lessened through companionship envy fain moves the bellows for your size if love though for the highest sphere of all were upward turning your desires that fear would not be in your breast because the more there are up yonder by whom ours is said so much more good doth each of them possess and so much more love in that cloister burns i fast much more from being satisfied said i than had i silent been at first and more of doubt i gather in my mind how can it be then that a good that shared should make more owners richer with itself than if by but a few it be possessed and he to me because thou fastened thy mind exclusively on earthly things thou drawest darkness out of every light that good ineffable and infinite which dwells up yonder runs as fast to love as to bright bodies comes a ray of light so much it gives itself as is the warmth it findeth hence as is the extent of love so much the eternal worth spreads over it the more there are up there that love each other the more there are to love and more the love and mirror-like the more of love each sheds on each and if my talk sate not thy hunger thou shalt see beatrice and she will fully free thee from this and every other want do thou then see to it that speedily thou have removed as two already are the five wounds which are closed by causing pain wishing to say thou satisfiest me i saw that i had reached the following ring my fond eyes therefore caused me to keep still there it appeared to me that i was wrapped in an ecstatic vision all at once and that within a temple i perceived much people and a lady at the door who with the sweet mien of a mother said wherefore my son hast thou thus dealt with us behold thy father and i have sought for thee in sorrow here when she had ceased to speak that disappeared which had before appeared then there appeared another o'er whose cheeks those tears were streaming down which grief distils when born of great resentment toward another saying if thou art master of the city about whose name there was among the gods such strife and whence all knowledge sparkles forth avenge thyself on those audacious arms pisistratus which dared embrace our daughter kindly and gently then that lord appeared to answer her with looks of self-control what shall we do to him who hateth us if he who loves us is by us condemned then folk i saw inflamed by anger's fire who bent on killing a young man with stones cried to each other naught but kill him kill, kill. and him i saw bowed to the ground in death which now oppressed him of his eyes he e'er made gates of heaven and in that anguish prayed the lord on high with looks which unlock pity that he his persecutors would forgive when once my mind returned outside again to those things which outside of it are true i recognized my not untruthful errors my leader who could see that i was acting like one who frees himself from slumber said what aileth thee that thou canst not stand up but hast been coming more than half a league veiling thine eyes and reeling with thy legs 
like one overcome by either wine or sleep oh my dear father if thou listen to me i'll tell thee what it was appeared to me said i when i was thus deprived of legs and he if on thy face a hundred masks thou hadst thy thoughts would not be hid from me however small they were what thou hast seen was lest thou free thyself from opening up thy heart unto those waters of thy peace which from the eternal fountain are diffused i did not ask what ails thee as would one who looks but with the eye which seeth not when once the body lies inanimate but asked it to endow thy feet with strength so must the indolent be spurred when slow to use their waking time when it returns on through the vesper hours we went along forward intent as far as e'er our eyes could reach against the late and shining rays when lo a smoke in our direction came little by little and as dark as night nor was there any place of shelter from it this of pure air deprived us and our eyes End of Purgatorio, Canto 15section fifty of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain purgatorio canto sixteen purgatory the third ring anger free will in the corruption of the world the gloom of hell and of a night deprived of every planet neath a narrow sky darkened as much as possible by clouds ne'er made so thick a veil before my face nor to my feeling was so rough in tissue as was the smoke which covered us up there for that permitted not of opened eyes because of which my wise and trusty escort drew near to me and offered me his shoulder even as a blind man walks behind his guide in order not to go astray and strike aught that might hurt him or might even kill so going through that foul and bitter air i listened to my leader who said only take care that thou be not cut off from me voices i heard and each appeared to pray for peace and mercy to the lamb of god who taketh sins away their only prelude was lamb of god and all had but one word and intonation hence among them all there seemed to be the fullest harmony are those then spirits teacher whom i hear said i and he to me thou judgest rightly as on they go they loosen angers not now who art thou that cleavest thus our smoke and yet dost speak of us as if thou still by monthly calends wert dividing time these words were uttered by a single voice my teacher therefore said to me reply and ask him if on this side one goes up and i o creature that dost cleanse thyself that beautiful thou mayst return to him who made thee thou'lt hear marvels following me i'll follow thee as far as i'm allowed he answered and if smoke permit not sight hearing instead will keep us linked together i thereupon began i go on high while in that swathing band which death dissolves and through the infernal anguish came i here and whereas god hath wrapped me in his grace so much that he would have me see his court by means entirely out of modern use conceal not who thou wast before thy death but tell it me and whether toward the pass i rightly go and be thy words our guides lombard i was and marco was i called familiar with the world i loved the worth toward which all men have now unbent their bows for mounting upward thou art going rightly he thus replied and added i beseech thee pray for me there when thou shalt be above and i to him i pledge my faith to thee that what thou askest of me i will do but with a doubt i'll burst unless therefrom i free myself simple at first it now is doubled by thy speech which makes me here and elsewhere sure of that wherewith i link it the world is certainly as wholly void of every virtue as thou tellest me and is with evil big and overspread but pray point out its cause that i may see and show it unto other men for one puts it in heaven another here below at first he heaved a sigh profound which grief to ah me changed then brother he began 
the world is blind, and thou indeed comest hence. Ye that are living still attribute upward each cause to heaven alone, as though it moved everything with it of necessity. If this were so, free will would be destroyed within you, and no justice would there be in having joy for good and grief for ill. Heaven starts your inclinations, though I say not all. But even supposing that I did, light has been given to you for good and evil, with free will, which, if it endure fatigue in its first fights with heaven, will afterward, if duly nourished, conquer everything, beneath a greater power, and better nature ye freely lie, and that creates within you the mind, which heaven hath not in its control. Hence, if the present world go wrong, the cause is in yourselves, and should in you be sought. Of this I'll now a true spy be for thee, forth from the hand of him who e'er it lives delights in it, even like a little maid who weeps and laughs and wantons like a child, issues the simple soul, which knoweth naught, save that, Proceeding from a joyous maker, it gladly turns to that which pleases it. At first it tasteth things of little good. Deceived thereby, it runneth after them, unless a guide or check divert its love. Hence, as a bit, a law must needs be set. A king must needs be had, who should at least the tower of the truthful town discern. The laws exist, but who sets hand to them? No one, because the shepherd who precedes can chew the cud, but hath not cloven hoofs. The people hence, who see their guide strive solely for those good things for which it longs itself, feedeth thereon, and asks for nothing more. Well canst thou see that evil leadership and not that nature in you is corrupt, is what has caused the world to be so wicked. Rome, which once made it good, was wont to have two sons, which rendered visible both roads, that of the world and that of God. One now hath quenched the other. To the bishop's staff the sword is joined, and badly needs must one fare with the other, since together joined, neither the other fears. Recall to mind, if thou believe me not, the ear of corn, for every grass is by its own seed known. Throughout the country watered by the Po and Adige, one used to find both virtue and courtesy. Ere Frederick had his strife, with safety it can nowadays be crossed by any who, through shame, refrained from speech with good men, or avoided intercourse. There are, indeed, three old men still, in whom the old age chides the modern, and who long for God to give them back a better life. Quirado da Palazzo, good Girardo, and Guido da Castello, better called the simple Lombard, as in France he is, say therefore, that today the Church of Rome, by joining in herself two kinds of rule, falls in the mire, and fouls herself and load. O oh, Marco, mine, said I, thine arguments are good, and now I see why Levi's sons were from inheriting debarred. But which Gerardo is the one who, as thou sayest, as sample of the people now extinct, remaineth to reproach this savage age? thy speech deceives or tests me he replied for thou addressing me in tuscan speech seems not to know who good girardo was i know him not by other added name unless i took it from his daughter gaia god keep you for with you i come no further already whitening now behold the light which rays out through the smoke and i must go the angels there, ere I be seen by him. 
he thus turned back nor would he hear me more end of purgatorio canto 16section fifty one of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain purgatorio canto seventeen purgatory the third ring anger instances of punished anger the angel of peace love reader remind thyself if e'er a fog o'ertook thee on a mountain one through which thou couldst not see in any other way than moles do through the membrane o'er their eyes how when the damp thick mists begin to thin the sun's orb feebly pierces them and quickly with thine imagination come to see how i first saw the sun again which now was at its setting thus as i mine own was matching with my teacher's trusty steps from such a cloud i came into the beams already dead upon the shores below o oh, thou imagination which at times dost steal us so from outer things that though a thousand trumpets blow one hears them not what moveth thee if sense contribute naught a light which takes in heaven its form impels thee freely or by a will which sends it down the vision of her cruelty who changed her form into the bird which most delights in song appeared in my imagination and hereupon my mind was so shut up within itself that nothing that was then received by it came to it from without then into my high fantasy there reigned one crucified contemptuous and proud in aspect and as such he met his death around him were the great ahasuerus esther his wife and righteous mordecai who so whole-hearted was in word and deed and as this picture of its own accord broke up as doth a bubble when it lacks the water it was formed withal a maid rose in my vision next who bitterly was weeping and was saying why o oh queen didst thou through anger wish to be no more lavinia not to lose thyself hast slain and now hast lost me mother this is i who ere i mourn another's loss mourn thine as sleep is broken when unwonted light strikes closed eyes suddenly and being broken quivers before it wholly dies away even so did my imagining break up as soon as on my face there smote a light brighter by far than we are wont to see i turned around to notice where i was when lo a voice which said the ascent is here from every other interest turned my mind and made my will so eager to behold the speaker that when such it never rests until it sees its object face to face but as before the sun which whelms our eyes and veils its figure through excess of light so likewise here my visual powers failed a godlike spirit this who though unasked is pointing out to us our upward path and with his own light is himself concealing with us he deals as one would with himself for he that waits till asked when seeing need inclines already meanly to refuse to such a bidding let us now accord our feet and try to climb ere darkness come for later one could not till day returned thus said my leader then and i with him turned toward a flight of stairs our feet and i when on its first step near me felt as twere the motion of a wing and on my face a fanning while a voice said blessed are the peaceful who are free from evil wrath so high above us now were those last beams which by the night are followed that the stars were coming out on many sides and o oh, my strength why dost thou fade away so fast i to myself was saying for a truce i felt was set the powers of my legs we now were where the flight of stairs went up no further and as motionless we were as is a vessel when the shore is reached and for a while i waited to find out if aught upon the new ring could be heard then toward my teacher turning round i said say my dear father what offence is purged in this ring here where now we are although our feet keep still let not thy talking cease and he to me the love of good when scant of what it should have been is here atoned here beats again the ill-retarded oar but now in order that thou understand more clearly still turn thou thy mind to me and some good fruit thou'lt gather from our stay neither creator he began nor creature 
was e'er devoid of either innate love or that which conscious is and this thou knowest the innate love is always free from error but the other kind can err through evil aim or through deficient or excessive strength while well directed toward the primal goods and toward the secondary self-restraint it cannot be the cause of sinful pleasure but when it turns toward evil things or runs to good with more or less zeal than it ought the creature then against his maker works from this then thou canst understand that love must be the seed in you of every virtue and every deed that merits punishment and now since love can never turn its face from its own subject's welfare from self-hate all are secure and since one cannot think of any self as being from the first divided and existing of itself all hearts are thus debarred from hating him it follows that if i in arguing judge well one's neighbours is the harm one loves and this is born in three ways in your clay there's he who on the abasement of his neighbour his hope of rising sets and only longs that from his greatness he may be brought low and he who fears the loss of power favour renown and honour should another rise and grieves so that he loves the contrary then he who by injustice seems so shamed that greedy he becometh for revenge and such must needs prepare for others harm this triform love is wept for here below but now i'd have thee hear about the other which runs to love in a corrupted way all apprehend confusedly a good wherein the mind can rest and long for it and therefore every one attempts to reach it if slothful be the love impelling you to see or win it after just repentance this present cornice tortures you for that another good there is which never makes man happy it is not real happiness nor the good essence fruit and root of all that's good the love that yields too much to that is wept for in three rings above us here but why it's reckoned threefold i say not that thou mayst seek the reason for thyself end of purgatorio canto seventeen